Good morning, everybody. WSPA 2024. This is the Mixed A Division team. They're playing off for 7th and 8th place. If you want to take a look at the brackets, go over to CompuSport. If you don't have the app yet and you're watching on your TV, you can scan that little code in the bottom left corner. That'll take you right there. You can check all the brackets there. Today is a day of cash, and I'm in the booth with Jason Roselle. Good hey, morning, Jason. Kendall. Jason plays uh, with all these boys here on table one and two. That's Sussex. Uh, so he's playing all the time uh, with these guys. So he'll give us some insight into them and all that. And the other team, they're on their own because nobody knows. Yeah, who I they don't are. know those guys, but, but uh, yeah, I know the the the, I know the Sussex team very well. The Alibi Bar and Grill. But these are the first two games that we got going here. We'll pull up. Uh, I should have the app up already, but we just wanted to get on here. And that's early, so hopefully nobody's in a too much of a hurry. Yeah, it's Mark Topple shooting on uh, table one there. Let's see. And they are the runners, right? Sussex runners. Yep. So... What we've been doing is trying to pick a table, concentrate on that, and if that one finishes up, we go back and finish on the other one. Otherwise, if people want to watch table two or table one, whichever one we're not talking about, that's up to them. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, so you mentioned uh, Mark Topple. Which table is he on, one or two? He's on table one. He missed the three ball. Right, and uh, so not sure who he's playing uh, I'm going to alibi I, I'm team. Trying to, trying Looks to like look his name's up. Randy, looking at his shirt. There you go. We could zoom in otherwise. There is a third match going on right now over on uh, table three, and I'll tell you about that one. All right, here's the match. There we go. Okay, so right now we got must have uh, from Sussex, you must have Tom Radowitz. Yep. And he's playing against Mike Felch. And then uh, Dave Redland. Uh, is, should be playing against Randy Hool. We got three tables all together. The one isn't on camera, and then we have Mark Topple and Randy Frymark. Okay, a couple so, of couple of Randys. I like. I don't, that'll make it easy for us. Yeah. So we got uh, Mark Topple, Randy Frymark on table number one on screen, and then table number two. That's uh, Tom. And would be Tom and Mike Felch. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then table three, which is off camera. We do have a camera that we might go over there, here and there. I'm watching it right now. We're kind of getting down there. Uh, it's a little bit of a distance camera, but it's there anyways. Well, Randy little, tried little to break that ball out, but he uh, missed it. So he's got the two jammed in there that he's got a little trouble. Yeah, the seven's about the only ball that's got any chance. But even to get anywhere on the seven right now to do anything would be tough. I think I duck here. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe put the five in front of the hole. Well, he gave himself a chance there. Look he wants to bank yeah. this, but. I don't know. I found these cue balls. I don't know if they're like a little heavier, but you, you really got to pound them to draw the ball from what yeah. most people are used to, from what talking to quite a few people about it. Yeah, I don't know ever if it's the weight because most of the cue balls are within tolerance of a certain weight. Yeah. But the material, I think, sometimes, because I know people talk all the time the difference between like the, the measle ball yep. and the standard cue balls that come with. I'm not, I guess I'm not that precise. I don't <laughs> notice those things that close, you know. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it, you're constantly adjusting anyways. Right. Uh, look at this. Boy, that turned out pretty good considering, and he almost made it. I think he was playing in that corner. I, I, I'm not sure. Not, yeah. that, not like that, I, obviously. But, right. Um, yeah, now, so Mark, Mark Topple's up here, and... Uh, just got to get on that 13 ball. See if he goes for it right away here off the 15 or if he opts to pick a few more off first. Oh. 
Yeah, I mean, he, in theory, could get there here, too, depending on what he's doing. No, he's not even thinking that direction yet. Now he should be. Yeah, now he should be. I mean, you're pretty much going to clear the, I mean, I would think you'd make the two here if you'd right. Right, just r roll it, which would help you on the eight ball. Yep. Let's see, it's in trouble. Unless he's trying to leave that so that then he can play the eight all the way up. Yeah. It's not a bad, uh, bad option. Oh, look at these guys aren't going to let me forget whose name they are. Got it running right down the back of their jersey. Now if they just had their first names there, it would make sense. Welcome to chat, guys. Michael. Yeah, how many people we you. got? Andrew, good to see you. Up bright and early on. Uh... Not too many, 36, but with all the likes and shares those 36 people are going to do, it'll be amazing. We're going to have this chat room full in no time. I mean, I can see them already in their, yeah. on their computer, liking, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's all good stuff. These cameras aren't free, you know. <laughs> no, I know it's much appreciated by all the oh. all the players that you guys do this. So. It's fun. Well. Got a bit of a safety battle going on here on table two. Looks like it, yeah, they're back and forth quite a bit. Well, Mark's still trying to figure out exactly how he wants to pattern this out, but come back and forth with a nine. He's really being insistent that he doesn't shoot these balls up here. No. Is he going to go? Yeah, he clipped that. Now I think he got no choice. He got to go there, right? 15, 13, 9, and then we got to try and figure out how to get on, on the 8. Yep, I agree. Get off the 2. Yeah, don't get... get <laughs> He's coming in just perfect. Yeah. A little too straight on that 13, but let's see if he can work it out. Unfortunately, he has... Both pockets down here blocked by the 7 and the 2. Well, that's right. He's got to get an angle on the 9 not just to make it, but to get somewhere on the 8 because yeah. you're right. They're both blocked. Can't tell if he can just kind of pop through that window between the 7 and the 8 or if he's got to go around the 7. Nope. That's around the 7. That's what I figured he'd do. Or into it, I guess. Yeah, Look, did actually, that open it up? I think it opened it up, actually. <laughs> Uh, but it's pretty close. If you look at the overhead, it looks like it's yeah. still a little rough. Mark's well, definitely a player that will take what the table gives him. You know, he's not yeah. gonna he's not gonna try to draw down here or anything. He's just gonna put this ball in and then take the tougher eight ball shot. No, he's digging in. I don't know. I think he looked yeah, like maybe. he's trying to come back to, which is what it. Yeah, look at this. What a shot. Get up there. Kick it. Three rails got above it. Nice yeah. shot there. Only really proved me wrong there. Did but, what you had to, you know. Yeah. This this shot's tougher. Yeah. People aren't expecting you to make the last one necessarily. Right. This one you're almost expected to make after that last shot. What are my what are my betting odds here? You you see him play all the time. No, he'll make this. Yeah, I Ninety percent. Ninety percent. I'll take that. Even with the state pool tournament pressure, puts it down there like it a is. champ. Nice shot, Mark. Putting uh, Sussex runners on the board. They keep their own score now out there, or do we? Or well, let's watch. It should be see magic. If they do. Anybody paying? Oh yeah, he. I just saw him do it. Maybe. Maybe not. They don't care if you guys. Oh, wait, oh, he's, he's looking at it. it. Yep. And bang. Oh, he needs to use his finger with. Oh, two. They got two. Oh, yeah, the far one. They must have won the far, far match. Okay. They did. We should be. Table three there. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, that one's uh a little far out there. Since he's looking right now, we'll just take a quick look. Out there racking the balls. That's Johnny Gonzalez racking the balls there. Table. Yep. And so there we've got uh, Johnny Gonzalez. Where'd my phone go? And he is playing against. That was reset it on me. Leroy Hauer. So Johnny and Leroy over on okay. the mysterious table number three. I like that it's not table three either. It's table 16. Yeah, is it 16? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pit one, pit two, pit 16. All right, well. Mike looks like he's mean in business over here, looking to finish one out and get a chalk mark on the board there for the Alibi Bar and Grill. Yeah. I don't know where Alibi, uh, I don't know where that is. I'm sure if we problem. look close enough, they're probably on their shirt. We'll have to take a look. Yeah. Oh, boy. Good thing he's sitting in front of that side pocket. It gives him a few more options than yes, if he would have snuck up a little further. Left himself just a nice little angle to just roll this in, come down for the three. Hang on. Gets steeper as you keep coming. Yeah. That's pretty good there, though. I don't mind this shot. No. I just straight across below the eight or above the eight and then come back, right? Yep. That's come the way I would play up. it. So low, maybe just a hair left for me. Just to keep it from running down table too far on that shot. Oh, that's not bad either. Yeah. Slide yeah. over. I like that shot. I wouldn't do that, you know, it's just personal preference, but if I guess it just depends, right? I yeah. mean, if you're down there, you might see it like that. Right? Yeah. It's the biggest difference. All right, so Alibi's on the board. Not even sure. I didn't look fast enough to see what uh, he was shooting at. I didn't either. <clears throat> So this is Randy Fenner that's playing on table number one. Nice guy. Talked to him a little bit before the match, just for a second. Him I don't really know that well. I mean, I know him from 30 years of doing yeah. these tournaments, you know, I mean, in all the state tournaments, not doing what I'm doing, but right, playing. Right, playing, yeah. Alibi Bar and Grill. Doesn't look like we got a... Anybody in the chat know where the Alibi Bar and Grill is? Might as well Google it. I think... Or it'll tell us. Uh, Marinette. Marinette. Monday Nighter. So Marinette, Wisconsin, yeah. Looks like. So playing for 1400 So the winners of this will be guaranteed $1,400. The losers are guaranteed 900 So nice, nice a little, little cash. Payday, for, yeah. yeah, I mean. This mix, nobody this, makes nobody makes money at no, these things for no. the most part, but I mean, it is nice to get a little cash back after your investment. Yep, that's true. This is a, this is a tough division. I, I've played in this one a few times, and it's uh, it's tough to make it to this this point. So. Yeah, I mean, you got to have a team that really gels and plays well together, and. Uh, doesn't you know you just got to be comfortable with each other i think you know if, if you're feeling any of that outside pressure like expectation out of people i think it makes it tougher you know if you're with a group of guys that you play with all the time they know your game they know your ability they know what you're going to do i think it makes you a little more relaxed a little more comfortable and you're able to work through some of the tribulations of uh yeah playing in a team tournament you know you yeah I'm, have, a, I'm definitely a big believer in Team chemistry and, yeah. and the the energy of the team will will carry you far. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't mind playing teams, but I put enough pressure on myself when I lose. I hate to have that pressure and be responsible for other people's. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just. Uh, yeah. It, when I was younger, I did it better. Now I feel bad. I think <laughs> I don't. Uh, 
Yeah, it's interesting, you know. It's uh I like the camaraderie of it. I like yeah. I like that aspect of it. But yeah, I, unless I, you're the doofus. Right. Yeah, if you're the <laughs> if you're the donkey of the team then it doesn't help. <laughs> you're sucking up all the positive energy trying to get you out of the hole, you know. That that's you know, for me that's part of it. That's you know uh, I think um it's nice when you're playing on a team where you got players that you know are uh, supposed to be better than you, supposed to play better than you. It allows you to relax too, you know what I mean? Yep. All right, well, table one here, we got a, got a little bit of a run going. Scott, let's see if he can finish these off. I'll tell you, both these teams are here for a reason. You sure you didn't call that? So Randy will come to the table. Yeah, was he calling the combo there or what? Uh, I think so. Seems like it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see what Randy can do. He doesn't have a very good opening shot here. Back cut on the nine. Looks like it goes. Probably the shot. Yeah, I mean, I think I if like he's it. looking at anything else, it's just to keep the cue ball away from the five. You know, yeah, you might skip that. Yeah, see, he's going to play the. Oh, he does have a window there to get down to the. What is that, the 12 ball? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the right shot then. And he doesn't even care. He's not necessarily even trying to make that ball. No, he wasn't. Uh, which is, is good, you know, but you know, it's amazing how many times, you know, I've been at a state tournament and you think you got a guy hooked. And he just pulls that little bit of extra out, and he'll drill this ball in, you know, like you think there's no way. But I played a great safety yesterday on Travis Siebert, and he, he kicked the ball, like, up at the top rail. He had about, like, maybe a foot window, and the ball was frozen on the rail, and he kicked it all the way down, past the side pocket, <laughs> bumped the eight out, and got himself perfect on the eight. Yeah, something, I mean, sometimes. One of the first shots that I saw when we were set up on the stream, it was, uh, I don't know, I think it was a B match. And uh, he was sitting about, if you look at table one, pretty much how it is there, but that 14 would be on the rail, and the 8 was midway, and he had to kick it between two balls. So he had to go down to the end rail, spin it left, you know, kind of hook it back, yeah, and then cut it up past two other balls that were up in the corner. I mean, it was phenomenal. <laughs> It's just probably couldn't you could shoot that shot a hundred times if you're a pro and maybe make it once. Yeah. And this guy just, just drilled, drilled it. it. I mean, <laughs> it was just such a perfect shot. It was the first official replay of the year. Nice. All right. Well, Randy got ball in hand. He uh, missed the kick shot there. Came All right. right watching it. from Dubai. Wow. Jason Welcome. Shaw just opened his pool room there in Dubai. Have you been to that? Uh, who do we got? Arabong? Arabong? Yeah. Not sure which way to say it. Have but, you been uh, to Dubai? I have, I have not. I have not, but I've seen pictures. And it looks man, pretty incredible. I mean, it's like the, the world's Las Vegas, it looks like. You know, right. kind of um, amazing what they built there. Amazing what a little bit of oil money can do for you. Yeah. But incredible. Jason Shaw just opened his room there and... Uh, in fact, last uh, last told he was seriously considering moving there. All right, I could see that. In fact, the last day we were there, that's what he was posting. Yeah. All right. Well, Randy's just got to connect the dots here. Yeah, I like getting that 12 ball out now. doesn't matter as much where your cue ball comes off at. Whenever they're sitting in the corner like that, it's got a lot of options. So even if he would miss hit that ball now, 
I just I hate leaving those things hang there for last. I agree because they're when they're that deep in the pocket, like you can just get a a funny bounce with the cue ball coming off. You leave that for like your last ball or something. So you see, I think he knows he's supposed to shoot it. <laughs> he's avoiding it still. Yeah. This isn't the worst. If he shoots it now, I don't mind it. He's got a good good solid hit into a rail. So you can control it. Yeah, and it opens it. up your 14 ball then, so you're not, you know, I just don't like playing that combo unless you have to. So I agree. I would be shooting this. I would have shot it last time, like you like you were saying, Kendall. But, but he's got her now. Keeping a controlled ball here, trying to make sure he doesn't sneak. If he would miss, he's not left a single time where there was a clear good shot at the five. Yep. So that's part of why you see him, I think, hitting balls slower, rolling them. Even here, you're not going to hit this too hard. I would just roll up, play for the nine here next. I think you can hold that. Yeah, just a little bit of inside English to just kind of come off the road. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Oh. Yeah, and he got a little tight on that 15. Maybe yeah. a little slower. That would have rolled out nice for him, I think. Just had a bit too much pace. And because he hit it thicker, too, it chunked out, and it kind of came further up table than it would typically. If he would have hit it a little bit thinner, he would have been down table just slightly further, yep. which would have helped him. I think this is very cuttable to the side pocket, huh? Yep, that's looks, it like looks like it from here, I think. Uh... And you can still leave him a tough shot on the five if you hang it or something, so. Oh. Yeah, he's looking at the bail here. Oh, yeah, play the 15 up to the corner and try and get up on the end rail here. Better long than short, because you'd rather leave him the safe than the cut, or the bank than the cut. So if that's what he's doing, yeah, decision has been made. Well, I hit that pretty darn good. Nice, nice shot there by Randy. Real nice and on the rail. Really played that well. Can we figure out who Ran who Randy's playing? Yeah, Randy was. Uh, oh. No, who was it? Randy is playing uh, Ryan. Okay. Let's see if Ryan can uh, at least get a hit here. Maybe. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it must be. Randy Fenner, Brian Lundquist, yep. All right, well, he got a hit. Left uh, Randy a pretty... Easy shot on the 15 here, but. Well, we got a winner over on the table number three here. I'm not sure who it is, so we'll see that scoreboard go up one, hopefully, in a second. Yeah, Randy's looking to play this in the bottom right corner. I think I looks like he's got the angle to just follow forward and yeah. a little inside and come play it in the bottom left. That's, I mean, that's where in, I would be And looking. inside, honestly, only if you're trying to stay against the rail. Yeah. I think just a straight follow, like you said, I think yeah. probably gets you there. Yeah, that's a good shot. Okay. He was just looking to see if it was open the other way. Yeah, which I get. I like that shot better when you're playing away with a little bit of outside and kind of force the ball into the hole. So I guess normally that probably would be my, well, I don't know. My game's changed so much from old Valley bar tables to these. I mean, you just, they're so, it's so different from what it was. Yeah, I agree with that. And you got so many good players now. It's a nice shot. Good out there by Randy. And oh boy. It's kind of a big miss there. Um, yeah, it is. It's 
So Alibi must have won on that table three. They, okay. They marked the so I have three two. But then Sussex just got one, so I think it's three three with Randy's win. Yep, should be. They remember to mark it. They don't have that one guy that's like the chart master. Normally, you got the one guy when you play league, yeah. right? He's the guy that's always writing the chart. He's, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think Topple's that guy for this. Well, group, where the hell is he? I don't know. He's on his phone doing something else. Randy looks afraid to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking him, like, am I supposed to? No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, nope, well, we didn't, still didn't get it. Nope. Oh, that's an oh. even bigger miss now on there. table number two. All right, so. Dave puts her down, right? Yep. All right, so he just took down Mike Felch, and we got Mark Topple, Randy Hool. And John Gonzalez is playing, playing uh, Brian Lundquist here on table, table one. one. Okay. And are we missing a score? Yeah, we're going to have a score here. Dave's win will get added on there, so they're going to be at four games. Yep, should be four. It's amazing when you get three games going at a time, how fast stuff can fall apart, too. You know, you get all of a sudden... Gonna talk about the nuances and physics of pool. All right, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, I see we got uh, Thomas checking in from Florida. You know Thomas. Nice. Bond. Bolt. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah. And Kendall's still looking to open up a, a mad apple down in Florida. So yeah. He's always looking for investors. Yeah, that's the only place I'm allowed to build another one. I'll build it, give you the menu, give you all the structure, I'll give you all the HR stuff, and I just want 2% of gross profits. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's way too cheap. I haven't played a lot of pool in Florida. Is there a good market down there? Is there a lot of... There's a ton, yeah. I mean, I don't... I'm not a fan. I mean, I know there's probably a couple that I haven't been to, but I mean, I haven't been to a single one where I'm just like, wow, man, I would love to hang out here seven days a week, <laughs> you know? And yeah. I mean, you got to have a place where people want to do that because pool players are kind of, I don't know, like uh, second home, you know? Yeah. I mean, you spend hours and hours playing this game. I mean, yeah, you can you can kill a few hours. Uh, Quick. Quickly, <laughs> real quick. I know Jeanette Lee. She's she lives in the Tampa area. She's got a regular home place she plays at that I'm forgetting the name of. Um. Yeah, I'm not positive either, actually. Okay, so I think you said we got. Another Brian. Do we have lots of Brian, Brian's and, and Randy's on these teams? Or? Yes. <laughs> Let me pull up this match. I can I can help out with some of this. All right, so Brian, yeah, Brian Lindquist is playing on table number one. He's got a little bit, of, got a, got a little run going here, and it is currently four to three. So they, yeah, they do have the score correct. Oh, good, you even got the. Oh, see, that'd be easier. I don't know why I keep looking at that other chart. I should just bring up their score chart. That's a good idea. I'm here. I'm bringing up the order of play. Score sheet's easier to see it on, I suppose. Yeah. Then you know what game you're in, actually. I was having to... Yeah, look around. Do the math, look around. No fair making it easy. So it looks like that 11 
goes past the five up in the top there. He's got to get up there. Well, all right. Well, these guys must have been watching Premier League pool at shooting duck, shooting duck every time. That's nine ball has changed. I'll tell you that these four inch pockets have made it a different game. Races to five professional pool, and they don't take any chances. They yeah. just never. They never take a shot that's a wing. I mean, it just it never happens. You you watch them, and if there's any question, they're gonna say, you know, and they're just gonna leave it tough. I mean, it is. It makes for an interesting safety play game, but it's just a different game. It, yeah, I agree with you there. It's a, it's, yeah, it's heavy on safety play. It's like tennis. Yeah. Me personally, I'm not a fan of watching tennis, unless it's big rallies. Yeah. Back and forth. I used to watch a lot of tennis when I was younger, like when it was like Andre Agassi and like that whole crew, but. Yeah, because it was interesting. It was exciting. It was fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, it. You know, I think that uh, if I'm being honest, I think pool is lacking that. I think, you know, no matter how much they try and do it different, and it's a good thing. And I think everything we got going on in the pool is good. To me, what's lacking for me personally is the excitement, the player that is going to energize the room every time he walks in. Because all of them are machines. They're the same robot over and over again. There's nobody that's doing anything much different yeah. than the other guy. They're just all playing it safe, <laughs> you know. And I get it, you know. I mean, you're trying to win money. But I think we just need more exciting players. You know, even like Ronnie O'Sullivan, right? Yeah. One of the best snooker players ever. What makes him so good is he plays these exciting, unbelievable shots that nobody else is going to play. Yeah. You know, and that that's what makes it exciting. And I, I don't think we have that guy in our sport right now. Uh, maybe Jason Shaw. Yeah, you I got some, he, you got some fiery personalities and some a few some characters, but they're few and far between. Yeah. You know, in in this turn, I mean, uh, Sky is another one. Sky Woodward. Great. I mean, I can't say enough about what a great representative of our sport that guy is. I think out of the you know, out of the room for the Americans, no doubt the best representative we can have, just because he's always joking, having fun. Yeah. Uh, and plays good. You know. Yeah, I just saw that they are doing player captains this year for a Moscone yeah. Cup with yeah, him with, and Jason. Yep. Yeah. So that might. That might add some dynamic to it a little bit as well. Yeah, it will. I mean, it definitely will. I mean, Jason's energy is contagious. I can tell you after the last two visits there, you know, I mean, number one, him and Ara are probably two of the nicest, most welcoming, really made you feel at home, you know, I mean, uh, of anybody I've met. And Ara holds holds that team together, I think. You know, they got a great family too, so. I said he ruined Moscone for me because it's hard for me to hate him now. <laughs> yeah, because he is sort of easy to uh, easy to hate a bit. All right, but I he's mean, he's such an amazing player. It's I don't want to give it away, but he plays the part really well. Yeah, he he knows his role. Yep, and he is. I mean, he does have that personality. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he he is definitely uh, energy all the way. You know, I mean, he walks in the room and you know, you know that he yeah. that he came in. In a good way. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, I as you were talking about the game changing, it's it, like the like we were saying, the equipment has changed with the tables, the the cues. Everything's just kind of evolving. It's, and some of it's, I think, a good thing. But other, other things, like you're saying, is that it's some of the personality of the game is, has changed for sure. Well, I mean, the the information and the products are so readily available, just like anything else, that now all you need is the commitment. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not a matter of means anymore. You know what I mean? You, 
you have access to good equipment, you know, which isn't necessarily the ruling factor because look at the Filipinos. Right. I mean, holy cow. But to your point, I think the the access to information and instruction, uh, you know, with the internet and YouTube and whatever is, is incredible compared to well, when I was coming up in the game 30 plus years ago now. That's all good, you know, I mean, all that stuff, but it can be bad too, you know. I, I, I couldn't urge people enough, no matter where you are, regardless of the videos you think you watch that are perfect, go and see a personal instructor, somebody who sits and works with your mechanics all, you know, the entire time. I don't care if it's a pro player. I don't care if it's somebody uh, like me that does the instruction. Matt Strong does a really good job with mechanics also. Um, you know, but but there is no doubt, and I don't care what level you're at, I don't care what you think of your game, I don't care any of that. Uh, you sit with somebody who has actually analyzed mechanics and the way that your mechanics are supposed to move and then compares it to what you're physically doing in the moment compared to watching a video and trying to replicate it, trying to see for yourself if you're doing it properly. Well, number one, you're in the wrong spot to learn anyways Right. at that point. You know, you're supposed to be taking it in and applying it and then being told whether or not that's right, wrong, and then making the mental adjustment. You know, I mean, it, and it's tough to do off a of video. Yeah. So a couple hundred dollars you're going to spend on a few hours of instruction invaluable yeah in my opinion i agree with you 100 percent. it's not like you got to go every week i guarantee you i don't care what level you're at give me an hour of your time and i will improve your mechanics in one way or another and make you a more consistent player yeah i agree with that you got you got to build off a foundation and uh you know i just i'm thinking about like when i was a kid like reading even Billiard's Digest magazine and like going through diagrams and, and practice shots and then reading Robert Burns books and stuff, you know, like that stuff was like really valuable, you know, but I had to have the mechanics and the instruction from guys like you and Jamie Jansen and all those, yeah. you know, all the, the better players at the time. Well, I miss that guy. His yeah. mom comes in and sees me uh, every once in a while. If people don't know who Jamie is, he was just a phenomenal pool player in Wisconsin quite a few years ago now. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. That's crazy. Uh, she, what did she, she was just in the restaurant the other day and she told me how many years it was and I couldn't, uh, 30, I think. Oh yeah. I was going to say it's got to be 25 or I, so. I think she said it was, it's been 30 years. It's crazy. That's going to come out okay for him. Definitely didn't leave him a gravy shot here. Nope. Let's see what Johnny does here. Safety off the six. It's, yeah, hard, it's hard for me to do that because I'd always think he's going to push three. that one into a better spot and then put the cue ball down on this bottom rail. Let's see what he does here. Three in the side. Bing. Or do that. Yeah. That's the aggressive shot. Yeah. It's probably the shot I would end up playing. <laughs> But yeah, the smart shot there was probably safe off the six. I would have played aggressive. I, I only play a safety if I have to. Yeah, I'm kind of the same. Because just like you were saying, you, anytime you leave somebody back at the table, they can kick a ball in, and I'd rather be at the table. Oh, see, we covered some of the nuances of the Yeah, we did. We didn't even, didn't even think about it. Hope hey, good morning, Glenn. I see Glenn Sager joined us. Rooting yeah. on Sussex. Well, he's going to leave this a little interesting. I don't think he's going to have too much trouble. He should be able to just come around the 11, it looks like. Rolling forward. Yeah, just got to avoid that 11. Don't get hooked up on there, but... Looks pretty good, though. Yeah, it looks like he's got the right angle. Yeah, exactly. Fairly natural. I think just even center ball follow. It's all about how thin you hit the one, really. Yep, good shot. Perfect. Yeah, could not have hit it better. He's 
within two feet of the other ball. I'm going to put this down to put uh, Sussex runners up to six games. Alibi better get her rolling here. Or they're going to be in trouble. Yep. Can happen quickly. <clears throat> we were up four to one on Flanagan's Rackheads. Uh, Keith and Caden Hunkins and Blake yeah. Waldo and those guys. And they rattled off 10 games in a row on us. And, uh, it, it got ugly quick. Every game matters. The momentum, the... Yeah, and it's crazy when you feel that dip. Yeah. You just feel the energy literally drain from everybody. And then you see the other guys just energized. You know, I mean, it, it's, it is amazing how that energy transfers just in a few crucial moments, you know. Yep. Well, table two, we got Randy and Randy playing. Uh, nice. And Randy Fenner just tried to shoot that seven into the corner and didn't hit it hard enough and fouled. Ball didn't, in hand, yeah. Didn't, didn't hit a rail at all. Now, there's a guy who used to play all the time. Mike Frisch? Yeah. They used to call him Slice or something like that, I think. I don't. Know. I don't know that nickname of Mike, but that I know Mike from years from, ago. You know, I played in the Waukesha leagues for years, and that's Mike Frisch has been a part of that league forever. When I've tried the Sunset Bowl, that's yep. where we used to go and play them. Yep, that's. I used to play out of. Boy, that place has changed. Yeah, Flanagan's and Sporties Sunset okay. Bowl. Yep. Still one of the best places down in the Milwaukee area to go play. Is that um, where Bonnie plays out of, yep, right? Yep, Bonnie. Yeah, yep, Bonnie she runs, runs all the leagues. Yep. I play out of Sussex Bowl, but I've, I've played many years at, at Sporties and Flanagan's. Bonnie does such a nice job down there with all the tournaments. and She really does. Probably one of the nicest ladies in pool, too, to be honest with you. She uh, always promoting the game. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a mess. I don't know what he plans to do here. I'm not sure, quite sure where he was going with that. I'm not sure either. I would have um, thought he would have been trying to get up the inside here to play the 14 in that side pocket. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't paying close enough attention to kind of how he hit that ball up in the corner, but unless it slid on him a little bit or something and. But yeah, he's kind of in a tough spot here. Can't tell if he can even catch the edge of that. Looks like he can. I think he can, but I don't know to what. What he's going to do? Yeah. Just push it in there and make Randy you work on it. Try to make the seven? Yeah, dump, if you can. Dump the 14 into the two. And, he, that's and what he, he was trying. Well, he got the 14 two in there, so, I mean, that's a clutter there a little bit. I guess he can get it with the five. Two six might be straight in too. That's hard to say. We got a couple of uh, safety battle games going to be going on here, table one and two. Yeah, Randy's looking at that five ball on table two here, seeing if he can uh, even take that off the off the six, or if it goes clean. I'm not sure. Or maybe he's going to opt to break it out here with the seven. Let's see what he does. No, I think that two six might go too. It looks like. Yeah, he's looking at the five. 
Okay. Wow, look at that. Off the two. Caramed it into that, yeah. that ball. That's a heck of a shot there. Still got some work to do here. Like, you got to get on the right side of the I don't mind ball. shooting the 6-7 here. I kind of like that, too. Just, just to get that 6 out of there. And... Yeah, and then you got that 3. You know, if you just roll forward a bit, I don't know. I'd be tempted to shoot that combination. I don't think he's going to, but. I mean, I guess either way, if you shot the seven and then come back to the six. Then the three? Three, two, four you becomes get, a problem then. Yeah, you got to get up there to the four. I mean, really, that's the issue more than anything is finding the pattern to get to there, so. Oh, that'd be one way to six, four right now. And then roll back up for the three and the two. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think that's how I would play it, but I'm. <laughs> I don't think he's got a choice anymore, really, right. unless he's going to cut the two up in the left corner up there, which wouldn't be the worst shot. 14 would still be blocked, you know, unless you really drill it and come back out. But I like this here. I mean, if he gets where he just pointed, that's a nice angle to come up in between the 14 and the 8 for the 3 in the side. Yeah, I think you're right. That's, at this point, that's the way to go with it. Let's put the top on this ball. Now I'm curious. Is, is he going to go into it? or? Uh, it looks it's like it. if, if he puts top on it, yeah. he is. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know that I that wouldn't would be do the that. intention. Yeah. So. All right, now he's looking like he's going to punch so, it. Mark. There we go. A little, little blow. Oh, oh. my. Oh, what are the odds of doing anything even close to that? I don't, yeah, that. <laughs> he, said, he said the same thing. He's like, I didn't even know a ball could fit through there. That's crazy. He, like, bent it through there into the side pocket. Uh, like, I doubt if I still got it, but I should look. Yeah, that would, that would be a good replay. Yeah. Uh, I actually do. I, I want to. I don't. I don't know if Randy wants us to replay that too many times, but that was. I've got to get ready like right away. I'm gonna wait though. I do want to replay that if I get a second. Okay, it looks like Randy, from uh, Alibis, is gonna take down the Randy Randy game. And he did. So that's gonna get it to six six, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I agree. Six six should be All right, the score. So we're we're gonna have a good shot here, uh, a good replay. Just watch this. This is unbelievable. I'm transition. It's uh, right about now. Let's take a look. Just watch that shot. That is unbelievable that that thing even got through there. I'm sure he thought it was unbelievable, too. John's got an interesting shot here. Playing the safety. Yeah. I think I'd play a safety right back, just straight at 13, stop shot. Right? Stick him right on the 8. Yes, I like that shot a lot. We'll see if he... Uh does that or if he attempts the uh he's playing the nine it's a definitely interesting choice would not gonna try to come that. back into that eight in the side okay aggressive shot there on table one Now he's got uh, even more work. Here. Even more work, yeah, to come because that ball does not go past the eight up there. So he's gonna draw into it. Yeah, he's loading up. Draw next to it. Yeah. Well, he had no problem drawing that ball. Maybe it's just you. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he had a pretty jacked up stroke trying to get down that. This is good. 
good angle. Yeah, to get just out roll it in. Here. You should be good. That's a pretty impressive little out there. Made some interesting aggressive choices, but they paid off. Yeah. So that's Randy Frymark playing. All right, well, good out there by Randy. Puts Alibi up seven to six. Tough loss there by Johnny Gonzalez. All right, we got uh, Dave up. Who's he playing? Uh, Dave is playing Leroy. Is that right? Yes. So we got Tom Radowitz and uh, Ryan Lindquist playing on table two. And then coming up on table one, looks like it's Dave Redlin and Leroy. Leroy Power. I'll tell you, I didn't mind the Wednesday start. Yeah, I mean, it... I think it's it nice. feels like Sunday, but <laughs> yeah, I know. But you get to go home and you got an entire day to rest up, and yeah, before you got to get back to the grind. So that part's kind of nice, actually. Although for me, I had to take off a day of work that I don't, I normally didn't have to take off. But ah, I mean, what's forty, fifty bucks? Yeah, no big <laughs> deal. <laughs> All right, well, Tom is uh, you bumped that ball and he missed. Even at 40, 50 bucks, he got it better than me. I, I usually, it cost me money to work most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have a unique situation going on in that regard. How was a foosball tournament you guys had? I heard that was... Uh, I don't know. I wasn't there. No? It was the first time. It was oh, actually yeah, because you, you guys were... Uh, yeah, we were doing the Premier League filming, and uh, it was kind of nice. I didn't have to tear down a single pool table. Did MH, but I got MH back did and, all the work? Or? Yeah. <laughs> no, he did. He... Tuesday night after our league, that's our biggest league. We got like sixty some players in that league. So right after league on Tuesday, uh he started tearing everything down. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of work to tear down and set back up, I'm sure. But I'd say I got that hydraulic lift uh now and we just stack them four in a row and three high. And they all fit in that little side room just out of the way. They put up a curtain wall there, and it's like they disappear. And that, that lift that I have is perfect because it stacks them no problem. It'll actually lift three tables. Wow. Stacked. What, is a, what does a table weigh? 900 pounds. All right. So 3,300 is what my lift will take. So I think they said 950. Something like that is what I was talking to John about. Okay. All right. Well, Leroy here is looking like he's running this out. Going to play a little combo here. Just leave the ball right there and then come around for the eight. Made quick work of that table. Good shooting, Leroy. Yeah, it was nice out there. Take an eight to six lead. Yeah, my buddy Jeff Blattner was up uh, in Appleton for work, and he brought his cue in to get, uh, I think, a tip put on, and then he was going to shoot a little pool at the Mad Apple, but all the tables were stacked up and gone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, John, actually, from Diamond, was uh, he called me. He's like, what time does the tournament start? I'm like, uh... <laughs> So he had already booked his room and everything in the hotel. He ended up staying because it was non-refundable. Sure. So you get to check out the foosball players for a little bit. How many uh, foosball players do you have for something like that? 280. Wow. 
And they're all captive, you know. I mean, it's a perfect venue for them, really. Um, the hotel's right there, so everybody's able to stay on site. They don't have to go anywhere. It's kind of like here, you know what I mean? Yeah. You get in, and and we're the perfect size for the foosball group because that's about as big of a group as you're going to find. Yeah, that's... Uh, for them, you know, 280 players is a lot. Is that like a regional thing or a national thing? World. Or? I mean, there's World? worldwide players that come there. We're believe it or not, in the foosball world, we are known as the mecca. Really? Yeah. Wow. Players really love it. They enjoy the setup and everything. They don't really have any opportunities even similar to that. You know, it's not like pool. I was, I was calling the bastard child of uh, the bar sports because. And they, I mean, they had their heyday back in the 70s. It was huge. I mean, foosball was huge. And, uh, you know, there's documentaries and stuff on it, you know, which I've seen, you know, but they all relive the glory days all the time. So yeah. But, I was never really good at foosball, never really spent much time at it. But when you when you see some, some players that know what they're doing, it's it's impressive. It's It's very similar to pool in the fact that people have no idea the type of control they have over that little ball yeah <laughs> i mean it just you know it, and once you realize that once you realize when you watch somebody like a tony spreadman who's a world world champion most foosball players consider him the best player in the world uh, even though just like our fargo rating they have a rating system that's messed up <laughs> kind of yeah. um but uh you know you, you watch a guy like that and he plays against some of the world champions that we have that play out of Mad Apple. Actually, we've got quite a few that are world champions and have won world titles. And uh, he just makes them look like kids. You know, he just toys with them. You know, it's like a cat playing with his food. Right. You know, and everybody, it's a unique situation because it's like everybody's coming to that tournament knowing they're more than likely going to get second. You know, I mean, that's what they're shooting for. <clears throat> Well, that's interesting to hear a little bit into the world of foosball that I. Yeah, we think we're so unique, but I tell you, it's it's all the same stuff. You know, it's just pick your weapon. That's it. I personally think our weapon is better, but yeah, you know, what do you know? All right, so let's see here. Um, Brian Lindquist playing on table two here. Looks like that nine must go past the the eight, so he's just setting up here for a nice little out. He can just pinch this ball and I tell you, Sussex better look out here. Yeah, they're uh, starting to get in danger zone. I was thinking Sussex was going to run away with this thing for a minute. These guys have come out back to back to play, show them they mean business, and there goes the eight ball. So that's going to get them to nine. Only two games away. We got two games in progress, so it could be over quick. Appreciate all the likes and shares, guys. Please get out there and share. You're watching the 2024 WSPA Wisconsin State Pool Championships for teams. We're playing off for seventh and eighth in the mixed A division. Really looking forward. We got some masters matches coming up too, so this match has uh, been exciting. But uh, some of those master matches can get a little even quicker. Yes. Some runouts yeah. going. So we're looking forward to seeing some of that. Well, critical game here on table one with Randy Fenner at the table right now. Sussex needs this one to keep them off the hill. How are we doing on table three over there? Oh, looks like something just happened. Oh, did they stop using? Did they go down, back down to two? Oh, they two? must be just down to two tables. That's, that gentleman has nothing to do with this match. So. All right, and John Gonzalez is up here at table number two. He's a good player. I like John. 
Yeah, he's been working at his game too, you know, like he uh he's been playing on a big table nine ball and doing some different things this last year to kind of get himself back in stroke. But he's always always played strong. I played for years with Johnny on leagues and in tournaments. Yeah, that's six straight for alibis. So Yeah, Sussex needs to stop the bleeding here. Longest streak for Sussex was three games. So they were up six three and now it's nine six, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Alibi hasn't marked one of their games, but um, what's that on the uh, stream? There we still got eight to six, but I think it's oh, nine it? to six, right? Oh yeah, you're right. That's my bad. Uh, that's because Mark's in charge of marking. Yeah, I'll run out there and get it on there for him. I'm not going to ask him to go score his opponent's score if he forgot. Right. All right, well, let's see what Johnny can do here on table two. He's got the, uh, looks like the 12 ball. That's his main trouble up there behind the seven. The 11, I don't think, goes past there either. It's hard to tell, but so he's got some work to do here to get out on this table. Topple must have seen me coming. He marked it. All right, well, Johnny... Missed that ball, but seven is still tied up for, uh, who's he playing here? Randy. Should just guess Randy. Hey, good. What, about a 10, 10 to 15% chance? That's yeah. not bad. Actually, it's a, yeah, there's two Randys on uh, their team. Well, one, out of, one on Sussex. Even better. Who's that? That's crazy. That's like 20%, right? Yeah. 20, 30? I don't know. Not very good at percentages, apparently. Two two out of five is 40%. Yeah, right. right. There you go. I went to engineering school. Nice. I used a calculator a lot, though. <laughs> With some of those numbers, I believe it. How do you, what do you think? You went to engineering school. What do you think of the bridge collapse? I mean, pretty, pretty incredible. You know, I, the... The thing I'll say about it is that I'm I'm surprised that there was not more protection around those critical elements. Uh, that is a big part of the conversation, you know. I'm guaranteeing that that will be a conversation about that bridge in the future and other bridges that are around ports and such like that. Well, I mean, that's that, just from a mishap standpoint. Let's yeah. not even start to discuss the other options. You right. Know I, mean, I know somebody... that's, that's what came to mind right away when that happened was not, not that this situation was that, but yeah. the opportunity yeah. for other op other situations like that. Yeah, it, I just so. see light bulbs going on around the world, you know. Right. And you, you gotta, now you got to start thinking about it that way. Because if that bridge would have been full, right. I mean, the ti the timing of when that happened uh, was really actually pretty good considering what that could be. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Unfortunate that there still were some fatalities in the situation and some yeah. construction workers that were up on the bridge. You know, I, I oversee a lot of heavy highway construction, like not physically out there anymore, but my teams and our contractors that I work with and, you know, they – they put themselves at risk just being out on the on the road and whatever at night and oh well, yeah it's uh construction's a dangerous job so it's like running through a firing range kind of yeah i mean really i mean it's but never anticipate that that's the risk you're going to run of the bridge collapsing while you're up there filling a pothole you know? yeah 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 is that what the workers were doing yeah, they were they were doing some like deck uh, bridge deck, uh, yeah. concrete concrete surface repair. I'm guessing type stuff. 
Yeah, that's just unreal to watch, you know, that and how brittle the whole thing is. Yeah. I mean, that, that to me was the most astonishing part. You just wouldn't think it would have that catastrophic of a effect, you know, taking one pillar, you'd think it'd have some prevent to keep it from taking the rest of it down, you know what I mean? But yeah, you know, like it's, it it's is all it, a balancing act. That's what engineering is, right? It is. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with like truss bridges like that, like yeah. you have these fracture critical sections of the bridge that if one goes down though, you know, it's going to affect the whole thing. So yeah, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see what happens with it as far as like the, the rebuild and, and years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to take probably a couple years to rebuild that. You know, I think the, it's the largest span, right? I mean, it's one of the largest span bridges there was. Yeah. Right then. I think like, st I think it's still like the third largest in the country, I think. Yeah. And built in the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, an engineering marvel at the time it was constructed. All right, well, that's a yeah, little, let's yeah. bridge talk for today. <laughs> and uh, Back to pool. But. Back to pool. So, Johnny's got a chance to get out here. He yet was kind of keeping an eye on on table two. He made a nice shot to break out his ball there that was tied up with the seven. He didn't want to run into that ball. He just ran into coming down here. But, so, he's got to get I'm surprised on one that he's playing this 12. That's well hit. Yeah. He's going to end up getting rewarded for that. Yeah, good shot. He's getting worried there for a second. He was going to get yeah, up behind close, that 10. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, how quickly things can go awry. Good shot, Johnny. Well, this is going to be a really nice out for Mr. John Gonzalez if he can close out these last two balls at a critical moment in time in this match. We got a good morning, guys from uh, Torture You. Uh, nice. Is that a friend of yours or? Tor no, Torture You uh, was here last year. Okay. Where are you from, Torture You? Are you even from Wisconsin? I think you are. Perfect. Good shot, Johnny. All right. Well, just got to concentrate on this and put it down. Punches are in the hole. Good out, John. That's uh, that's the John Gonzalez I know well. Gets within two. Yeah, at this point, you're scraping to just keep them off the hill. Grinding them out. So who's up next? Let's see. Tom Radowitz is going to be playing Randy Frymark on All table right. number two. I think Randy started this whole thing off the till John took that last one. I think Randy took the first game. Maybe not. I oh, thought no. he started that run of six, but no, it was Leroy. Well, Rand you can kind of feel the momentum changing here a bit. So Sussex swinging back around. Yeah, and they get they're they're kind of in the uh, the driver's seat, if you will, on table one. Tough spot, that thirteen ball. I think you just got to go long rail, two rail, kick this ball in, huh?
yeah, it's it's hard to play a safety if you come on the back side of it. The six is sitting right there. I agree with you. I would I would just go for it and you have a better chance of the cue ball kind of squirting then to the middle of the table and kind of leaving them tougher. Unless you can spin it in. I, hard to see that angle. Rail first. Oh, yeah, you had the chance. That was a good try. That was Mike Felch that shot that. Good try there, Mike. So Randy Fenner up here to see if he can uh, finish these off. Not the easiest situation with the pressure on. If you miss that six, it's a sellout. If you play the three, then you got to get down here for the six or the five. So, or you play safe. Let's see what Randy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't mean, play even, safe even though. Safe that's, is that's tough, right? Easy jump shot or a kick shot. Oh, here I like this. Shoots five thirteen. Leave the cue ball over in the bottom corner. Draw it down into the bottom or top right from what we're looking at. Sure, because it doesn't pass the six. So yeah, I think that's probably not the worst uh, idea if that's what he's looking at. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. And he got it. It's a good shot. Smart. Smart play, Randy. All right, let's see if Mike can work his magic here on this uh, eight ball. What's he going to do? Bank it? Yeah, it's gonna, it looks like he's going to bank it cross corner. Tough shot. Well, thanks again for joining us here on the Mad Apple Extreme. You're watching the Wisconsin State Pool Players Association Team Championship for 2024. This is the mixed A division, tough division, lots of good teams in this division. Yeah, it seems like all a lot of the players fall in this division. Yep, this is the, there's a lot of teams in the B division too, but this is a, you get a lot of A players that are really double A players and a bunch of A double A players that are really master players and it's uh They're talking about restructuring a little bit the B's and the A's, I think. Okay. Uh I think probably trying to maybe not have the B segment quite as large. I trust them, they do a good job. They you know, they always seem to Oh, oh he boy, had it. Yeah, he did. Now look, oh, I almost put it into that side pocket. Well, these are a couple of huge games here for Sussex. They can tie things back up right now. They're in control of both tables. So I think Randy's probably in pretty good shape to run these out for sure. Yep. Just get up on the top side of that six and should be good. This is one of the instances where I just barely tap this five in. I either take the side or the corner. I don't really try and move my cue ball too much. See, and I I would have done exactly what he did. Yeah. It's a good shot. I just don't like the the you can get on the fifty yard line with that too often if you slow roll it, but again it's oh <laughs> That One, was two, a bank in shot. In my mind, it took a second. Three rails, that was. Yeah. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. And in it goes. All right. Getting him one game closer. Nine games to eight. Randy's heart definitely skipped a beat there. <laughs> All right. This is going to come down to the wire here. They always do. Yep. Right away when you think somebody's going to run away with it. Yeah, Torture uses uh, Northwest Indiana. Look at that shot over on table number two. Holy cow. 
Holy cow, I think he's going to make it. We should probably replay that. Let's take a look at this kick shot. Wow, great shot. That's a clutch shot, too, in that situation. Yeah, it is. Now he just rolls forward to the eight. Wow, great job. Great recovery because I'm, I'm wasn't paying attention, but I remember he had the one down yeah, here. Yeah, he, he got must himself have left in it trouble. Short. Yeah. yeah, it's a great recovery there. There's one you'll remember for a little while. Yeah, nice job. A great out there by Tom Radowitz to even this thing up. Evened up nine, nine to, to nine. nine. Race to two. Yeah, how many tables? I think there were like a, around 120 tables total. Yep. With 60 the pits, in each room. 180 plus the two pit tables. Or I'm sorry. 118. 118 plus, plus the two, yeah. yeah. Yep. So you're correct. So. Yeah, great tournament. Uh, this is just the team event. There's a separate singles event now. They've split them up. So there was some scotch. Some They did a three-person nine-ball event this year and then the uh, five person team events. Dean actually just made an announcement uh, on the stream first day. He said he was gonna break the news here and he's gonna have an Appleton open. So uh, just like he does the Oshkosh open. Yeah, exciting. Uh, they can do it at the convention center downtown again. And that is a guy, that is a nice place. venue. Oh, I love it. I think it's terrific. I, I like this venue, but I, I really like the, the Appleton venue. The thing that's nice about the Appleton venue beyond the fact that Matt Apple is there, right? Uh, is all the other great choices you have downtown for restaurants and bars and things to do in between your matches. It's just a great place to go hang out, you know. And then obviously having the Matt Apple there is just another yeah. bonus. Well, and you guys run the, the shuttles same. and everything, which is fantastic. Same thing in Oshkosh. You know, they get the varsity right down the street. You know, you got the hotel attached. It's just a great scenario for pool, you know, and it's good to see that Dean is... Uh, taking advantage of those scenarios and, and setting up some nice tournaments for uh, the Valley. Yeah, that's exciting to hear. All right, so we got Mark Topple here breaking on table number two. Oh, the 14. Just hung and the up. 13 is just going to hang up. Well, he yeah, hit he hit a nice great. controlled break. Kept the cue ball right in the middle of the table and unfortunately left every ball still on the table. So now in theory, we should be seeing both their clutch groups of guys here, the last two players on each team. So normally you would put your clutch players in those positions. Yeah, it's always a tough one when you're uh, setting up a lineup for it for an event or a match because you don't want to leave your best players till the end because you might not get to them but you also want to make sure you're putting some clutch players towards the end too that don't mind the, the pressure that was a good shot there by who's playing on this table against Mark Leroy. The shirt says Dustin, but yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Maybe that's his middle name. Maybe he goes by Dustin. I don't know. My name is Jim, but they call me Bob. Yeah. I know a lot of people like that, actually. My name is Francis, but they call me George. Well, Leroy oh. is a fast player. Oh, did he get up? Nope, he's I think he's okay, okay no yeah. matter what. But He's a rhythm guy, fast player, but he shoots him in. Well, and that's the guy you want at the end of the rack, I think. So he's going to get him to the hill with that really smooth out. Yeah. Yeah, that's frustrating for my nice. buddy Mark Topple. You break dry and leave it wide open for your opponent. Crucial moment. Dave made it to the table, so that's 
Score is 10 games to 9. Alibi on top. Top will just put it up for us. All right, so then on table two, we got Mike Felch. He's breaking against John Gonzalez in the anchor spot here. We'll see if that Dave can get out and make the Hill Hill game matter over here on table two. I don't know, table two doesn't look like they're in too big of a hurry at the moment. No, I mean, sometimes you wait, you know, I don't know. There's... Yeah, I get it. got a wow from Trisha. Not sure if she's referencing that nice kick shot by Tom Radowitz or just the awesome stream that she's watching. Pretty Either sure way, your, thanks for joining us, Trisha. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's your commentary. That oh, that too. Well. Yeah. Well, pretty nice break there by by Mike. Looked like Johnny was going to get up and shoot and then realized he made a, made a ball. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to jump in there. If you shoot quick while your opponent goes to get his cue, then you can just say, oh, well, yeah, you walked yeah, away. I think that's fine. Well, unfortunately, I sort of missed what happened on table one, but Dave is no longer at the table, and Mr. Brian Lindquist is at the table. With a chance to put this match away, let's see. He's got the seven ball down here, though, that looks like it does go past the 13. Let's see how he decides to get around this, get down there. Leave himself an angle on the two. Don't think that's what he was trying to do there. Came up a little short. Now he's in a little bit of trouble. Jacked up over a ball, shooting his two. You yeah, really got to power through this to make that in the side and come down here for the seven or play it all the way down. Let's see what he tries to do. Oh, Trisha was wowing on how fast Leroy uh, cleared that table and the commentary. Perfect. Mick uh, joins us and says, top-notch stream. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here on Saturday morning, Easter weekend. Had nothing but money matches going on. These guys playing for, uh, what was it, 900, so 500 difference, so 900 or 1,400, and 7th, 8th is what the loser goes home with, and 900 bucks. Not the worst way to spend the weekend drinking beer and playing pool. Yeah. It's... Anytime you can cash in in any of these events, it's an it's an impressive performance. Yeah, I agree. So congratulations to everybody that's playing here this morning. Yet, my team got knocked out at one ish this morning. Dave's got a pretty good looking out here. Just tap this ball in. He's got a perfect angle. He'll float away from that twelve. Yep, and then he'll be able to angle to just come right out for the eight. He's got a... Well, he, he looks aggressive. I hope he's not hitting it that hard. Oh, he did, oh look okay. at this shot. All right. All right, I see it. 
I, that's I, actually probably the smarter play. It was. It's funny, you know, sometimes when you're down there, you see it much easier than up here, you yep. know, and sometimes from here. I was looking at everything. it the same way you were, but this makes sense. Now you don't even have to worry about that. Oh! <laughs> Except for that part, maybe. Well, that was pretty big. Got lucky, though. It sat in front of that two ball. So although Brian can make this uh, seven ball, I don't know what you do with the other one. <laughs> one, two, three. I mean, you almost got to come around just to set for the bank again, maybe, huh? Yeah. Or you overcut the hell out of this off the 12. And open it up. It's another option, right? I mean. You could undercut it almost, and maybe it, off and the, that and that might actually work. Funnel in, maybe. Yeah, that's kind of. I think that's what he it's was easy trying. to hit that ball fat like that. So that's kind of how I thought it might happen. But there's a tester. Yeah, I, I'm guaranteeing Dave wants that other one back. Uh, he just got down on that quick and poked at it. Easy to do in, when your heart's racing. Pressure moment. Well, John just got himself in a bit of trouble over there. Got hung up on that nine, slowed him down so he didn't quite get down far enough for the 15. Still gonna cut her in. Oh, nope. nope, decided for safe. That's not gonna do it. And I tried the bank shot there. Well, Dave's going to be seeing that shot in his sleep if he gets out here. <laughs> nope. Pushed. Nope. Oh. oh. <laughs> I thought he rattled that, too. Yeah, it looked I like thought it, it kept was, rolling away. Yeah, I thought it was widening out on him. Well, it's not a definite, is it? No. I think it's a fairly good cut in the side, but you got to not scratch. You got to make sure you keep the cue ball out. As yeah, silly he's, as it he's, seems. Yeah, it's... he's hesitating on it just enough. Yeah, he doesn't like the angle of it. There's no pressure here or anything, no. anyways. I mean, there's only four other guys watching your every stroke. <laughs> and however, how many people we got? 104 people watching on. Nice. So, they don't. They, he probably doesn't realize that, but. Just crank the bank. I mean, if it's a dead scratch both ways, right? Straight on. Right. It has to be. I'm kidding. Is he really bent? No, he's no, cutting he's it. No, he's cutting right? it in. And he did. And he did. For the match. All right. Alibi taking it down. Yep. Good match. 11 games to nine against Sussex Runners. Congratulations to the runners. Seventh and eighth. Still a great finish. Still a great tournament. And uh, good luck to Alibi as they move forward in the, in the bracket here. And uh, we'll be back with another great match. Maybe I can talk Jason into hanging out a while. Maybe not. Yeah, I can probably stay <laughs> for one more match. All right, we'll see what happens. But uh, either way, we'll see you back here in a few minutes.
go. All right, well, welcome back and welcome to those that stayed on. Uh, we're maybe about five minutes away from the hot seat match here in the mixed A division. The Amigos versus the Pool Tang Clan. I like that name. I'm a big fan of the Wu Tang Clan. So yeah, this is Jason Roselle. Uh, Kendall had to step out for a moment but uh, 
Ken and I will be in the booth here for this match. And uh, you're watching the Wisconsin State Pool Players Association 2024 team state championships. So this should be a good match. Two teams that haven't lost yet in the in the mixed A division. And uh, as we were saying in the previous match, which was uh, on the B side, this is a tough division. Lots of good teams. How many teams were in this uh, in this bracket? Let me figure that out quick. All right, welcome, Anthony. Uh, let's go Pool Tang Clan. Got some fans out there watching their watching their teams. Thanks for joining us here on Saturday morning. I keep thinking it's Sunday. So there were 72 teams in the uh, this mixed A eight ball team division. So right now we're down to two teams here that are undefeated at the moment. Trying to get uh, trying to get into the into the chair. They're in the hot seat right now. So Pull up some info on these guys. Pool Tank clans from uh, Kenosha area, it looks like, and uh, the Amigos are from the Portage area. And looks like we're getting started here. So. Welcome, Ryan, rooting for the Pool Tang clan from Kenosha area. Try to figure out who's who here. Looks like we got Lyle McDowell from the Amigos taking on, should have asked him how to say his name, uh, Prajesh Sanghai. I think that's on table one. And on table two, we got John Bratcher taking on Casey Adams. Race to 11, team format, five person teams. Morning, Jillian. Cheering on the Amigos. We're gaining viewers. So, yeah, like and share the stream. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Matt Apple does a great job uh, putting on a stream for everybody. For for this tournament and others. So, yeah, we're, we're down to uh, all money matches here on Saturday. All the teams that are still playing today are are in the money in their various divisions. Congrats to everyone who's still in the tournament and trying to increase their cash. Got a got a good run here going. Table number one. Did well to get that 13 ball clear in that previous shot, playing that ball off of it.
morning, Jennifer. Let's go, amigos. Got some Portage fans. Came up a little bit short on that position, but... Has worked it out just fine. It's able to float down for the eight. All right, nice out. That should be one for the pool tank plan. I'm not sure if we have a third table going or not on this match or if we're just playing on two. Yeah, thanks again for joining us. Where is everybody joining us from? So we got 75 viewers and climbing. We're in for a good match here. Two very solid teams. Again, this is the hot seat match. Two undefeated teams, mixed A division. So on table one here, we got uh, Johnny Stanaway breaking against Eric Prosser. I know a few of these guys, recognize their names, don't know them that well. So I'm curious to see and watch them play. Nice break there, table one. It's a runnable table, got a little cluster up there with the 11, 10, six and two ball. Nothing that can't be worked out. Oh, there's a miss there, a little bit of a unforced error by John on table number two. So now we got, looks like Casey Adams up at the table, table two. With an open table. You know, let's concentrate on table two here. Let's uh, see what Casey can do. He's just setting up there to play the six ball next. Take care of those two at the top there and then come back down. See if he can hold the six though. Should be able to. <clears throat> Jillian joining us from Ripon, Wisconsin, home of Ripon Good Cookies. Yeah, I don't know if he was trying to hold that for that four. I think he was. Got a little bit more separation there than I think he was hoping for. So wondering now if he's going to change his pattern a bit. Jennifer joining us from Portage. Matt Corwin joining us from the Quad Cities. Got some, got Turner, Viking fan. Who 
who's going to be the quarterback of your team? What do you, you think is going to happen there? I used to go to Ripping Good Cookies all the time as a kid. My family, I had some family at Princeton area, so we'd drive right through Ripping from Oshkosh and stop in, get some cookies, eat some free samples. Alright, Casey trying to just play this four ball. Nice slow roll it in. A little bit of an inside English. Yeah, and that got him. Easy to do there when you try to put a little bit of inside. And throw that ball a little bit to the top rail. And that happens. Alright, so an opportunity then for John back at the table here for uh, for the Amigos. Everything's everything's there for the taking. I think that 13 even goes past the 9 if you wanted to play it that way, but Looks like he's going to opt to get the nine ball out of there now and then maybe play the 13 in the side. I like that. Play the 9, 13, 10 ball, 14 ball, then the 11, then the 8. It's the pattern I'd be looking to play here. If you can get the right angle off this nine ball to the 13, make sure you're not floating away from that 10. JJ just going to be throwing to himself. Yeah, see, he came up a little short there. So maybe he'll play the 13, 14, 11, 10. That will, will work also. Yeah, see... Came up a little short in that position, and then he's trying to hold it. Unfortunate there. Let's see what Casey decides to do here. He's going to opt to get that three ball out of there right away. Well, while he's thinking, we got a. Got a little run going on the other table. A little bit of a tester here on the five ball. Past that side. But he made it, drilled it. So it looks like Johnny Stanaway is gonna get another game for the pool tank clan. Casey caught that ball just a little funny, put it up a little high. He's just trying to punch it towards the pocket a little bit. Yeah, so now he's going to have to take that four, then the three, then then the seven ball, looks like. Which is, which is no problem. Just got to make sure you don't, like, get behind that 11 coming down for the three. Oh, J.J. McCarthy throwing the ball. So Turner thinks that the Vikings are going to draft J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. Talking football here? Yep, talking football. We have a Vikings fan, Turner, that joined us. So I was yeah. asking who's going to throw the ball off for their team. You know why their uniforms are purple? You know why they're purple? I, I don't. If you've been choking for the last 30 years, you'd be purple, too. <laughs> that one was for free uh, there, Turner. Yep. It's like, who's this guy? 
<laughs> yeah, and uh, Kendall joined us, everyone. Thanks for stepping in there, Jason. I was getting my kid moved out of the room, so I didn't have to pay an extra night of rent. Yeah, that's important. Was uh, was Mason still sleeping or what? I don't know. I still haven't gotten a hold of him. <laughs> well, good couple shots here by uh, by Casey on table two. Should be able to uh, come out for that that eight ball on the side. Just a inside English spin around, come out. You could also play it all the way up, depending on what what you're more comfortable with, but. Are oh, they yeah. just playing on two tables, Kendall? I was trying I to. I think so. It I doesn't so. look like they're using that third one at all. Okay. Um, it's the second time the Pool Tang Clan has been on this table. Experienced stream players. Okay. Well, he got got a little funny on this eight ball. I don't like these shots, and you're floating towards that side, but. They're so easy to undercut. Yep. They really are. You're cutting back across yourself, kind of. I think, you know, and because of that, I tend to overcut them because I. Yeah. Push it into the rail. Yep. And like I said, he's kind of floating over to that side, and normally I'd want to put a little low on this just to kind of push it off the its natural line that it's going to float out. Um, yeah. I think he's going to come above the side, like towards yeah, that sure. 13, but. Well, that's what I'm saying. Hard to normally tell. I'd put low, yeah. but it'll draw it right into that side right. pocket because right. of the angle. So I got gotcha. you. Got to gotta float it forward. No, he hit it good. Good shot. Good All right, shot. Good, good recovery there. The Amigos, that's the ones that we just had, wasn't it? Or, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's right. I was talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like they were on here already. They so Pool Tang Clan is from the, those guys are from the Kenosha area, and the Amigos are from Portage area. All right. So Mike Gann's area. Yep. All right, so coming up on table two here. We got Greg Schrader breaking against Daryl Dean. I don't know these guys very well. I know a few of these guys. Um, I know Lyle and I know uh, Eric Prosser, Anthony Sadlon. I know a f I know a few of these guys, but I don't know most of them. Yeah, Sadlon I know, and Anthony practices and practices he's a very dedicated player you know i apologize to start i don't i don't know how to pronounce his name exactly um rishesh uh yeah i think Sanghai? sanji is sanji? the last name okay sanji that but makes I, more sense but i don't know how you would pronounce his first name either Sanji. All right. Hey, good morning, Fred. Fred Renner joining us. Holy cow. How you been, Fred? You're not here? What in the world is going on? Every weekend I see that guy playing in a pool tournament. Somewhere. I know. he's He, he plays in all of them, doesn't he? Seems like it. I don't think he ever plays WSPA, though. So let's see on the kind of funny on the six because you're jacked up. Otherwise, yeah. it wouldn't be bad. You'd like to get up off the two. Okay, he's gonna go to the four. Let me try and get over on the two here. It's a pretty tight window, but yeah, I was trying too hard to get on that tight window. I think. Yeah.
All right, so he he's trying to get on that 15, get that out of there. Can't tell if you can get to that nine or if it or if you got to go into those. It feels like you can get to the nine, but you got to get down in that little window. Yeah, off the 14 here or off the 15? Yeah, I think he's going to, well, he's going to shoot the 15. And then I don't know <laughs> if he's going to play for the 14 next, but that's kind of hard to hold that ball. He's going to come down. Yeah, it's tough because if you come up and break into that 9-10, you almost got to get something. All right, so he's opting to take that 14 now and get it out of there. He missed his break, though. I don't like leaving that 15 ball up there like that. He's going to play safe. I think he called safe here. He's just going to kick into the back of that. Yeah, the safe was the right shot there. He just needed to come a little bit further under it to leave the cue ball behind it. This is not easy, though, shooting over a ball. He could just roll this in, though. He should be able to set up good for the four to the two, then. All right, well, he put a good stroke on that ball, but now he's got to go back to the seven, or he's got to play safe or something. See what he opts to do. Fred says he'll be at CSI Ho Chunk in May. He played Wispa teams a few years ago when it was in Appleton. Biggest tournament there is in the state. Most participants. Yeah. No, we're up to 94 viewers, so thanks for joining us. Make sure you like and share and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to Mad Apple Extreme. I'm always, a, I'm always amazed at how many people haven't subscribed yet. Yeah. It, I mean, because truthfully, it's the only way we get paid and are able to continue to do the streams. You know, it's just those subscriptions that help us. So you just got to take your little fat pudgy finger and hit that, <laughs> hit that button. Hit that subscribe button. Well, you know, I, I... And everybody's happy. Yeah. You get what you want. We get what we want. This isn't a threat or anything. Let, let me let me make myself clear. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, we learned even earlier, I, f I forget who you were uh, showing out there on their phone, and I think you had told them to subscribe a couple times, and they just... They're technologically challenged and just didn't understand how well, to do they it. make them sign in so they don't understand how to sign in to sure, their you have to, you YouTube have, account you know? right you have to create an account yeah which is really so uh, maybe it's like one or two strokes with your fat pudgy finger yeah it's like somebody walking into a dressing room he looked really uncomfortable <laughs> he did yeah <laughs> All right, Anthony setting himself up here for this win. They yeah, he left himself a little bit of an angle on that seven, so now he's going into those stripes, but it's going to come. There, that's, that's the way I would have shot it. I... Yeah, that's a little harder he needed, but. I think he's hooked on that nine, right? Yeah, he is. I would have played that, uh, I think it was the four, no, it was the, the two ball up in the corner. I would have played that ball differently, and I would have I would have spun inside English on that to just come into your position better instead of coming across to your position and coming down. What you didn't want to do is leave that, that angle going away or going into the eight, you know, you're better off leaving the angle going 
away from the eight ball. So he's going to pull out the uh, jump cue. We're going airborne here. See if he can. This is the type of stuff I see Anthony working on all the time. Banks and, oh, he's banking it too. So jump bank, he called it. A jump bank? One rail. Yeah, okay, I think we... he likes the fact that he can hit it solid and the cue ball is not going to get out of hand. Yeah, less to jump over. and. Well, he, well, he had the right angle. Just uh, jumped over everything. That's a tough one. You didn't have a lot of room there to to land the cue ball. So that's uh, unfortunate. Unforced error there by Anthony. So we'll see if uh, Aaron from the Pool Tang clan, see if Aaron can uh, navigate his way through this, this few balls. So I like this as to... long as he goes down the table and gets the 15 here next. I think that yep. looks pretty good. I think that uh, looks like what his plan is. Just straight top English and go forward. Yep, that should work out nicely. That was um, a little hard. Yeah, I don't think he needed to do that. Like, obviously, he was more comfortable rolling it forward and back yeah. up. But I would have either just either slow rolled it if you can, or just just punched it a little bit. Uh, look out! Just slow enough. Just slow enough. All right. Well, good finish there. Pool Tang Clan is on a bit of a bit of a run here. Yeah, whose advantage is it on table two here? Pink gloves. This is Pool Tang Clan's also shooting the eight right now. It's got a big pocket there with that five ball sitting right there. Yep. Let's see if he uses it. And he you did. You bet. Look and out. did he scratch? Oh no. <laughs> Gee, is they're flirting with the scratch though. Five games to zero, taking a jump out here in the beginning. The Amigos need to band together here, get things rolling. Yep, just need one. Got to get going. They've had some opportunities, so they just got to win the next five. Yeah. We got a what's up, Matt Applestream from Roland Star. What's up, Roland? How you been? Good to see you back in the chat. We're up to 110 viewers, so thanks again for joining us. Got Kendall Cook and Jason Roselle in the booth here doing a little commentary on the Wisconsin State Pool Players Association. Team state championships here in Rothschild, Wisconsin, up near the Wausau, Wisconsin area. This is the hot seat match of the mixed A division. Wow, that break just kept on giving. The only two uh, balls that didn't open up for him is the one and the 15. I think uh, either stripes or salads give you an opportunity to break those, though. I guess my preference here would be stripes. I like stripes as well. No. The only thing I don't like is that 10 kind of underneath the 8 ball. Just looking at the same shot, because if you get there and you break out that 12, you you would naturally probably want to shoot the 10 towards the 2 there, so creates a bit of an issue. 
a wrong sidedness, if you may. Yeah. Or if you will. Oh, right here. 14 on the side. Pump that two ball into the hole. Opens the whole thing up. But he's going 11 on the side. So what? I don't know. Oop. I think he was trying to play for the 14, then back across. But. Looks pretty safe to me. 7-2 combination. That's about what you got, I think. Or tear him off the seven. I think if I'm going to do that, though, I plan on sending the seven over towards that pocket. Yeah, I like. Break the six out also. I agree. I like that shot. Pretty darn big pocket. That two is fairly deep, but far enough out that you can hit it easy. Looking to see if he can just kind of almost like s spin around or mass air around that 14, it looks like. Can't tell if he can. Nope, he's doing a little mass air shot. Oh. Well, that'll work. Still got the seven. Six ball probably goes, if you just draw out a little bit, it probably goes up here into the corner. Meanwhile, we got another table about to be finished out by Mr. Sanjay. Six games to zero. Yeah, this is a little bit... Lopsided to start here. A little unexpected with the two undefeated teams. We said all you got to do is get one. Just get one to get rolling. That's the truth, too. That's... All right, so we got John. It's Johnny Stanaway. Looks like he's going to be breaking on table one. And we got Casey, who's playing on table number two against Eric Prosser. See, Johnny took the sunglasses that he had on his hat, off of his hat. Huh. Better weight distribution. Streamlining the process, huh? <laughs> yep. <coughs> Maybe they fell off his head, you know, when you have sunglasses, all of a sudden they fall, and you're like, oh, I didn't even realize those were there. Yeah, it's usually when I look up and they fall behind me, and then I fall back and step on them. Yeah. It's not real sunny out today, so I don't even know why he had sunglasses going but these fluorescent lights are killers yeah well he got a good decent spread on that break just didn't make anything so we got a dry break and we have an opportunity for Anthony see if he can get uh, get the amigos on the board We have Eric with an opportunity on table two, but work to do. Is he going to punch over to the three? That's what he's trying to do. Got the eight in the way. This is going to be a grinder of a game. Look how aggressive these guys play, though. Yeah, I like Just it. cross side bank and stuff, like trying to break stuff out. I like that a lot, honestly. 
it's good for TV. Yep. And I by like TV, I mean streaming. <laughs> fast paced. Exciting to watch. That's why college basketball is so much better than the pros, too. It it, it absolutely is. Unfortunate the uh, Marquette Golden Eagles uh, didn't shoot very well yesterday and yeah. are no longer in that tournament. Yeah, they were picked, too. A lot of people were predicting them to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. NC State played well. Give them credit. They got that one dude that their center. That guy is just a monster in the middle. Yeah, he is. Hard to move around and uh, gets people in foul trouble and all kinds of stuff. All right, well, we'll see here what Casey going to opt to draw over right now and try to get that eight ball out of there and then leave himself the three on table two here. Let's see what he opts to do. The only unfortunate thing you could do is push it into another ball or... Even up by the six. That's going to work out. Can they get on the board? Let's go, Anthony. And, oh, my goodness gracious. I thought he made it when he hit it. Um... Uh... I got nothing. I, I don't either. That that stings. I mean, I I can't tell you how much money I would have bet on that shot. Somebody would ask me to bet money on that shot. I, I would have bet a lot. I mean, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I agree. He, the position was absolutely perfect. Oh my. He's, all right, that wouldn't be my choice, but uh, we're hitting them good. Once again, not my choice. I'd probably shoot the seven. All right, well, Johnny is resetting. He's got to make sure he's got the pattern clear in his head. Yeah, I see Roland asked about Mason. So Mason played in the the Scotch double, so the upper Scotch, and then he played in the Mixed Master team division uh, on a team with myself. Uh, I don't know where he finished in the Scotch. They did not do well. He played uh, TJ Balthazar and him played, and I guess I would have expected him to go further. TJ's fairly underrated uh, for his ability. Um, but you know, it's just about meshing and it doesn't, it doesn't affect either player. You know, I mean, it's not one player or the other. It's just, a, a you got to mesh. Your games have to be. Yeah. Scotch, Scotch line. is a tough game in that regard. Like you're saying it, because people are more comfortable with different patterns and different shots and you know, you're going to set it up the way you like it and it may not fit your well and the better player might be shooting shots different in order to try and yep. accommodate the lesser player true um which you don't have to do you know i mean you, regardless of the skill level of the player you play you got to just let them play their game and do the best you can to recover for them when you need to you know and that's yeah. that's you know but when you start getting into this game where you're trying to leave them perfect every time well, let's let's be realistic. I mean, we we don't shoot for perfect every time. So, when you put that type of restriction on yourself and you try and limit kind of what you're doing, it makes it a lot tougher. Another one knocked down for uh, Pool Tank Clan seven zero. 
This turned into a bit of a nightmare here for these guys. Yeah, it is. It's just kind of snowballing on them. Yeah, and then in the mixed master team division, uh, the Mad Apple Ballers with Mason and myself and Robbie Schmidt, Josh Payne, and Mike Kitzinger, we we finished one spot out of the money, so we finished seventh through eighth. And uh, had a good time, though. We had a good team. We we actually did mesh well as a team, but tough division and uh, got knocked out late. Well, actually early this morning. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting uh, as lopsided of a match here. I don't think anyone probably was. It's not over yet, though. Nope. These guys can win seven in a row just the same. I've seen plenty of those types of matches happen. Like I said, you just got to get one, and you got to switch the momentum. Hello. All right, well, Casey just uh, missed that kick shot, so I guess another opportunity here for the Amigos to get on the board. So Eric Prosser here. Let's see if Eric can. Uh... Eric's a consistent player. Just got to come up the table here and make sure he leaves himself an angle to not come into the eight ball. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could just slide around it right here, but uh, I'd have to go forward to I get think, around. Yeah, looking at the way it's, it's laying, I definitely would be going forward here. Or he's going to opt to play the 13 ball first. All right, well, a little bit further away from that 15 ball than I think he was hoping. But all you got to do is just stay down on this and just stroke it in, and you'll, you'll leave yourself a shot on the 8, no problem. He likes the distance here. Yep. Hands are a little sweaty. Hearts racing a little bit, trying to get on the board here. All and right. they've done it. They got one. On the board. Let's go. Got to start somewhere. Yep. They'll take that one. Let's go, amigos. Ha, I see what you did there. All right. Who's up next? Uh... Daryl Dean. <laughs> I think we got Daryl Dean, I think, is going to be breaking against Aaron. I think that's what's up next. Oh, those guys I think are already playing. So we got Lyle breaking against Greg oh Schrader. Bang Time Pool joins us. Hello from Florida. He's What's up, Bang Time? Regular. Uh, we finally got him a shirt. Nice. No, no thanks to me. That was Patrick took care of all okay. that for him. Nice. 
I haven't seen as many videos from Bang Time as what we were seeing for a little while. All right, well, let's see if Daryl can get out here. Got everything there for the taking. Yeah, a little bump on the eight. I don't know if he really wanted to do that, but I think he was trying to hold the cue ball with that, but now he's also pushed it into the four. Well, this is going to be tight. I think it does go. But the more on that angle you get, the closer that becomes. Yep. I think they're going to call a rep over. Yep. I would definitely call one over. It's a good idea. Bang Time says he puts a few out almost every day, videos. How do you got that kind of time? All right, referee, going to watch from a half a mile away. Should be able to see it, no problem. Yep. That's Good hit. That was clean. Ah. Half the people I know know how to make this ball. The other <laughs> half don't. Yep. I'm a little nervous here. Well, he did. He hit it good. Not good enough, but he hit it good. Well, some work to do to get that nine out of where it is, but uh, the way it's been going for the pool tank clan, they shouldn't have any problem. Eric Prosser, the only one so far, seems to be able to manage to get a win. Hasn't really been bad play necessarily. No. I mean, it it's uh, maybe just being in a disadvantaged spot right from the get-go on most of the racks, I think, and some pretty good play from uh, Pool Tank Clan. So, yeah, agreed. I mean, that clearly there was a a few mistakes. We saw the the miss there by Anthony and that eight ball on the side, but. I agree with you. It's, it's just been the way the racks have kind of played out. And credit to Pool Tank Clan. They've been they've they've got out on uh yeah, when tables they when they you. had yeah. chances, so Well, I got one result. I found my kid, but I'm waiting for the other guy to text me back. We're trying to fix some issues at the restaurant, so I don't know. I don't mind maybe shooting the bank right now. I think you got yeah. enough room to hold it. Draw out of this. Yeah. I I don't think he's going to do that, but I think he's going to put some low left on this 14 ball try to come underneath the the nine let's see it's a tough shot wow what a terrific shot that was a great shot that really hit, was hit well We're going to watch that one more time because he hit that about as good as he can. And ended up in real nice shot, shape for this nine ball. I'm going to finish this rack out at eight. Wow, was that a good out. Very impressive. Good finish there by Aaron. 
eight games to one. They only need three to put this thing away. I can tell you what, three amigos are going to be coming back with a vengeance if they get beat up this bad. Yeah. They're only a couple away to coming back and uh, taking these guys on. But you still never know what might happen. It's a race to 11, three games. Those last three are maybe tough to get. Yeah, like you and I were talking earlier, it, it you can have swings in momentum, and all you need is to get a get a roll, go your way, and next thing you know, you can snap off five, six games in a row, and it's a whole different thing. So we'll see. Let's see if the Amigos can uh, get things rolling here. Nice break there by Eric Prosser, but nothing went in. So. Well, again, just kind of how it's been going for them. The one guy that's got a win for them right now they just left a wide open table on a on a break. The pink uh, glove and the shorts. I like the look. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's Greg Schrader. I don't know. I don't know Greg. Nope, me neither. But I agree. I like his style. You gotta own things, you know. Yeah. Well, this could have been worse, but he did leave him the ten ball, and uh, really, all he's got to do. Uh, not even looking. Is that Champ? I think it is Champ. Yeah. Yes, it is. He opted for a uh, defensive play there. I don't know. I think you can back cut this, but the six is still in a rough spot. Yeah, you got to try to just give yourself a bank then on the six if you can hold the cue ball that tight. You know? Yeah, or, or come all the way around. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he wants to make the four and leave the six as his only ball. So he's, that's the body language I'm seeing from, from Greg. Meanwhile, on table one, we got another uh, table run happening here after the dry break. Oh, oh buddy. <laughs> See, all you need sometimes is a, is a break to go your way. Well, that's right. And, so, you know, I hate to say it, but guys get, you get up this far and you do, you tend to let, let off the gas a little bit. And uh, stuff like this happens because you're trying to be delicate and finish out. And then all of a sudden you're not stroking the ball the way you were to get you in the position you're in. Yep. Boy, I just, when I talk about that stuff, it's like I, it's like I know what I <laughs> talk and it's like it's happened to me before almost. Right. That's uh, the only way you really do know. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> Almost, almost got a little bit of a roll and got it off the 14 where he was heading. That was impressive just to get over that ball. Hit it, yeah. Yeah. Well, I got faith in Prosser here. I think he's going to run this rack out. 
I think he's just got to get himself rolling. I think you're going to see a dot to dot. It's a question which way I'd start. I think I'd start with the 14, personally. 14 or the 10. Yeah, I I would not have started with that 15 ball. That's a missable ball to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying you should miss it, but it's just one of those where if you hit it just wrong, it'll bobble on you pretty good. But he, he liked it. He was comfortable with the shot. He made it, so. That really does matter more than any of it. You got to, if you feel good about it, it's a lot better than shooting something you're not confident in. Even if it is 100% the wrong shot. Oh, my. I saw him doing that, too. I felt like he was going to miss that ball when I was I, watching. I did, too. And I was just about to say, I don't know what it is, but we I've seen, like, three or four misses in the side just like that. Yeah, same way. Yeah. Five eighths bigger than the standard pocket. You know that, right? Yeah. Side pockets are five eighths larger. That's why whenever there's a debate for me which way I'm going to shoot a ball, if I have a choice, all I do is it goes through my head, five ace bigger. <laughs> Side pockets, five ace bigger. It's pretty consistent across the board, even on tighter tables. Well, that's unfortunate for for uh, Eric and the Amigos. They, they kind of caught a break there. And... Uh, and kind of handed it back. Well, not kind of, they did. No, oh, good shot there by Lyle. See if Lyle can get out here on table two. The Lyle I know is always out on this rack. Seventh out of 120 teams, Damon and his team did. It's a great group of guys there playing for the Mad Apple. Did I ask you if you got a chance to see Damon play at all? I actually did get to watch him play last night a little bit. They were playing next to us. He is something else, isn't huh? it? Yeah, we were we we were we kind of got a kick out of him because he he won a game one time and then when he was kind of coming away from the table, he just kind of like shrugged his shoulders, you know, like. Yeah, I, I made the eight. Yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> it, was, it was great. I tell you, as he gets better, he plays players that are better and better, and he's beating them in our weeklies. And he has empathy for the fact that these guys are older, and it's tough to lose to a kid like that. And I mean, he, he really does. He understands yeah. that that's probably not the best feeling in the world, and he, he will. He'll go over, he'll console them. He'll, He'll be like, well, you played, you played good, you know that one bullshit, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? and he's eleven, right? He's eleven, yeah. Uh, but I mean, he in that one match, he ran two of his four racks right from the get go. Wow, that's very impressive. Oh. There's all kinds of them here somewhere if you just uh, take a look around. I had one out for the other tablet. Yeah, re relating to that story, when I when I was a 
first getting into the game playing in tournaments i was you know 14 years old yeah sure sure um mason's grabbed me a coffee uh thank you mason but yeah when i used to go down and play at the magnet on friday night nine ball tournaments and uh you know i was winning quite a few games against oh older, you played older, good as older, a young player older players and i also appreciated the the feeling that they were going through losing to a, a kid yeah <laughs> Yeah, he's a neat kid. I really, I really enjoy him. And what is what is his name again? I apologize. Damon. Damon. Yeah, I talked to him last night. Then a little bit too. He was, he, <laughs> I, I don't think he wanted to make that ball. No. Yeah, you got to hit a replay on That's that. That's funny. Oh, okay. He didn't want to make it. Still funny to see, and I want to do the replay on it because it was. Safety back. We'll give it a second, and then I'm going to go over to that because uh, it was something else. I thought he called it there, so I thought it was even more than what uh, what it was. Boy, did he hit that! Terrific! Great shot. Jeez, I got to replay. Well, I don't know. I'll keep that other one just because it was odd. I mean, still a chance here for, uh, I think it's Greg shooting to, if he wants to go after this. Can you get off the four, you think, and get it? I think you can. Yeah, I think I think that's the way Draw I would it across go. Draw into the six off the four. While he looks at this, I'm going back to that shot that Lyle shot. Back in, knocks that 15 in. <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. That's yeah. All right, so back to the actual shot. He's going straight at it. He got it out. I just don't like the fact that you're pushing it onto the end rail like he did. Yeah. But now I think you just nudge it out in front of the pocket and bring the yeah. cue ball back behind that nine, uh, the eight. Yeah, you know, I agree. Or you can, you know, you could kind of shoot a two-way bank, you know, play the bank shot and roll up. Play yeah, roll hard, up you know. and leave him tough on the nine if you if you miss it. Anthony left himself pretty tough on this eight ball, and I think it's a scratch shot if he makes it, honestly. Oh, he went that way. Looks like he's opting for your. Uh... I'm surprised he went around the eight that way. He got a little bit fortunate, but. Uh... Yeah, he's flirting with the side pocket going that way. Yeah, I think I would have just went straight up and down. It gets the four closer to the hole. Yep. First, and then secondly, I think it's not as likely to leave Lyle open. Lyle can make this ball all day. Looks like he's banking it. And there's the champ it. making that one. 50 yard line. Left himself a tester. Yeah. There. Side pockets, how much bigger? Five eighths. So that means the ball I want to go in, I'm going to shoot into that side pocket. The one I don't want to go in, I'm going to shoot towards the smaller pocket. Get oh, out of there. no. Get out of there. Get out of there. <laughs> you got to uh... be kidding me. All right, with that, it's going to go to 10. They only need one, and we got uh, the one at the table with the advantage. That was. These guys have to feel like they that just my heart. <laughs> ran into a brick wall. <laughs> yeah. I just think there's nothing that went right for them. They didn't play bad. A couple no. of missed shots, but uh, I mean. 
just every roll just kind of went against him in this match. So far. Yeah, and we're not counting them out. Could be the comeback of the century. It happens. I don't know what's going on here. This shot makes no sense to me. Well, let's see if Casey can close it out on table one. Everything's there. Just the nine and ten and twelve, it looks like, are just kind of clustered up a bit. So you just got to navigate that. Well, Casey left himself on the rail here. I think he's going to shoot the nine, but. I think it's kind of tight whether or not that eight goes by the 11. Can't quite tell. I'm trying to look at it with the cam, I think. it. Does the 11 go past the eight? The 11 definitely goes. I'm not 100% okay. positive the eight goes past the 11, though. I think it does. Looking on the, it's almost confusing looking at the. Zoomed in close up cam of it. It looks like it does, but. Yeah, it's pretty close, though, I think. But if Casey keeps running out, it won't matter because he'll be shooting that 11 out of there first. Just take a quick look. It's close. I mean, it's, it's definitely. Uh, Roland's asking about the the stream table at the Mad Apple. If it's is there is there new uh, cloth on that table? He said it plays faster than he remembers. Uh, I mean we've put we did replace the cloth. We're gonna replace it again though because Simona sent us defective cloth. The entire every table that we recovered, we recovered in a cloth that was. Uh, inferior. I think people thought I was cheaping out and not buying the Simonis, but it actually made it out of the... They have two factories. They have the one, the original one, which is where 90% of the Simonis blue cloth was made. And that one flooded, as everybody at this point understands, happened. Yeah. Uh, but then they started making it in their Belgium factory, and the weave is different. You know, the sheen's just like everything. Different personalities to each each thing, you know, and yeah. Uh, so it just doesn't quite, it's not quite the same as what it was coming out of the original factory. Uh, but the ones that they sent me, they forgot to send it through its final shearing. So it was almost fuzzy. It was, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure everybody was confused. By oh, that. yeah. I mean, including me. I'm like, this doesn't look like any Simonis I've ever played on. And I actually started questioning MH whether or not he ordered the right sneaky, material sneaky uh because he's done that with cue balls which i yell at him for and tell him to replace them with the real ones but just because it looks the same <laughs> doesn't mean it acts the same casey casey's got a great opportunity here yep he's uh taking his time very methodical in in finishing this rack so let's see if he can well, Close it, out the match with these last two balls. If I'm being honest, the first match I watched, he was struggling a little bit. He was having trouble. Okay. Uh, but uh, this match, he's been much better. I haven't seen him really make a mistake, but uh, I think the stream might have got him the first time. He was hitting a couple of balls like bricks, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but he looks good here. See if he can finish this thing out. Nice clean shot. Did he stay away? Well, 
he left himself a little bit of a tester there. In the meantime, the Amigos got another game. Let's see if he can finish this out. And he Rolls did. it in for the win. All right, so they got the hot seat. The other team will be moving on to challenge and try and get back to the finals match. And we'll have another match coming up here shortly. Appreciate you guys hanging out. We'll see you in not very long. I'll tell you what's coming up. And uh, should be another great match. we got nothing but money matches going on today. So it's been some pretty fast action. Good to see. And uh, we'll have more coming. Thanks, Jason. Yep, thanks.
you guys time to wake up gonna join you for a little bit and watch this match got a loser here takes third place winner moves on to the finals we've got uh, one of the masters finals coming up right now we got stickball hole they're down by one but he's got an opportunity here to uh, tie things up if he can manage these last two balls Shot lining up for the side pocket. Gonna tie things up here. There it is. All right, so that's uh, Tyrell. The Tyrell looks like uh, took out Todd Holzer in that game. And then I believe that uh, Levon. I'm going to check out James. So the score should be 5 to 5. Oh, nope. My bad. I'm sorry. That was Terrell and Todd. So James and Levon are up right now. And I believe they're on table one. I'm sorry, table two. Yeah, on the hill is actually about six minutes from here. Nice new uh, club they just opened up uh, just over a year ago now, or right around a year ago. It's like a third ball break there. So it looks like, uh, okay, maybe they had three tables going. Maybe that's the confusion. I think they did. So we've got ball in hand over here on table number one. And I apologize. I don't know either one of these teams very well, so I'm trying to cipher who's who. Once I get it figured out, it'll be easier, but uh, stepping in in the middle of this match, it's, you know. Just 
Gonna have to work to get that nine out. He probably has the angle right now if he comes up, get between the eight and the six. So gonna be about at the first diamond off the end rail. He needed to get a little higher up. Didn't quite get there. He's gonna have to shoot something a little more difficult here. Don't really want to lose the control that you have down in that uh, corner pocket with the one and the three. One of the shots he could shoot is 12 off the rail. Okay, he's going to bank the 14. Or, I'm sorry, the 10 ball. A little short. Well, it actually made the one quite a bit tougher. Snuggled it in along the rail. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is Ken, so that means that he's playing against De Devin. I believe we're on table one. We're watching Devin versus Ken. Pretty nice opportunity here with this five ball. He could get up there and break this one. It looks like what he's going to do. I'd be hitting this with a little bit of high right. Stroking through it. Make sure you make the ball. That's the most important part. Hit that real good. Got it into the wide open. Now he's got choices. He can go to that two if he likes the angle to get over. I think you stick with the one here. One, two, six, four, eight would be ideal in my in my pattern. Obviously going to have an option with the four and the six. He's choosing to follow this up. He must have a little more angle than what I would think. Well, he got there. Even though he uh, came off that 13, he got about the angle that he wanted. No guarantee here, he's got to hit it good. It's getting tough. The angles keep getting rougher here. Don't really see a great way to get shape on the six and make the four. If you're going strictly for the out, maybe the bank on the four, cross side. The cut shot doesn't help you a lot. Unless you want to cut it from uh, about where the 12 ball is. You cut the four, probably the best hold you'll get is about where the 12 is. So you'd have a heck of a cut. He's looking at a safety. I think uh, you leave a fairly easy bank on the 10, no matter what you do for safe.
That was pretty rough. I mean, he gave that a pretty good run for what he had, but regardless, I think no matter what, he would have been leaving him a shot. I think I would take my chances here at cutting this nine ball, coming back for the 10. So nine, back to the 10, 12, eight. Not suggesting he does it, but the 12 in the side here isn't the worst shot either. It'll keep you, if you don't really like trying to get down for the 12 again, 12 in the side is not the worst shot. Seems tougher than it is always when it's sitting there. And he's going to go with what would be the obvious shot, I think. He hit it pretty good. He's not set up over the top of the eight ball. He should have no trouble here. Stick, ball, hole. That's all that matters, and he's executing that perfectly. Stays down, does everything he's done so far. Should put his team up by one in this race to ten, and he did. Good shooting, nice out. Well, now I'll find out for sure, but I'm pretty sure that was Devin that just won that. So if I'm correct, then Tyrell would be a gentleman about to break on table number one. And I figured out the match will be over, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. So Tyrell is breaking on table one against Keith Erbrick. He's going to come up dry. Hit him pretty hard. Nothing went down. And on Todd Holzer is against uh, Levon McFadden. Todd's racking right now on table two. Six six, we're keeping her tight. Effectively a race to four at this point.
results of the women who acted in separate families. They were Western ladies, first to attend them, early boys, second to more so third with violins. The new Western ladies were the question of the world. He's taking a good long look here. All right, let's skip over the table. Two, we got uh, Levon at the table right now. Looking at that nine, he's running out of balls to get that twelve out of there. Okay, so he's got to do something pretty quick. That would be included in something to do right there. Messing isn't necessarily the worst thing. This table isn't all worked out. If you're gonna miss now is probably the time. Todd's got his work cut out for him still. Principally the six is your biggest issue, I think, right now. I think the five goes. Todd trying to slam things home there didn't work out and in fact he opened everything up here now uh, for Levon. Oh, boy. <laughs> I would say that's going to work. He hooked him directly behind the point. I know he was trying to save him, but I don't know that he could even hope for that. Look out on table one. I almost put the eight in the side pocket. 
Fuck that. Bad with a good hit and a pretty good shot. He left uh, Levon tough there. I used to have it right in front of my face. I apologize. I just bang into it. Uh, it's well played. Kind of took the pocket. I think Todd's got an opportunity to do the same thing. Even better, smart shot. <laughs> well, I tell you, some days it just rolls right for you. And if you didn't catch it on table one, uh, he just had a shot that probably wasn't even close to going here. We'll replay it real quick. And right back across, but he left himself hooked on that ball. So now he's got, oh, I thought I switched this back. I apologize, guys. He's got the jump cue out. This is what they're made for. They're straight on. They have no problem. Oh, no. All right, made the ball, got it, didn't get it down quick enough, so it jumped off the table. It's going to be a loss over there. So, fairly unfortunate there uh, by Tyrell. So that will give Keith the win, and then uh, next game is going to be James against Ronald. Coming up on table one. Shot in the side by Todd. And leave himself the opportunity at the bank, or is he going to play safe? Safe it is. Careful. Well, I'll tell you, if I'm not positive that I'm going to make this hit, I think I'd be considering just rolling the five up on the 15 a little bit more to make it not makeable in the corner pocket here. I think as it sits now, if he gets ball in hand, Todd can definitely take care of that ball. I may even consider doing a just rail speed kick shot, one rail straight across and back into my own ball or into his ball just pushing it in uh, behind the 15 but that's a complete speed shot that way I want to thank everybody for joining us here today this is the uh, mixed B division third place match and uh, we're at the WSPA Wisconsin State Team Championship it's been a real fun weekend. It is Easter weekend, so hope all of you are planning to get together with family if you aren't already. Family, friends, whatever you like. All right, Levon choosing to kick it, and it's good. He made it. I don't know if he wanted to. Did he call it? Saying he did not call it. 
So with Todd being left with the choice here, this is a lot tougher from here. Maybe want to get a ref for this shot. This is just playing safe. Safe it is. Just gets there. Bond says two can play at that game. We can see Todd just roll his 15 up onto the five here. Yeah. Now, do you go for it? Do you take the bank here? I think I just shoot the opposite safety back the other way. Stick him right on my five ball. Who's going to shoot this? I think it's a dangerous choice. But sometimes you get the reward. Oh, it's the 15. Boy, I'm not playing smart here. I don't know why I was thinking he was solids. Apologize, guys. I was just going to say he got lucky not to scratch there because I thought he'd come off the end rail. It looked like he was going to scratch off the 15 in the corner. But I guess he didn't get lucky and didn't scratch. He got a little bit unlucky and did scratch, actually. Okay, Levon taking that one down. Let's see, so well they haven't marked the maybe I'm just not updated. I'm gonna try to have to watch an ad before I update. There we go. All right, current score seven to seven. Got James and Ronald playing on table number two right now, I think. Or wait, nope, table one. And on table two, we're going to have Ken DeHart against Jerome Harper. James getting down to the last ball. Wanted to bank that 11, but uh, got a little bit too far. So looking to give Ronald a chance here. Oh, 
I'm leaving that one just hanging inside the lip, so Jerome going to get his opportunity here on uh, table number two. Oh boy, Jerome had them both hang. Well, let's just say he owns that pocket. Oh my goodness, did he just kick that ball in? I look away for a second. He must have. He sure as heck did. <laughs> let's see the replay on that real quick. Couldn't have kicked it any straighter in. What a great shot. Under pressure, behind the ball. And now he pockets the eight, takes it down. Putting on the hill to eight games. Well, that came along with some trouble. He pushed, blocked out that 13 ball now. Now he's got some work to do with that 13. Cross side's not the worst shot if he can't get a break on it. I don't see a whole lot of opportunity to break it, so I think he's going to be trying to bank it at some point. I'll try it here, I guess. Thirteen will go off the three in the side if you were sitting where the four is. But I don't think he's going to get that luxury anymore. Right here, I'd be playing the three to the two, which gets you on to the one, and then you got it made from there. So just come up a little little short on the uh, two ball in the side pocket here. Just roll or go right to the one. It's probably a better shot from there. Let's let Jerome play. He can tell you what he's going to do. Combination, probably. Stop shot right there for the four next. Oh, boy. If it goes, he's fine. It's a good angle. He can just cut, just run over there. Might be a little bit tight to try and hold it on that side. Decides to push into it and break it. And I don't know that that's going to work out for him. Might have the side pocket by the 13, but awful tight. All right, banking it forward. I thought maybe he'd look at banking it back towards them to the left. <clears throat> he hit that pretty good. Oh, a little bit short. Yeah, yeah. I'm on my third coffee this morning.
Well, these are two big games here for on the hill. If they get them both, they can take the lead. If they only get one, they tie them up. Still looking for five more players to run another game. Women's Masters A and B, mixed A and B, five more players. Ken DeHart taking that one down, making it eight to eight. All right, so now we're going to have Kelly against Tyrell. Oh, no, they're playing right now. I'm sorry. Uh, so this will be Keith Erbrick and LeVon. Kelly and Tyrell are on uh, table number one right now. Logan Tyson, table 32. Logan Tyson, 32. It breaks, six goes down. Well, Kelly's going to give uh, Tyrell an opportunity here. Yeah, I guess ideally you'd like to get that 13 out of there, but I don't know that it's necessarily necessary. Okay, so it's probably, it's probably actually the shot still. We'd like to be up a little bit higher on it. But.
Oh, sorry guys, I got you off to the side. Uh, let me... Well, Heath, I apologize. I would like to watch it. I don't. We don't make the decisions on who goes on to the street. We just take what they're given or what we're given. Uh, let's go stick ball hole. Says Rick Porter. Natasha says great shot on the eleven. Must have been a while ago. Apologize, guys. It's probably the coffee distracting me. I'm sure he pictured that a little different than that. I would have liked to keep him behind his ball. Instead, he kind of gave up a shot here. Vaughn also getting back to the table. I'm sure you would have liked to move something there. On table two. Well, it's not getting easier, and I don't know that you want to give up your four ball down there, so I like his choice here. He's just going to tap this out. Well, it sure is going to turn into a messy game there over on two. The polar opposite of what we have on table one. Good shot. Should be good just to roll up here and have that eight. hesitating for a second because he is rolling away so he has to make sure that he doesn't uh, get up table too far for the eight no problem I guess he did have the right angle after all so with this eight ball Kelly's looking to Put his team, ironically enough, on the hill. One away. A 
defense there by Keith. Pretty tough that three ball kind of really throws a kink in everything. Vaughn just placing that in front of the uh, or 13. <clears throat> Just trying to create headaches, that's all it's about. Still a lot of work on this table. I don't know if he can get enough of this to draw it and actually pull into the three right here. Doesn't look like it. He's going to just knock this ball out. I think I like shooting the four to give myself, a, or the six, I guess, to give myself a little better angle on the three so I can run into that nine, 12 and break open the two ball. Right back where he was. Three balls later, same angle he had the first time on this three. Nine to nine. Down to the last table over here. Table one. It's got a great match here, guys. It's just about over, nine to nine. Todd Holzer and Ronald battling it out here for their teams. Thank you. 
A smart shot. He's going to play safe here. I don't know. He might have leaked out on that six ball. Giving him a bit of an opportunity here, I think. I think Todd's got the cut or the bank. Lining up for the bank shot. I don't know if that shortens his cue ball too much. Kind of want to come around the seven. Well, I'll tell you, Ronald's plan might have worked here. It's a tough balance, you know, when you play these teams tournaments and it, you got your whole team relying on you. You know, you want to play your game the way you normally do because that's what got you there to begin with. But you want to make sure you don't uh, make a mistake, so you change your pace maybe a little bit. Uh, so it's definitely a different type of play when you get to this. Um, I think I like that 11 next. I think you can just stop it right there, shoot the 11. Yep. And this I would tap forward, play the 13 after here. Or come back and play the 10, one of the two. No, he had more of an angle than I thought. It's kind of not in a great spot at the moment. Let's have 13s on a rope. I'd maybe consider shooting that 13 straight up. Really nothing to come up table right now. Shoot the 12, you're going to get in trouble. So it's got to create a little different angle here. Almost put it back where he was, but this time I think he can draw back out of this and get on the 10. A little bit of a stretch here for Robert. Or Ronald, sorry. Stayed a couple inches of draw. There it is. Really well hit. He's going to have to push over to the side rail and come back out for the nine. So just hook it down a little bit, down table. I'd rather be a little short on the leave for the nine. So back cutting it into the pocket than too long. Uh, be short, if anything. Looks like he's got an angle to go forward. I don't know that he can just stop it right there, so I think he's got to go to the end rail and back. He did. Very good shot. Got right back out where he needed to get. And he got this for the whole enchilada. There it is. Comes through for his team. 
Great tournament to Todd and the crew over at uh, On the Hill Billiard Club. Uh, they played great. Third place in the Bs. The biggest division there is. is nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, congratulations to Stickball Hole. We're going to see them go on to the finals and uh, see if they can double dip the team holding the winner's spot. Should be back with a Masters uh, final or semi-final coming up next, so don't go too far. And hopefully I can get somebody in the booth here to talk to me for, for a while.
All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the finale. This is the Masters final. So if you haven't shared yet, make sure you get out there and share. Really appreciate it. Um, I need this one here. I'm joined in the booth right now by Mr. Potts. So how's it going, What's going Kendall? on, Jeff? Not too bad. And let's see. So we've got uh, Happy Hollow out of Eclair, Eau Claire, whatever you want to say. Yeah, that's a solid and team. Very solid team. Made it to the finals, obviously. And then uh, you got Flanagan's Rackets. That's uh, who's all on that team? Uh, it's uh, Keith Hunkins, Caden Hunkins, Blake Wallow, Jay Peters, and David Vargas. Nice. Let me bring up the rosters here. I know we've got Carl Zoo Tavern. And Scott Gufserson and Chopper Olson. I don't know who the other two Chopper are. Chopper was messing with my scoreboard, so he's on my <laughs> list already. No, not really. This would probably be uh, difficult to stay unbiased here. Race to 13. Well, yeah. You... I got my son Blake on the other <laughs> team and my cousin's Jay Peters. Yeah. You had a hard time staying uh, neutral when Mason's playing? <laughs> Not really. I try and tell it how it is, you know. I don't figure it helps to lie. Yeah. You know? If he plays good, he plays good. If he plays bad, he plays bad. <laughs> is this the, that one there, the far table? Yep. So table one is here. It's kind of backwards for us to make it right for the viewers. So okay. this is actually right here. Okay. And then two is over on the other one. So Backwards, that's like, Dean's fault. Looks like you got Jay Peters on one table and David Vargas on the other one. We're going to bring it up here and we'll, if I can find it. Let's see, we'll do Happy Hollow. That's easier. So Jay's got the solids here. It looks like maybe his. Only problem there is maybe the eight ball here on this one. All right, so we got Jeff playing against David Vargas. We got Jesse playing against Jay Peters right now. That's what we yeah, got. Yeah, Jesse Turner is the other one, right? Jesse Turner. Yep. You got it. And then uh, coming up, we got Carl against Keith Hunkins. I was trying to bump that 14. Didn't quite get there, so he's going to have to. I thought he might have been able to hold that. I guess not, but on the monitor here, it looked like he could hold that. Well, now I think he's got to go to that four ball and come across, because he's kind of got to leave the one there to get to the eight. Yeah, this is eight ball. So I think you're playing the four to the seven to the two and then back out to the one. Definitely a tougher pattern than what he had yeah. in mind if he would have got he that gets two on that out. two ball right away. Yeah, both these teams got pretty solid players. Carl Zutan, he's come up pretty good the last couple of years. Hey, he told me how to pronounce it. Okay. Zoo Tavern. It's Zoo Tavern? Yeah, it's exactly that. <laughs> it's <laughs> born in a zoo. What did he say? Born in a zoo, hangs in a tavern. I think that's yeah. what he Is he going to be able to spin this down on that two ball to the inside, or maybe he can shoot it from that side rail? Unless that eight goes in the side, too. That would be the other option. Because then you could go 7-1, come up here for the two. Oh, I don't know if I like shooting that. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if I like shooting all of, any of them right now, but I think he, that's his choice. I don't think he can get there. So he's going to have to get creative coming off the two to get position for the eight. Yeah, he's looking at that side pocket. That's about what you got. I don't think he can hit the one thin enough to affect the 15, you know, because that would be the other option if he had yeah. enough of a. Yeah, he'd never hit that. Yeah, that's pretty good tricky. line though to get on the two. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna have any problems with a one or two. It's, yeah, I see that. Um, well, this is gonna be the key shot wherever he gets here, right here. Well, uh, because he's got to get just right on this two ball to get on the eight. Oh. I think it's pretty good there. Wow. Yeah, he hit that good. Can't hit it much better. How'd you guys end up? Like uh, we ended up uh, fifth, six. Well, that's still a good tournament. Yeah, we lost uh, Hill Hill to the Fond du Lac boys. Nice kick and stick there on table one. 
Oh, that's perfect. God. Can't hit her much better. Now I just got to get this finished and dump the eight. That's a good out by Jay there. He played that about perfect. Real nice, yeah. About to put uh, Flanagan's up one nothing. All right, so now we got Carl and Keith Hunkins coming up on table number two. See, he lost points for playing with my uh, scoreboard. Chopper did. Yeah, but he but he gained points because he's got one of my shirts on that I sold him. <laughs> so we're even, I guess. They don't got their matching shirts on. Oh, I guess they don't. Oh, maybe they do. All except for the team captain there. I got to bring him V next next year. That's what he was saying. Well, I think he's sitting pretty good here. David shooting the solids, I'm assuming. I believe or... that's right. I, I was able to say he's sitting good because I looked at both of them. <laughs> Couldn't go wrong either way, huh? <laughs> Couldn't go wrong because he's sitting good either way. The next statement out of my mouth is I'm not quite sure what he has, but either way he's sitting good. It's a little trickier. He's got to get around the 13 and back down table for the 7 in the opposite. What? Oh. Hey. I thought he was going to spin up and around. Yeah, you know, I thought he would have went two rails and went over in the opposite corner. Yeah. So easy from here, though. <laughs> I like that shot, though, because if you come up short, you still got it in the side pocket. Yeah. I just got to hope for something okay to happen here. I didn't even see it. I'm assuming you probably called it in the side, but. I got a hit. And that's. Could have been a lot worse. Normally, you get down that far and you don't get out in this division here. That usually costs you, but he might have uh, caught a little roll. Got. Uh, Carl's up on table two. Like I was saying earlier, he's he's come a long ways the last couple of years too. Boy, he plays good, yeah. Very consistent in what he does. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Scott though. He's always been a top player around up in that Eau Claire lacrosse area. Scott Gusterson, or I, I always pronounce his name wrong. But yeah, these guys have been playing together for years up there. Up there with by Chad DeBrucker and them. Yeah, well, I tell you, that's the problem I got with Fargo a lot of times is those pockets that you get of people. You know, same thing by you. It's not as bad by you because you get all the people from other states coming in. You know what I mean? But yeah. but they're definitely, you know, like Gaines area there. Or Gans, sorry, not Gaines. Uh, Gans's area there, that whole group, they play way above what I think their Fargo is. Some I of the think. guys down by us do, too. The, the funny thing down by us is, is you're either a master or you're a B player. <laughs> it's like yeah. we don't have the in-betweens. We've got a couple double A's that play out of the camera room, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, and they're a half a stroke off of being right there, too. Yeah, you know, got, well, basically, the two on, the, we got three of them. It's, you know, Rudy, Josh Nelson, and Troy Miley. All three of those are solid, solid double A's. Probably could all three be masters. There's a lot of people in this team tournament this year, though. I didn't even recognize some of them. There were a lot of new faces. Hold on one second. Carl looking to put it away. I'm really surprised that ball went, actually. It looked like he missed it when he first hit it. It's Matt Apple of Sin, actually, Matt Apple is Matt Apple of Sin. It's uh, Matt Apple Extreme on YouTube, yep. 
All right, that one's finished off. <clears throat> gonna tie things up at one to one. Carl with a nice run out there. All right, so one to one is the score now. Yeah. And let's see, what do we got going? This is going to be Scott breaking. So we got Scott against your kid there, Blake. Is it going to be Blake? Yep. And then next match coming up there is Chopper and Caden. I think they're. Or are they playing already? Nope. Not quite. I don't know what's going on with the. Uh, Oh, that's because David and Jeff are still playing up there. They're still in their first game. I had a game like that earlier this morning. My second round game, they were almost done with a third round before we were done when they got into a safety game there. Get that sometimes. Is that better? Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, trying to back cut this eight ball into the corner for the win. Dave just shorts it out, and he's going to get a good roll. Uh, or a great roll, really. That's the second good roll he got in this rack. Other than, other than the fact that it's, it's a pretty good, good save. Yeah. This is a pretty no-brainer. Unless, unless he could can have, cut that ball, actually. It looks yeah. like it's off the rail a little bit. You could maybe play just even the double kiss. You know, that way you get to call it and the cue ball that doesn't get yeah. away from you, you know. So it looks like Scott took the solids here. I don't know, maybe he did take stripes. Yeah, he took yeah that's what he did. Double kissed it. It's a great shot. See that? Yes. He actually called safe, though, I believe. Oh, he must have, yeah. Oh, look at oh, that shot. wow. Beautiful. Wow. We'll definitely go back, take a quick look at that one again. Well, looks like Scott's going to come up a little short here on the last strike. All right, we're going to go back to this eight ball shot on That's the left great side. Great shot by David. Hits it perfect, perfect. off that ball. Going to ask for a better shot. Teammates showing their approval with applause and screaming. As it should be. So Scott came up short on that last stripe there, so he had a place safe, and I don't. I think he tried to kick it in. So that's going to bring Blake up to the table with ball in hand. Not really any problems here. We got Chopper Olson breaking on the other table. Hit him pretty good. It looks like you come up dry, though. Oh, it was astonishing that you can hit them that good and nothing yeah. finds a hole. You got right? 11 balls past the side pocket and you don't make one. How many times have you done that? Oh, crazy. <laughs> you look at that break from the overhead and they are so spread out. You know, everything's on the edges. Yeah. It's amazing how something, you get, you're hitting 15 balls flying around a table and you can't make one. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting start. I kind of like it, though. He's going to play the side pocket there. Yeah, there's really nothing wrong with that. Ten didn't get terrific. There's work to do yeah. with that ten ball yet. It's gonna have to get on that right. It probably slides past the nine ball there. I'm probably I would assume. <laughs> Kaden's another player that come up quick too. He plays good. He's he's just very consistent too. A 
Well, I don't know if I just noticed that or if he does that all the time. His index finger was uh, twitching as he was shooting. Yeah, I don't know. I played a uh, team with him a couple of years in a row, and I don't. I guess I didn't see what he does it here too. Yeah, he's popping his ring finger up there. That's something. Yeah. I guess we're gonna see if this ball it's, goes. It must. He extra lined it up. Extra power. He's just feeling <laughs> feeling the consistency of the cloth. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try and follow this in. Well, that didn't work the way he was playing. Yeah. It, it almost looked like he had here. the other half of the pocket. If he hits the other side of the ball, it might go in off the ball, but it must have been pulling there. That's a tricky shot. I think he hit it kind of hard to follow that in, but. Yeah, I feel like they stun like that. I mean, almost has to hit the cue ball again to roll forward yeah. when you hit it like that, you know. Either that or you got to hit it with like a sharp uh, oh. draw stroke kind of. Why didn't anybody tell me I had the division wrong up there? This definitely is not the mixed, mixed master B. This is, how about master division team finals? Huh? Well, Blake hit that ball pretty good. He got dead perfect on the side shot. This is going to be a little roll forward, stop, stop, probably. Let's try that again. Oh, quit bringing me food. What's going on? Mason Cook's popping into the booth here <laughs> and leaving fast. Right, let's try this again. Master Division Team Finals. It looks better up there. He brought you blueberry muffins. Kendall. I know. It's terrible. I'm already going to stop eating. I sit behind this thing and talk about pool and eat. Well, Blake looks like he's going to finish out here. Did you give him all that hair, gray hair? Is that is that from you? He's or? had that. He started going gray, actually, when he was about 17. Yeah. <laughs> he started getting it. There it is. Finishes it off. It's nice run there. We got three to one Flanagan's in. And looks like. Happy Hollow's got a chance over here with Chopper's yeah, bag. Not, not much problems here for Chopper either. Yeah, and even on a miss, that 10 ball's in a little bit of a rough spot, so it could, could be grief, but I think you're going to see Chopper run these out. I don't think you're going to see these guys miss too many racks like these. That's why they're in the finals, and we're sitting in here. Well, I'll tell you, even, even the B semifinal match we had, those guys played some really good pool. Yeah, it's enjoyable to watch. Well, um, B, the B players are a lot different now than what they were 10, 15 years ago. They all run out now. Everybody's so good now because the equipment's so good, the instruction's so good. You yeah. got information everywhere. If you have any desire or want to get good at this game, there's so many opportunities for you to do it now. You just have to spend thousands of dollars gambling against guys to get the information that you get now for free. <laughs> yeah. everywhere you turn you know plus the equipment so consistent and better and available you know when i first started playing i was buying vikings that larry beckus used to buy by the truckload <laughs> you know they're just seconds and stuff like that yeah you know? and that's what we played with is i think i started out with a graphite cue yeah from kmart better than a bar cue right yeah so jay dry broke over here should probably write that one down. That kid's got a monster break. He don't ever dry break. <laughs> but uh, give a quick shout out. I think my aunt and uncle, John and Jan Peters, are watching this match too. Quick shout out to them. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. Who would have thought that? Not Chopper, I don't think. Well, it looks like. Caden will probably have to play to the bottom side of that 10 ball, huh? I think I'd still shoot it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
You know, well, that worked out actually. That's not going to still. He can still see both balls. He can see this ball in the bottom corner too. I think. Yeah. And he is going to shoot this one first though. Yeah, uh, he must. Oh boy, he must have enough of this. I guess if you look at the overhead, he's got a good inch, inch and a half. No problem. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty costly miss there on that eight ball. There, look at the pinky stop moving. Or the ring finger stop well, moving. Kadian left himself a little sleep on this. Still got some work to do here. That was a good shot. Yeah, it's um, Kaden makes that eight ball there. Good shot up by Kaden there. It's going to bring it to the four one. Jeff put himself in a pretty good position to get out here. Yeah, he did. He's got this, I think. Twelve ball come over for the fifteen to the fourteen back to the eight. Pretty good to me. That's uh, that was a huge miss there. I mean, go from a three-two scoreline to a four-one is. It's a race to thirteen. I mean, there's still a lot of time to come back. Just man, you don't want to get down real bad early. Well, especially when you feel like something's coming around a little bit, and then you got that letdown. It's it's tough, you know. That energy is contagious, but. So will this be if uh, Jeff can go ahead and get out here? Yeah, Jeff played this part pretty good. Is going to be able to hold this ball for this eight ball, or is you going to have to run? I think you can hit this slow enough, right? Yeah. Could run into the three and shoot it in the, the other. The tables are pretty, they they just go to see oh, he's... here. I was wondering if he was going to be able to. He came out okay. He's not going to complain about that, I don't think. No, the seven ball is going to stop him from scratching in anywhere, actually. I think he runs into it. Yeah, that's pretty solid seven ball if he makes it if you look at the upper corner there you can see the overhead it's this, got a good line this here will be a key shot for jesse here all right takes it down gets happy hollow to two all look right. out no well, got away with it i don't know what he's got for a shot maybe that seven ball goes down i don't think that seven ball goes down Next Friday, we got a $1,200 match going between Robbie Schmidt and, uh... oh, come on, who's he playing? I got such a horrible memory. I just keep getting older and older, I think. Is he playing somebody from uh, Illinois? Jeez. Would it be Luis Carrion? I don't think so. But no. anyways, $1,200 match on the stream Friday night. So we'll be putting it out there. Make That's sure going to be down it. in your make place. Sure you get it. Yeah, make sure you get it on in the current room. I oh, yeah. You guys bring it up every once in a while there. Uh, but that we, should be uh, a good match. Robbie is fun to watch. We stream uh, pretty much all your, uh, most of your challenge matches that you were doing there with the, was it the King seat or whatever? Yeah. We always had them up. Well, we're going to get something running again. We got a couple of ideas going. One of them is just money matches, you know, trying to get people I think, challenging. I think the kid that, uh king's match that i mean it was a good idea i mean well it lasted three years almost four years i mean that's <laughs> and we ran almost every weekend you know you just run out of people that want to challenge all the time you know yeah it's it's tough too because i mean you're you got players like jeremy feckenhauer and john fields and yep. i mean heck i don't want to play either one of them <laughs> you know but yeah, you still got to have people that are thinking that they can 
Oh yeah. Do it, you know, and that's that's I, what we're looking for. You Ray know. and uh, Ray, the people's champ, he held it for a while. Mason had it for a while. I think Mason's still got the longest streak. Scott, Scott, uh, uh, oh my goodness, Kugel, uh, Scott Kugel, helped me helped me a lot on the bar too. So mentioning him, I might as well mention that also. Um, but uh, Scott was about to beat Mason, and Mason was up to play, so he took him down right before uh, he took out his record. But uh, Scott would be the second longest run, I think, on there. Is that between all the divisions? Uh, no, no. There's some of the lower divisions ran longer. I'm trying to remember who was the longest there. Patrick would. Patrick's our stats guy. He keeps track of all that, along with the lists. Oh. Well, we got a couple of interesting racks here. There's no obvious outs on either one of them, I think. We got Keith Hunkins over on table one, and we got Blake on table two. Keith's going to try and sneak this past the four. There's room. This is completely a speed shot, though. You hit this ball too hard. And you like this no shot, way. though? You don't like shooting the 15? I don't running know if into I like the... it. I oh, God, he hit now. He's gonna, you he might get away with this. Mm -hmm. Almost. I think I almost like taking that 15 ball there and just running into the two ball. Gives you more more room for that nine ball, too. And I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. Some of those are hard to tell uh, unless you're down there on the table. The mayor. Who's the mayor? Oh, no. And we were just talking about that. He doesn't have frosted tips. He's had gray hair since he was 17. I started balding at like 18 or 19, so I guess it's likely somebody would have uh, gray hair. This is Jesse Turner over on table one. A little tricky shot here. Maybe punch over a little bit for that other seven ball on the side, maybe. Or is it? Yeah, I think I, I think you could just stun this a little bit, right? Yeah, it looks like it. I like that anyway. I mean, it's basically you're throwing the two ball in. You're not cutting it very much at all. You're just hitting it inside and throwing it in. I hit That's it why that one's so easy to miss, because you're throwing it so yeah. much. You, it's it easy good. to push it to that side rail. Good angle to come to the end rail and back out. Exactly what he's looking at. That's a big key shot for Blake right here on table two. He's got to try to break out. Is that the eight ball on that stripe? Yeah. Well, he's playing the one in the side, it looks like. Yeah. I wonder Let's, if he's really got to break that out or if he can get on a seven to shoot up in the top left. Second rail there is perfect. He wanted to get right to that side because yeah. now he's got a nice uh, controllable ball. He's got a couple options here now. Might have got a little too far to the rail. Yeah. I mean, he's going to have to – hopefully it goes past a nine ball or – don't go past that nine. He's in trouble from here. I think he's just got to try and draw straight out of this. I, maybe he doesn't have the angle I thought he did. Oh, he did. See? Forced it in there. Great shot. He's well, going to have to make another great shot here. There's a tester for you. A little jacked up over Well, he looks. Oh, oh, boy. That was a little bit unfortunate there on Blake's part. Yeah, he caught that ball just a little thin and... Oh, wow. <laughs> Thought he hit that pretty good, that eight ball. Rattles. I made a six railer like that earlier. Mine fell, though. Well, Keith ain't really got anything easy here. 
He's going to have to play position on a couple balls down here that are on this eight ball. See where he gets from there. Can't really tell. He might not even have an offensive shot. I don't know if he can make that stripe up in the upper left. Has he got enough for that ball to make that, Kendall? Up in the upper left hand corner. What I'm sorry. Uh, table one. Keith Hunkins. I, 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 he, 13 ball? I think he can get that. Jesse missed that eight ball, and I don't know if he, Keith's got an offensive shot at all here. But I think the 13 is tight, but it's there, I think. Carr looking to make two wins out of uh, his two attempts at the table. Off the scratch, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blake had a scratch, had a scratch and Carl got ball in hand. <laughs> That's just because I got pots in the booth with me. Hey. All right, Keith taking a look at this 13 ball, trying to see if he can make it. You know, it's one of those that if you're not sure, it's you're going to sell the farm if you do miss it. I think it's pretty tough not to sell a farm no matter what you do here. There's not, you can't block all the kicking and everything <laughs> on this, but. I wonder if he could, if he can't make that ball, I wonder if he could go off the top of the 15 ball and maybe put the cue ball up by them two balls. You see what I'm saying there? Yeah. Be a little slide down the rail. Oh, he plenty was able of room. That one could have been hit a little harder, but I think knowing Keith, he's probably going to fire at one of these two stripes. Carl looking to finish off the rack over here for Happy Hollow, getting him one closer. I almost like Keith playing safe here, but I doubt he's going to. No, he, he might take it on. He's looking at it. It's a touchy shot no matter what you do here. Got to get this ball to come out perfect. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I'd have trouble not shooting the 12 right here. I like just rolling the 12. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised Keith's not. He likes to fire the balls in. It's not a bad shot if you hit this, though. Perfect. I don't think he's totally convinced he's playing this safe yet. I don't he's think trying he to talk himself into it, but we got I've, you're going to see him shoot at this ball. <laughs> yep, he's going to shoot your shot. I thought he would. Oh, and he drilled wow. it. I mean, drilled How it. How better could you have come out of this? <laughs> got both balls that were in trouble out of there. Well, and I was going to say, you got to be careful not to knock the 14 into the 8, but I don't think he'll hit it that hard because <laughs> I thought he was just going to float it. Yeah. And he just drills it in. Got to love it. That's where pool players are different. I play, I'm playing the safe. See, and I just got done watching that tournament out in uh, Connecticut, the uh, Premier oh, League, yeah, the Premier, Premier League pool. Yeah, I, I yeah. just got done watching those guys play. And honestly, I'm not a fan of that type of nine ball because it's shooting duck, shooting duck every time. You know, they, they don't ever take a chance. And I think we need more more fiery players, you know. I think Matchroom, too, they, they've made that break pretty hard for the most part. Well, that, I'll tell you, that cut break, they, they're making that. 80% of the time, I bet you they make that one ball in the side. Pocket. Yeah, they are. A lot of times. The, oh, the part that's tough is keeping the cue ball at a playable shot for the next shot. I didn't see what happened there, but there must have been a foul because Caden picked up the ball. Keith's just firing this rack in. He's made, made He's this look her. simple. Two to go. We're going to give himself a two-game lead again. 
Puts it down. Oh, that was a nice out there by Keith. Eight ball coming next. Good job. Yes, that was solid. Five games to three. Caden at the table right now. Trying to work out his rack. Yeah, he's got two balls up on the up top there that are tied up. He's got to break out. Do the next shot if he gets what he'd like. If you get too far on that, he looks like he might have rolled a bit far. Yeah. He might be able to force follow that. I don't Looks no like he's on the wrong side of it. Yeah, I think. I think he's coming towards the one. He could always. He could have shot the seven here too and got back on the same. Yeah, path. I agree with that. Uh oh. Yeah, he. I'm sure he didn't want to hit that ball. It's gonna run out of options of getting up there to get those balls here pretty soon, though. This is going to be tough to get a shot after this. Take a second to thank everybody for joining us here. We're at the WSPA 2024 Team Championships here in Rothschild, Wisconsin. I want to thank all the all the hard work that was done by the pool table installers, the whole team of people that it takes to run this tournament. They do a great job every year. And uh, you're watching the Masters Finals right now. I'm in the booth with uh, Jeff Potts from over at the Carom Room. Uh, we were just having a discussion uh, the other day. Uh, what a beautiful room that is, and what a great job Dave's done. You know, with that new addition down there, just uh, definitely the, in in my opinion, the premier pool hall in the state. Yeah. And I think uh, you know he's got the room. He's got everything set up correctly. So Dave, Dave is uh, definitely a pool guy, and he he does a lot of stuff. But you know, back from when we're, hopefully we'll be able to get the spring classics going again now that, you know, back when COVID hit, we stopped doing them there for a while. And yep. those yeah, were always a fun tournament. I don't know if you ever were down there for one of those or not, but. Yeah, they're great. Uh, hopefully he can get that going again. It, it is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to what you said, uh, you know, Dean and Greg Andler, Jeff Martin, I know I'm going to forget a couple names, but they all did a great job running this. They always do. Beth Vosco. Yeah. Even you, you got your, you pull your stream in here. That's not no easy task. Especially this year, I had to do it all myself. I wore everybody out in <laughs> Connecticut, so they were all tired and needed a break. So, yeah, it's uh, everybody puts their little chip in. So, obviously, you're probably not getting rich doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We we actually before the fire down there at the care room, we actually put in a, a big truck from uh, Pool Action TV. Yep. Came up and installed our stream, and we never got to turn it on one time before the fire. Got got put in like two weeks before the fire. Yeah, that's. And now we can't uh, we can't get it back right now because all the little chips that are made in those motherboards and stuff. You guys run a lot of weeklies down there at Mad Apple? Oh, yeah. We we had 47 and 48 for our Sundays. Oh, that's uh, great. I mean, it's, it averages 30, 35, I would say, on yeah, Sundays. And we're, then, we're pulling uh, anywhere from 50 to 64 on Fridays. Yeah. See, our Friday tournament doesn't do much. We thought about not even running it because we don't have enough open pool yeah. for people because we have the restaurant. You know what I mean? Like for us, you know, I'll see, I'll give Dave uh, the pool room classification, but <laughs> we'll, we'll take him on on food. He's got good food, but we focus you, on our you food. You got a, a nice little pool room there, too. Yeah, we, f we focus on, on the You guys food. do all your food homemade, too, and it's from scratch and stuff. Right. It's great. So, so for us to get general population in there playing and stuff it's important too but we got yeah. super strong leagues and tournaments uh every year oh wow. boy just barely missing that break shot the heck of a try i think my favorite place over by you in your place there is those chicken strips oh yeah that's a heck of a big old piece of chicken that you're doing with those yeah you're getting you're getting more into um 
like a little higher end menu than just regular bar food too, because you got you got steaks and everything on your menu. Oh yeah. Now. I don't think you had that a couple of years ago, did you? With Prime rib. We do fish fries on yeah. Friday. I mean, and we hand hand bread, hand batter yeah. everything we do. You know, it's done per order even. So yeah, I mean, it's just that's great if you can do that. It's just two different type of things, you know. So, what do we got going on over there? Was that Jeff that broke the balls for Happy Hollow? I think so. Yeah, it's Jeff and uh, Keith Hunkins. Jeff and Keith, yeah. Yep, Jeff and Keith Hunkins. And, and then Caden's up on the other table. All right, so I didn't see what Caden did there. Looks like he got out. <laughs> yeah, I, w I wonder what he did. You remember he missed a breakout on them two balls. What he, uh, he must have kicked one in or something, huh? Yeah, I must have. I got distracted. My kid yeah, was Yeah, I was going to say Mason popped in, and we kind of both took our eyes off the screen there for a second. All right, so that one's knocked down. Six games to four it's going to be Flanagan's Rackheads. And in case anybody doesn't know, Happy Hollow does have the hot seat, so they do have to be double dipped. Who beat uh, Flanagan's? Uh, Happy Hollow. Beat oh. him for the hot seat last night. Okay. Yeah. Well, so do you think they're getting a little complacent here? I don't know. Normally... Even in my experience, you know, if you win the hot seat, you're usually sitting around for a long time waiting for somebody to come back. I mean, the first set you don't, you know, maybe miss a lot of balls maybe you shouldn't miss. And I don't know. Sometimes it's sometimes it's nice getting that uh, one loss side and keep playing and playing and playing. Justin D. Yeah, uh, born in a zoo, raised in a tavern. That's what he always says. Zoo tavern. Let's go more. Let's go. We're rooting away. Yeah, how many, Roland, how many were at the 10 ball last night? Oh, is that Roland Steer? Yeah. Oh, no, that's Roland Star. Well, it's probably the same guy. You know, you don't have to use your real name on yeah. Facebook, right? I'm pretty sure we're talking about the same guy. Ten ball. I wonder where he's talking about that ten ball at. I think. I wonder if that Justin D. I wonder if that's Justin. Is that Justin Dasser? I wonder. Could be. Thing. Let's go, Turner. He's from up by those guys up there. That would be my guess then. He was a. Uh, he's a pretty good player. I don't know how much he plays anymore, but there's a lot of new. Uh, Chad DeBrucker was down here this year. Uh, Robbie Manson. I don't know if you ever saw Robbie play from Minnesota. Are you kidding that, me? You uh, know how many times I gambled with Robbie? God, that guy's a killer, isn't he? Right, yeah. He was Minnesota State champion multiple times when I played him. We used to play at the state tournaments because they used to play all night. You know, you must be talking 10, 15 years ago. Well, oh, more than that. Oh, yeah. Right. I know I Robbie took uh Played against him. I played against Bobby Law. I played against, uh, who was the other one? It, you Ty know, Wilson and those guys. Titty was the one always back in oh, those guys. Yeah. Uh, Gary Tittle yep. is who I'm talking about. Minnesota's got a real strong but uh, following, you know. I'll never fit forget matching up against Robbie. I mean, we had we'd have eighty guys standing around watching our match at the state state tournament. You know, I mean, him and I would gamble and gamble and gamble. 
he just asked me if I still play. I'm like, not not like that. I don't played a lot more back in younger days. Did you? Oh yeah, I yeah. Gambled a lot. I I was down by Milwaukee. I never really came to Madison. There wasn't. I mean, it was all nine footers in Madison. I didn't play on nine footers. Yeah. I was a bar table player, you know. But I gambled my entire youth Ooh. away. <clears throat> Well, tell you, it's not very. Jesse wasn't very happy with that. Uh, no, it's uh shot. He pulled up on that one. Going to give Blake a good opportunity here to make something happen. He's got a uh, 15 ball. Looks like it's probably his only problem ball. Yeah. Okay. So 17 players last night. So that's our Friday night. It's not a huge tournament usually. You do 10 ball on Fridays then? Yeah. We do uh, eight ball. You got to bank the eight ball, though. Yeah, we don't like ours to last any longer than they have to. We just, it's it's a race to two on both sides, so. We had 21 players for our three-cushion league. Really? It's pretty good. Only one table, so it's spread out over time. You know, you schedule your matches. Do you just you do those on a time limit then, or do you just you yeah, do it's, certain it points? Took like three months or so. Oh, you're talking about the yeah ten. Everybody was beginners, so we played sets to ten. You know, just okay. ten points. You only had about four or five experienced shooters. That know. game is brutal. It's a great game. It it has slowly turned into my favorite thing to do, just because I don't have the time to focus on a pocketed game like this. It's a little less frustrating. We got uh got a few good three cushion players down by us. John Brandon Rebel. Yeah. Rebel. He's he's solid and Jeff Carter plays every day. Yeah. He's still playing, huh? Yeah, he plays three cushion. You don't play much anything. He plays a little one pocket every once in a while, but it's mostly all three cushion. No more nine ball. No. Well I tell you, Keith has got a real good opportunity to take one more game off here. He's been playing good this whole tournament. He's been getting some last couple outs. tournaments I've seen him play, and I I think his consistency has went way up. You know. Oh, is he gonna get a shot? He's gonna have a hard time getting out of this. He's gonna probably have to stop that ball right there on that ten ball. Though. Where are you? Table two, you must be. Yeah. Blake broke that ball out and rolled up like that there. That's. Both of those balls are froze on a rail, too. That's a tough shot. Keith looking like he's going to take another one down, getting him to seven. So, yeah, that'll go seven four to uh, Rackheads. Might have a lot of pool left to watch here, guys. Yeah. Get a little double dip going. You almost got to just stop this ball, huh? Yeah, I think so. Just maybe draw it back it a couple inches. Oh, he's gambling. Uh, rolling the table next to the three cushion table is a nine foot diamond, and that's Mason's practice table. And those pockets are set to three and three quarter of an inch. They're ridiculous, <laughs> and he still runs racks on the thing. I mean, when he first started, wow. it was near, near impossible, you know what I mean? Is that set up to the matchroom specs? Below him. I mean, it's matchroom is four inch. Four, yeah. And his are right between three and five eighths and three and three quarter. Um, Interesting. Yeah, you get yourself tuned into that, and then you feel like you got some slop in the four inch pocket, you know what I mean? I feel like I would uh, quit practicing. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I hear you. I you know, sit there for four hours missing balls. <laughs> yeah. It's just a different game. I mean, like I was kind of mentioning before, it's 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 different the way they play it now. With those tight pockets, you're not talking run out pool anymore. You're talking safe and it's interesting. I mean it is definitely a different kind of game though. You wanna talk about a break. My god, he smashed that set. All these young kids break good, Kendall. Yeah. Could you imagine if you had their break when you were younger? Yeah, I was known to break hard, but oh. not not like these guys. 
I'm sitting there watching, like, Jay last night, they were playing a gambling match upstairs, and he was making four balls almost every break. I'm like, man, if I had your break, I'd have won eight more state championships. Yeah. <laughs> So is he going to cut this ball? Oh, he's nope. banking it. Oh, he might get away with one here. God, that's brutal. He got a he got a pretty good roll here. He might be able to cut this four ball in and break this eight ball out right away. I don't know. I don't know how steep it is. Yeah, I don't know if he can do that or not. Good bank to one. Bank to one ball back. You talk on the side. Come around a couple rails to break that eight. Yeah, maybe. It's a tough shot. If though. everybody banked as good as you, maybe. Well, I don't know. If you're going to be a complete offensive on this shot, I think you're you're right. That's a, that's a shot. That's where my brain comes from. It's not I was right. <laughs> I'll never argue that it's the right shot and necessarily. I think he, but... He's either playing safe or he is shooting your shot. Safe, I think. Yeah. Well. That's pretty good. It got it up there. It gives him back the advantage a little bit now. Well, they're both still in bad shape, but little rolls like that, they'll get you. It can keep flipping back and forth. I mean, I honestly think Blake's got a good opportunity to save him back here if he shoots with 15 first. Yeah, get as straight as he can. And then you can just stop it right, right, in right there. there. Yeah. Got to be careful with that, too, because if he uh, rolls forward just even a quarter inch, he'd be able to shoot that one ball in the opposite corner. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to get pretty straight on this shot to be able to successfully do what he wants. You really just want to dead stop that cue ball perfect without bumping anything. Or I actually think he should shoot it right now. I yeah. think he's going to. Yeah. But I think this is dangerous. See what I was talking about? Yeah. He's going to be able to jack up and make this one ball now. That's why I wanted to be able to. But, yeah. That's why I thought maybe that 15 first, just to get a little bit straighter so that you didn't have to come yeah, I, out I, off the rail, you know. I understand the theory on that, but it, it's like you don't want to get in a, a safety game with very few shoulders either. So, yeah, he uh, he didn't get a hit there. I was actually surprised Jesse didn't shoot that one ball. Yeah. I think he could have pinched it out, you know, just a couple inches and shot that four ball up in the corner. Yeah, it's weird what just <laughs> happened right there. I saw Blake wave his hand. Was he playing is he playing safe? Well, I would hope not, huh? <laughs> he kinda waved his hand at Jesse. I didn't I didn't know if he was calling safe or no, he's not playing safe. I think you just come to the rail here, right? I mean, try and get to the rail before I, the one. You, you want to hit the one here, or do you like hitting the eight? I like, I see, I would like hitting the eight, one. I don't think you can not, I don't think you can get hooked by hitting the side of the one. Yeah, rail. See, just like yeah. you just said there, you got to get to that. Side rail one ball and it should yeah. pop you right up for you to the side 15. shot of the fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So just a little bit of right, maybe a little low. Spin up and try and kind of run down. Yeah, just perfect. Couldn't have hit it any better. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll have the ten on the side and he'll have to run down the upside on the table for the fifteen. Where's he shooting? At? Yeah, it's a good angle for that though. I mean, that's just basically. Doesn't have to get to the bottom side of the ball. Just a little bit of uh, left on this thing. Roll it in. It should come out nice on the 15. So Caden hooked himself over there and kicked and got a hit. Carl's coming up with a pretty wide open table. No problems over there. 
seven four Flanagan's right now. That's a good shot. Yeah. Blake hit that perfect. So is this the last uh, matches of the tournament? Is the this is it? This yeah. is it, huh? You bet. You got a nice little crowd standing, sitting around watching the match. You get to pack up and go home for a couple of days then, or uh, three, <laughs> three days I get to be home, and then I get to go do Indiana State Pool. Oh wow! Oh, hang on, you get too far out of line there, Blake. Yeah, Aiden. Titty does sure like to hear himself talk. Who does? Titty. Aiden said Titty, Titty oh. sure is a talker. <laughs> Titty likes to hear his own voice. He was great, man, for getting the games going, though. Have you ever saw him do a Calcutta? No, I can imagine it's probably hilarious. Oh, God. I think when he's done, he needs, like, a towel to wipe all the sweat off of him because <laughs> he's just running around. Yeah. All right, Carl looking to finish this out. Four shots. So we got Scott racking for Happy Hollow. He's going to be playing David Vargas. Okay, let's break. I got a little congestion on the left side of the table there, but I guess it would be Scott's right side. Wasting no time. We're going to get down yeah. to 12 and break the 11. So Carl gets out there. Could bring the score line I'm up. Pretty to... sure everybody heard that Carl got out there. Yeah, big old score. Bring score line to eight five for uh, Flanagan's. A tough shot, but if he makes it, he's going to be sitting pretty good. Oh, you know? silver thought it just a little bit. All right, Dave Vargas at the table. Looks like Jay Peters is going to be breaking on table one. Watch this break over on table one. This kid hits these balls hard. Lost the cue ball a little bit on that one. Yeah. Gonna get the 12. He's gonna get four. Last ball rolling. <laughs> We got uh, David up there. He's shooting solids. Man, that's looking good now, isn't it? Yeah, that uh, one shot later and it opened right up. That was uh, he, he wasn't looking very good, and then all of a sudden, bam! They're all in the open now. Just got to jack up and just pull this over. I think. I don't really like going forward on this ball. No, I yeah, I think because you almost got to get straight on that ball, right? I mean, you can have some well, angle, but yeah, about where the eight is, right? And yeah, if you slid over to the edge, see, he's got to jack up. I don't, I don't like going forward here. 
Is he get maybe he's gonna come over and shoot the four ball? Uh, I'm telling you, he's gonna jack up just a touch. Maybe he can roll it. I can't quite tell the angle. But that's probably the the way he was stroking it. I thought maybe he'd just come over one rail and he was going over to shoot the four ball up in the corner, but. Unless he thinks he can slow roll this and keep the ang same angle you're talking about. Tell you better stay looking at the object ball here because this one's <laughs> easy to. Hey, I got my leave. Yeah, he's thinking about it now too. Well, because I think you don't. I mean, you really do need to get about to where the eight is. I think you just got to jack up and pull it down table a little bit. So I think from there, it's a tough shot. Now you're running into the stripe up in the middle there. This rack could change right, real fast right here if he gets even hooked on that eight ball just a little bit the way he's going to shoot this. All right, he's going to just go with the roll forward, which I think is going to leave him tough to get on the four. Yeah. yeah that's even, yeah. It's no good. So I suppose now he could probably spin this in with right-hand English, and he might run into that, is that the 13 right above there? If you catch the yeah, ball thick yeah, and I kind of throw it, you might be able to hit that 13. Just not very hard. You want to hit this with just pocket speed. The way he's playing this, it looks like he's going to hit the side of the 13. There might be a scratch here. Yeah. Yeah, he got it's it good. perfect, yeah. Now you got to finish. A little curl-out draw here. Put the eight in the opposite bottom right corner. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. A little work left here now. I don't see it being much of a problem with him. but it He is had miserable. a shot similar to this uh, earlier that he just undercut a little bit. So let's see if he makes the adjustment here. Oh, Shot yeah, he made the adjustment a little too much. He overcut that one. That's tough, tough miss there. Well, it shouldn't be too bad. Just one rail out. Side pocket for the 11. Just don't get carried away here. Just tap this ball in, I think. And he's stroking like he's going forward. <laughs> it sure is. Oh, oh he, he went to the corner. To, yeah. Well, I guess. Ain't nothing wrong with it if you nail it like that. That's right. That one hung in the hole longer than I thought it was going to. He's going to put a little stroke on this yet, too. Get back out in the center's table. Nothing to it. Yeah. Stroked it like a champion. I'll bring him back to within two. Yeah, happy hollow to six. So eight six in favor of Flanagan's. It's tightening up a little bit. You get close down to the end of this race and then a race to 13, it's like one little mistake or one little game cost you two games and now you're trying to fight back to win three or four. Yeah, that's fine with me. You know what's happening right now for me is the uh, entire room, uh, my screen shop is getting packed into my trailer, and I won't have to worry about doing any of it. There you go. <laughs> the longer this lasts, the less physical labor I have to do. So you're saying if Mason would have been smart, he would have stayed here and sent you out there? <laughs> he's He's nice to his old man, though. He sees I'm getting old. Whenever he's around me, here's my bones a creak. So. <laughs> All right, Blake, the break on table two. EJ played a safe over there. I think Ch uh, Chopper is shooting against Jay, and he's got solids, I do believe.
Hey, we got Scott Doolian in the chat. What's up, How's, Scott? How you doing there, buddy? Why wasn't he here? I don't know. He normally plays with uh, these guys. I think he was on their, he's on their roster. They kick you off the team? You weren't good enough or what, Scott? Yeah, I noticed he he was on the their original roster, but like I said, he wasn't uh, he wasn't here. He probably doesn't want to tell us the real reason, huh? Oh, well, Blake makes his combo here, and there's. Should be laid up. Oh, actually, I think I heard that. That's right. Well, I hope you're feeling better. I'll get, get, get well soon, Scott. We'll see you again in decent. Yeah. So, you know how they got the rack, rack heads? Yeah. Just always when I see stuff like that, it reminds me when email first came out. I mean, you remember that, right? Yeah. You get the little disc in the mail and all that on American Online. And so I was coming up with my first email address, and it was Rack Runner. Yeah. Whatever, you know. And uh, they told me it was taken. I'm like, well, okay, my first name is Kendall, so K, K Rack Runner. And then after a little while, somebody pointed out that it was Crack Runner. <laughs> so I didn't keep that name for very long. No. Blake made that combo there that kind of opened up this rack for him here. Yeah, he's uh he's sitting pretty good now. No problem, Scott. Glad you get to watch your team. They made it. With style, they got a little bit to spare even. Some what? ERO's pool tank. Pool tank clan, I love that. It's funny. Holy crap, that was a good shot there by Chopper. Did you play that? No. Yeah. They're having a they're yeah. having a discussion of whether or not that was called. Well, at least they're all laughing about it. Gonna have to come on another one here. It looks like he's gonna have to bank this ball. Blake's looking like he's got this rack worked out. If he can just keep the cue ball under control between those couple of clusters there. Uh oh. Oh yeah. That solid block this stripe up there? I think it might have. So he might have come out of it pretty not too bad. Table one. One more good positional shot here by Blake, and looks like it might be 9 6. Yeah, he got pretty good on it. I don't know, it kind of looks like it is blocked. 
can't quite tell if that goes by there or not. I don't know if that helps. Well, that doesn't help when he's standing in front of it, but. Blake looking good here for this eight ball. Puts it down. It's going to get him to nine. There it is. Brings his team to nine, up by three. Carl and David playing here going to be next. Actually, I think it's going to be Jesse and Caden. Oh, yeah, you're right. Jesse, Caden. My bad. I was wondering why Carl wasn't moving. Oh, yeah, Tarek Hamden. Robbie Schmidt, Tarek Hamden, 1,200 in the middle. Oh, they're going to play. Friday night stream. Oh, wow. Max action match. So they're about 600 piece then, huh? I think it's, well, maybe. I'll, I'll uh, yeah, 600 piece, 1,200 in the middle. So race to 30, nine ball, winter break. 1,200 in the middle, no nine ball breaks. Just to show you how strong Tarek has been playing, I, I know Robbie plays great. They were, we were sitting over there doing uh, performances on Fargo rates. Jeff Martin yeah. was showing me a little bit. Tarek Hannum's Fargo rate has went up 46 points since September, and he has almost 5,000 games in the system. Yeah, that he is just strong. plays and plays and plays. Yeah. And he's doing good. I mean, he's that should be a pretty good match. Yeah, it will be. I agree. If Robbie, I They're mean, playing nine ball. Yeah, Robbie crushes the break. Yeah. So he either runs out, runs out, runs out, or yeah, Robbie, so Robbie's it. favorite game is definitely a nine ball. <clears throat> I agree. Take a second. To thank everybody again. This is the WSPA. Wisconsin Team Championship. This is the Masters Division Final. Uh, Flanagan's Rackheads has to uh, take down Happy Hollow twice here if they were to win this. So even if they make it to 13 in this first set, they'll be playing another set to 13 after this because we are playing a true double elimination style tournament. Joined in the booth by Whoa. Jeff Potts. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kendall. Uh, and then I guess if you would uh, get on Facebook, I'm sure you would get people to take you up on that. I'm sure there's a lot of people that went oh, yeah. my betting on Robbie in that match. <laughs> they're uh, they're probably within two, three points of Fargo. So I mean, it is a no. It's a good match, and I mean, I think Robbie's got to be at. 624 25 just like that right he's a 625 i think that's and right i think Tarek, when we looked him up today was a 6 uh 27 or 28. Yep. i like both their games honestly yeah i think uh that will be a fun match to watch yeah i'll be in uh indiana for their state pool tournament but we'll get that thing rolling we'll have some be a good match. Doing this for, just the streaming, you, you probably, I probably can't play that tournament, can you? No. Uh, we're not doing the stream. We're actually oh. just screen printing. Oh, really? Yeah. I screen print them and then Indiana State. Also. Okay. You used to do a lot of that back when you owned the Magnet, didn't you? Yeah. Jesse looking to finish that rack off.
check the score. I know the Minnesota ladies are playing uh, Kelly O'Hearn's team in the women's finals. It's like Jesse got out over there. I think he was repaying the the celebration favor that they've been hearing every time the other team's winning. <laughs> yeah, they're over there laughing about it. Yeah. Jesse's looking over there. Jesse is a character. I like this choice here. I think leaving for that 13 bank, I think it's smart instead of trying to break the thing out. Yeah. Really, in a I good... initially thought it went past that eight ball, but good position to make this ball. He looks like without he did, a ton of effort. Like, did he call a bank? He did. Oh boy! Wow. He hit that about three times as hard as I would have expected. I yeah, expected that gonna, to be a floater. You're not going to get that to come back like that. I think right. You got to float it through it. Yeah. yeah. Right. I like I like to spin those even with a little bit of left. Yeah. Good pop, but nothing went on that break. He had straight at it. Cue ball left the table for about a split second. <clears throat> Looks like the pitcher pub ladies put the dip on. Now they got a double dip against the Minnesota women. The border patrol. Yeah. You remember Jolene back when uh, they were all running around as the Midwest Masters? So Jolene and Harum used to play with those Midwest guys. I can't remember who the other ladies were, but man, they, they went around just winning everything for a long time. Well, it looks like Jay's gonna pull back. The, I wonder if the Blake's team will start screaming like Jesse's did. <laughs> nope, not nope. this time. I'll bring the score line up to 10-7. 10-7. I'm assuming both these teams will probably, I don't know if they'll flip the coin right away. They might want to take a little break. Not sure. I know if, if I'm happy hollow, I want to walk out of the room for a little bit. Maybe ice these guys down a little bit. <laughs> it's amazing, though, a couple games. It's amazing how fast it can flip. Yeah, it's like... You can go from being up one and then get your break round to come up, and now you're down three. Uh, Flanagan's Rackheads, when they uh, were playing against um, Bob Baylor's team, they actually started out with four breaking runs. In the wow. first round, and then Blake actually had a break run too, and he uh, missed the eight ball. They were they would have broke all five of their breaks in the first round. That's why you got to start though, right? A lot yeah. of people get down when you get down like four to one or something, but all you're doing, all they're doing is holding serve. I mean, you got your break right. round coming up next, and you just got to do the same thing. That's right. Yeah, and you hope to steal a couple. Yeah, you know. When I play these team tournaments like this, if I mean. If they got the break, first five games and the break of the first round, if I, if I can come out of that three to two, I'm happy. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So we got Carl up on table two, Jay over on table one. He was taking a look at that 10 ball. So he's going to just kind of stop the ball here as much as he can. It's obviously going to move over a bit. I think it probably cuts off the rail. And... Oh. oh, it's coming down for these first. I guess so, yeah. He was looking off the rail off the three, but maybe future he wanted that. Oh. Should be good, yeah. 
Well, he's going to have to come with a shot off this seven ball to get back here on this two six. Kind of push the two six over so it only goes into, well, it goes into the upper right and then the bottom left. But two ball goes past the ten, right? I yeah, I would so think so. So if he could come around. Problem is you're running awful tight to the two ball if you come around the two rails and try and get shape. Past the ten. I think this goes in pretty deep to the pocket, though. I mean, can you hold that? I think so. Look at that. That is pretty gosh darn good right there. I mean, he, he ended up a little further. Yeah. Uh, but that was the line. It was tough to hold it down the table far enough. You think he's going to have to draw up into that 15 here? Or I, is it steep like that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, if you stuck it right between the 15 and the rail, kind of kick and stick. Yeah, I would give you the shot on that. I don't like shooting this shot with inside. I know you can probably shoot it with inside and come back on top of that nine ball and come back over. Yeah. I don't know. Them shots there, I just... That's tough to I'm tell from here, too, them. you know. If you look at the overhead, I think you got to run into the 15 in one form or another, right? Ideally, off the rail first and then come off the rail and kick into the 15. Anything else has a good chance of sliding out of there. <clears throat> the bright side, your eight ball's pretty open for that bottom corner. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's not. He decided to go straight at it. He's got to look at it at least. Well, and here, I mean, just rolling it, I think you're going to end up okay on the eight if you just play center ball, roll it into the pocket. Got a little above the six, more above the six ball than I like. He might run into the the side of the ten ball there and, I, you know, push, push him over off, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So maybe a little bit of inside and low. Should hold you there a little bit better anyways. Yeah. Uh-oh. Happy Hollow missing over on table number one. Well, here's the shot you were talking about with Jay. Is he going to shoot it now? Off the rail, off the three there. Well, he's not blocking anything, so it doesn't hurt him to try it here. Nice shot. Oh, no. Now he got it. Yeah. Well, you just got to stay down and trust your stroke with this. Yeah. Don't try to do too much. Or... I put just a little bit of left, but still roll it. What? Hit it good. Yeah, real nice. Yeah, you hit it good. That that left pushes it, pushes it over that little bit. I think Happy Hollow is trying to pump themselves up to get ready to make a <laughs> comeback or get ready for the next set or something. They're cheering pretty hard for each win. They're fighting. They're not giving up, though. So we're going to be at 10 to 8. So Jay must not have liked that shot because he tried to break that out. Spun that cue ball around three rails and... Can't tell if that ball goes though. That ten ball sneaks by maybe. He shot a shot when we thought he was gonna shoot a rail three, he shot a shot and come around two rails to break it out, and that's where he ended up there. Yeah, Justin, uh, like I said a little earlier, Carl, Carl's been playing good for a couple of years now. He's come uh, 
come out the long ways. So Jay misses that and uh, might bring Happy Hollow within uh, one game. Scott's got a good chance of getting out here. He played safe. That ball must not have went. I think Jay's going to probably try to stab this in with a jump cue. Might as well try it, huh? Yeah, I mean, what do you got to lose? There's no safe to play. This here's if you feel good kicking, kick. If you like to jump, jump. Leave it, leave it to Chopper Olsen to flip coins for money during the middle of a match. <laughs> hundreds? I don't know what they're doing. I'm assuming not hundreds with Doug. Chopper lost. That much I yeah. did see. Yeah, at least they're staying loose, right? That's so what you got to do. Jay's going to try to jump this in the corner. Dribbles across the floor. What's got like a couple second delay? Is that what it is for YouTube or something? Uh, it's got a couple seconds in general, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say I heard the cue ball hit the floor before I saw it shoot. <laughs> yeah, it's not much, but there's definitely a second or so. Well, most of your like, even like your TV stuff, it's got a, your live stuff's got a delay anyway in case something dumb happens, so you can stop it. And nobody else can see it. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have that for our live broadcast. Uh oh, uh -oh. oh, he's got amped that. He's uh, he perfect. Got, he got fortunate to get a shot here. <laughs> Jesse Turner wants everybody to know that he's doing a shot. <laughs> I'm assuming tequila because he's got a lime. Looks like tequila. <laughs> Well, there you have it. It's going to be 10-9. Anybody's game from here. Well, and they're shooting over on. Chopper's got a pretty open table over there to go. Man, this could be 10 race to three for the cash. Chopper looks like he's going to run that out. This guy here brought a whole paper plate full of shots over uh -oh. for the team. Chopper just chopped it. <laughs> Keith looks excited to get back to the table. He's not going to waste it's much time after he figures out what he's going to do. I'd start with that 10 ball. I'd leave those two down there just the way they are. 10 to the 11 to 13, 12, and then come back for the yeah, 14. Yeah, I like that. He's definitely got it. Unless that combo goes, he's got to address these two balls right away. He looked at the combo when he first went onto the table. I'm sure that goes too, but I think with the 10 there, I think you're best off just going 10 to the 11. We got Jeff breaking over on the other table. That 13 almost actually goes by there, too. 
if you really wanted it to. Not sure why Keith drew that back. You can see that 13 kind of goes by there also. Yeah. I think he's got the combo set in his head all the way because he drew the ball back. Well, if he didn't, he does now. Yeah, he's got no choice now. Well, makes it a lot easier from there. Yeah, it's a good angle for it. Everything kind of naturally will go Towards the pocket, cute. Just hold it a little bit, and he'll have a nice shot on the thirteen. Hit it good. Whoa! Uh oh. It's gonna have to do a little bit here. I think I'd almost be tempted to try and miss the one with a little bit of right and come off the rail and come down into the upper right corner. You're going there. forward then, or are you drawing that? Forward, yeah. I think as long as you can miss the one, I think forward's the smart shot. Coming okay. just where he just looked. He kind of. I think if he's got to hit the one ball, I think you do draw it off the, the one side maybe. Yeah. But, if, yeah, like you said, if he, if he can get around it. Yeah, because then you got the 14 or the 12 if you can get anywhere up in that upper corner there. Well, this isn't horrible either. He might shoot that 12 ball yeah. and come back for that 13 ball. Looks like it could be an option. Nope, he is going to shoot the 13 first. Nope, <laughs> nope 12, nope, 13. He's going to shoot one of them eventually. It must have a bead on that 6-4. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ginned it. Well, this could be 11 and 12. Father, son, knocking down two games. If they can complete these runs. Yeah. Probably just hit this with just a little bit uh, outside right. Spin back down here towards this five. I don't know if he can go inside and miss that six and get a decent shot. Maybe. Look at that. Well, I guess that's how you play that one. Came out as good as it possibly could have. All right, Keith should get to 11 if he can pocket the eight. Looks good. That's going to put uh, Flanagan's up by two again. Caden's got a shot over here to put him on the hill. Just got to stay down on this one and just make sure you trust your stroke off the rail. All the way up in the corner, I'm assuming. One more game and we got a fresh set to 13 if uh, Caden puts this down. What, Vargas doesn't get his name on his shirt, or what? Did you see the back of Keith's? Yeah. Oh, Caden hit it good. Well, that's going to put uh, Flanagan's on the hill. Happy Hollow is going to have to win the next four if they want to avoid going to another set. I want to thank everybody for joining us for the final Masters Division uh, WSPA teams, 19, or 19, 2024. I had a flashback there, there for, you go. for a minute. Got Sean Hanna in the chat now, too. What's up, Sean? Justin D. Come on, Chopper. <laughs> yeah, that's not normally one you'll see him not get out of. Yeah. I actually counted <laughs> that one out already. Yeah, we were putting it on the scoreboard. Oh, look at that cue ball work its way right into the hole. That's kind of breaks that the Happy Hollow is going to need right here, though. They got to get a couple breaks. Who do they got coming up? Who are they for? I I got the ladies match on. Oh, here I'll find it. Let's 
score sheet. So final four. Jesse, Carl, Scott, and Chopper in that order. Yeah, I'm trying to follow the women's masters too on here. Donya Bundy down there. She shoots on my league team down at the Karam Room and yeah. in the finals. How far of a drive are you from here? About an hour. About an hour and 40 minutes. A lot of people think that this streaming is easy, but I'll tell you what, Kendall's uh, got a lot going on here. Back to Facebook, the text messages, Sometimes. back to computers. Well, I'm just trying to keep track of all of it. Well, I don't think Jay's going to be happy with that shot. David's got ball in hand over on table two here, and it's not looking like much trouble. On board. I don't know how many he ordered, but boy, he had quite a few of the WSPAs left. For shirts? Yeah. It's the nice thing about printing on site. I don't have to worry about any of that. I got yeah. one or two left over. That's maybe it. Otherwise, you can just pack up the blanks and use them again on the next tournament, right? Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> Still quite a bit of pool to be played. I've the men's A and stuff. I don't even think they're down to the finals yet, are they? Maybe. It's hard to file all the brackets. I'm pretty sure with this one, more than likely going to go into a second set. This will be the last hurrah here. Oh, I know the A's that are out in front of us right now playing their finals. Okay. Because stickball hole, that team uh, just beat out uh, on the hill. Okay. And they were playing to get back to the finals. Have you been to that on the hill? I haven't. I need to get over there. I heard it's a nice place and they got good food, too. It is, yep. And that's uh, Todd Holzer. And he um, he was in the booth a little bit talking to me, but he he bought his tables from me. Oh, okay. Those were my old tables. Sure. I was excited to do. He's got that. eight it's... diamonds in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're the diamond wood diamonds. So nice tables. So not all your uh, diamond bar boxes have the smaller pockets in too, or just your stream table? They're all four and a quarter. All of, all of them are okay. I know somebody was saying that your uh, your stream table is pretty tight. Yeah, that's just because they probably played on it and didn't play so well. <laughs> well, it's really tight. <laughs> I I like the small pockets, so I mean, I don't I don't feel you should be able to hit a ball, a diamond up and have it go in. Yeah, I agree. Well, one more good shot by David. He's probably come across the table here, and it looks like uh, they'll be going to a second set. Buckle up, folks. It's about to get exciting.
Is he going to go straight across or is he going down for the side? Yeah, he spun down for the side. Oh, well, yeah. Got good on it. Got perfect. Looks perfect. That's going to. David knocks this eight ball down. I'm sure the players will probably take a couple minutes break and then uh, I hope so. get going on the second one. All right, well, there you there have it. Go. All right, to well, the Well, guys, stop. I'm going to jump out of here, and uh, we'll be back in uh, whenever they start up. A couple seconds. See you in a bit.
All right, back to the action here. We're in the second set. This is the Masters final here at the WSPA State Championships, uh, Team State Championships here in beautiful, wonderful Rothschild, Wisconsin. It's still winter up here, if people don't know, if you're any further south. Believe it or not, winter still exists, and it's right here. It's a good battle that first match. David with a nice shot there. Here comes my co-partner in crime here. What's going on, Jeff? Did you enjoy your little break? Yeah, I had to go over and see how the ladies were doing. Checking on the ladies. Looks like it's getting uh, pretty close over there. I think it's four to four. So I'm assuming these are the first two games. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can tell the room's starting to clear out a little bit. It's getting chilly in here. Well, that and everybody's opening up the doors, getting their stuff out. You know. Yeah. They had all the doors down by Nate's booth and Jacoby booth open. Now we're opening up the front door, taking all our stuff out from the screen shop. So. You got good on that one ball. Hit it good. Beautiful. It's been a good out so far. He's hit everything pretty accurate. It's kind of maybe a little bit straight, but nothing he shouldn't be able to get away the with. The good thing about it is he can just stop this ball, make that ball, the three ball. Yeah. I don't mind those long cuts, but he'll catch up to you. Oh, I guess he had a little more angle than we thought. Perfect. I almost like taking the two right yeah, now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't know. I like drawing up by the side pocket and just coming back right back where he is. Almost, uh, you know, off the three. But it's probably just going to float it in there and shoot it in the side. No, we're not, uh, they're not going to be playing on three tables, Justin. Well, what's Jay going to do here? I wonder if he can cut that ball or has he got to bank it? So David did get out on table one, so that'll put uh, Flanagan's up one nothing. Jay's got a little tricky shot here on the eight ball. I can't tell if he's going to bank it or if he can cut it. He calls the bank. Jay hits it. Puts Flanagan's up 2 nothing. So it looks like it's going to be Carl break in on table one for Happy Hollow. And 
It looks like Scott's going to be breaking on table two. All right, you got the schedule up? No, no I got the ladies' match. Here, I'll on. pull it up. Yeah. Sorry, I'm dealing with some stuff with my restaurant. I was. So. All right, let's see. So, copy a sport. So, Carl came up dry over there. It's going to give a. Uh, is that Keith or is it that? Keith, it yeah, looked like, yeah. Keith. The work boots. It's a dead giveaway. He's going to shoot here. They're probably going to have to shoot solids. It don't look like he's got a shot at stripes. And those stripes are probably the better balls. Scott made the ball on a break. It's not a bad out. I mean, solids look good. It's got a good chance here. Get Happy Hollow on the board. I don't know what Jesse's trying to do out here, but he's just cracking up. Scott's got a little tricky positional shot here. Not too bad, but could easily get in trouble here if he doesn't stroke this good. Yeah, see what I mean there? Tied the five ball up at the 12. Yeah, definitely. Um, He's going to have to break it, too, because there ain't even nowhere to bank it. He's going to have to figure out how to, I don't know, maybe a stop shot on this two ball and cut the one ball on the side and come down into it. I it might bank past that 12 up in the corner once the one and two are gone. So? It, yeah, it's it close. Not. I mean, it can't, I can't say yes or no. I think I'm shooting to draw this ball into the, is that the 10 ball there? And maybe shoot that one ball on the side and try to go into it. But he's going to shoot the one ball first. I don't know. Is he going into it now? Yeah, he definitely tried to. Problem with that shot there is now you have no shot unless that ball goes past this stripe, and then maybe it does. What was that? What's that? I just saw the 10 move. I don't know what that was about. I don't know if he bumped it with his cue yeah, or what see. happened. That was the problem with that shot. Now you open the, Sorry about that. the rack up a little bit. He's still got a little bit of work over there with the 9 and the 10, but. Well, Keith just got out on table one. Like he was in a sprint. Go three to zero. It's going to be three, three nothing Flanagan's. Yeah, I think you're right uh, about uh, Flanagan's is looking bad. They're, they're shooting with a lot of confidence right now. And they got a lot of momentum with, in their favor right now. This could all change real fast, though. Yeah, they just need to uh, race the 13 is a long race. It's only 3 nothing. <clears throat> Happy Hollow just needs some uh, something to happen in their favor. It's amazing how that can spark something.
The only bad part about what's going on now is this is all happening on Happy Hollow's break round. Right. Well, it's going to get a little funny here. I think he did get real funny. <laughs> Not just a little funny. He's got a uh, safe option off the top of the 13 ball or 11 ball up there. He's looking like he's going to cut this ball on the side, but I don't think there's any way possible he's doing that. He is going to play it safe. He's going to just put him down by the first diamond in the end rail. Yeah, so uh, Blake hit that safe pretty good. Uh, Scott's going to have to come with something here. He's got to make sure he gets a hit. He can get a hit. He's still not in bad shape because there's still these two balls tied up on the side of the table. Hit it good. Hit it real good. Yeah, Michael, this is the Masters Finals. Uh, Happy Hollow did win the hot seat, and uh, Flanagan's uh, Rackheads beat them the first set, and they're up 3 nothing in the second set. Chopper's going to see if he can change some of that. Scott just made a real nice hit over here on table two. two to... But the only thing you don't want to do right now is give him ball in hand. Blake's still got two balls tied up on the left side of the table. Well, that was a pretty good shot right there. He's Now he's over there on where he can cut this ball in the side pocket and try to go into these two balls now with a natural shot. Don't even got to really do much with the cue ball. Pretty much a center ball shot. Well, is he playing safe? No. He's just looking where he wants to try to hit these balls. This doesn't have to work out at all. No, this could open right up. He is going to play safe. It's just going to roll the 10 out. It, his goal is to not... Do you like this safe, or do you like shooting this ball on the side and going into these? Well, I'm kind it, of a cowboy. What I don't, what I don't like right about thing. the safe is I don't think the 2 and the 5 is that, are that hard of kicks if he doesn't block it, the kick. Right. Because if I'm shooting this shot, he's probably like a 40, 60 to make it, but he'll make it because of my 40. That's my luck. But I guess Blake's changing his mind. He is going to go into these balls now. Well. That ball goes, if that 13 ball goes past the two, he hit that pretty good. I think if it doesn't go past the two, he's got to bank it right now. Unless you like, I don't know, going side to side and try to sneak in there. Chopper might have got a little out of line here, but possibly play 
off the 11 in the corner, off the 11 in the side, maybe. He's calling in the corner, so he must be playing it off the 11 ball in the corner. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, I'm i not good at judging these shots. I'm always I don't, we'll utterly I, impressed by guys that run these pretty yeah, consistent. You know. I, I'm playing safe off the bottom of this five. Freeze them right on that eight ball. Yeah, they're, I don't know, that just. There's a lot. Boy, that would be the only other thing that could have went wrong on that yeah. shot, I think, is if that would have knocked that eight in. I think, Cho I think Chopper has to play safe off that five and put him on the bottom of the eight ball, live to fight another day. Can't give Caden ball in hand on a table like this. Well, we're going to find out if this ball goes past here clean or not. We might have to play this rail too. Wow, look at that shot. That yeah. was a really nice shot by Blake. Yeah, I, I thought maybe he might have to go rail off the two ball the way it was looking. Well, that is just such a hard shot to judge, and he hit it perfect. I have the speed right, the spin right, and the angle right. You ever notice, Blake, he lines up all the chalks that aren't his chalk out on the corner pockets? Does he? Yeah, he does it all the time. Well, this eight ball from Blake here, marking that he makes it, uh, going to jump him out to a 4 nothing lead. Well, and I think Caden's working on five. Yeah. It's an interesting choice to me. He's gonna shoot this up in the corner. He's yeah. going to come out. Oh, oh, that's tough. He's going to get fun. He's going to have to bank this ball, maybe. He didn't under hit it that much, I will say. Well, this is tough because you have to overcut this ball. If he's cutting it, he's banking it. I think he's going to bank it and run into the five. I mean, he hit it good. Hit it Perfect. great. Yep. <laughs> good shot. So that's going to get these that's guys to five. Nothing. Five, yeah. And like I said earlier, it, uh, the bad part about that is that's on Happy, Happy Hollow's break round. Now these guys get the next five breaks. Yeah, that's rough to watch after you just suffered that first round. I think Happy Hollow's got to start doing a little joking around here. They look they look like they're down a little bit, but one of each dropped on that break. Crush that. Uh, three, one, ten. That's the obvious. Rest of it's not so bad. You know, the 11 sevens of a liffy, but I think, I think you got to go, I think you got to go with the uh, solids. Yeah, definitely. Yes. He can, Start he can, with that he, thin cut right there. He can, I think he can break this three ball with the side shot right now. Shoot that four ball in the side pocket and come off the end rail into that three if it needs yeah. to be broke out, which I'm pretty sure it does. Cue ball found a way. What a mess that break is. Holy cow. 
That's funny. Keith was over before they, they even started the first match, saying how bad his break is, and he. <laughs> Guess he's not lying. Nine. Nine balls within like a diamond and a half square. I don't think Jay got where he wanted to be with this nine ball. He did take stripes. Um, looks like he's got the wrong angle of being coming down the side of the table, but. took stripes yeah i don't i don't know why he didn't i thought he would cut that four ball on the side and maybe just go into that three ball right there and it's pretty much open from there there you go i got the shot you play the nine off the four to create the angle to draw into the ten well you are a renegade aren't you <laughs> <laughs> i mean what else are you doing? the tens of the problem right i mean the 11 goes up in the corner all the way down yeah or even over in the bottom left here, get on that yeah, side of it. Yeah, there too. So I don't think that's your issue. I think that ten was. I like this. He's gonna draw. Watch this. This ought to be interesting. Wow. Uh -oh. He's gonna scratch. Hit it good too. How do you catch fifty percent of the ball like that? Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's kind of like you're shooting a shot and your opponent has one ball on the table and you manage to put yourself behind that one ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Jesse's picking this apart nice. He's He's got an, op an opportunity here. He can actually turn that bad break into a nice run. Yeah, one good shot right here, and if this breaks open, he's uh going to get it on the board. And there he hit it, it good. Look at that. He hit it good. So now you just got a small issue getting down to the eight ball. You got to make sure you got a good angle to get down there. Because you only got one path down, and that's between, I mean, re one real path. I think you wrote what this probably stops this, maybe rolls forward an inch, shoots that ball on the side, and then you'd be able to draw up table. Even if you get into the seven ball, you can still get a. Yeah, 10 first, you're saying 10, 14. Yeah, shoot the just 14 replace on the, the side. Yeah, replace the 10 kind of, right? Put the, put the cue ball right about where the 10 is. Now, <laughs> now he's going to have to do a little bit yet. Now he's going to probably have to punch just to get back up. He looked at it like he wasn't happy with it. Yeah, he wasn't. Because now you're either going to just come over for the same shot in the side where you got to really hit it. Okay, he's going to, I guess, a little bit of low left and punch it. To play the two rails. I sure don't like shooting that one inside. But I don't know how else you can do it, really. Yeah, Everything I, I else doesn't it. get you there, I don't think. I mean, maybe just straight draw. The inside, though, straightens you out and gets you away from it instead of coming straight up on it. I think when Jesse stunned that cue ball off that rail like that for that side pocket shot, I, just, I think he's got to roll that forward a little bit. Even if you roll too far, you had it up in the upper right-hand corner. Unless you can shoot it like that. He, he, he didn't shorten it much, but, but he hit yeah, it Yeah, he deserved to get a better shot than this. So now he's got to, even if he makes the bank, he does not have to have shape on this eight ball. I think he hits the back side of the two. If he's if he strokes this ball, I think he can get off that rail, hit the far side of the two, and then sneak down there pretty tight to the eight. Yeah, he banked it, huh? Well, he needed something good to happen there. He had a good thing going. They're going to get a little little window here. Jay missed that 14 ball up in the corner pocket. A couple good positional shots, and they can get on the board here. At this point, though, they got to, uh, they've got to string something together. They can't just trade racks, though. 
Okay, well, I'm starting with a seven here. Seven come out for the five. This is going to start with a three. I just don't like how tight this is down in the corner to come around like that. Yeah, I seven. think he's going to switch over. Yeah, seven to the five. You think he's got to break these balls out at all over here on the left hand side? I don't think so. I was, was going to say because if he if he did the the five ball wouldn't have been a good bad starter either to come on out of those balls right away. I think he just gets up by here by the twelve anywhere and he can pop all those in the side. Even right here, you could probably get there. For sure, here he'll get oh, yeah. there. Yeah, he's got the perfect angle to slide right down. Whoa. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hang on. That ended up great on the two. It's like a drill here. Just draw back an inch. Each one just of these. bumper right over. Yeah. No, he's not going to. He doesn't want to show us the drill. He's going to start with the six in the corner. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if you were in here before, but when I have a choice on a diamond table between corner and side, all I ever think is five ace bigger, five ace bigger, side pocket all day. Yeah, you. If you got if you got a choice like that, you had. Oh wow, what was that? I don't think the. Uh oh. Well, did you see what happened over here? Yeah, the, the wheels table, are falling. Table off. two. He shot that ball in and just basically <laughs> shot it right in the corner. Oh, looks like, uh, what team would that be there, uh, Kendall, do you know? B State Champions. Do you know who they are? No, I do not. I only know one of the guys, Gunter Halverson. He used to live over by me by the Dells. So that'd be easy enough if you look him up. It'll say what team yeah. he was on. You said that's the B, that was the B final? Yeah, that was B final, yep, because uh, stickball hole must have taken second. Oh my, jeez, Jesse almost missed that ball. It was pretty darn close. All right, Jay, you gotta work out these last few balls. But Happy Hollow is happy to be on the board. Second place, six ball hole. And then we come up to Richard Hardware and the pictures and all the people in the chat. See, I'm not too uh, familiar with these guys here. It uh, looks like Troy Kaminsky, uh, Gunder Halverson, I'm familiar with, Steve Perry, Kyle Hall, and Eric Overland just won the. Men's B team. So congratulations to them. Yeah, that's awesome. Gotta start somewhere, right, Kendall? That's right. See if I can get you guys a score for the women's masters. I'm basically looking this up for myself, but I'm just. Well, I know it's good to share, though. They are currently 5-5, five, five, racing the nine. Nice. Oh, how'd Caden hit this break? You know, like to bottle that up and sell it, huh? Rushed it. We got Blake breaking on the other table over there. Yeah, I don't 
totally agree with that statement they're adding uh there's still plenty of time for happy hollow to turn this match around they could eat very easily turn around win five straight like yeah Planet it happens <laughs> we've yeah. all been there i, I, mean, I don't want to count anybody flips, out yeah. You just don't know at what point you get inspired to do something that you need to do, you know. Yeah, Fred, I'm I'm familiar with uh Troy and uh uh Gunder Halverson. I don't think it's going to take Caden much more longer to get out of this rack here. Yeah, he hit that perfect. Not a whole lot of trouble over on the other table either for Blake. Blake's got stripes. Looks like Caden's going to put it 7 1. Yeah, on the eight ball right here. Blake having trouble reaching this shot. He knows better. He wanted to just hit it, but he knows better. He got Under his mom's height. Understanding the levity of it all. Got his mom's height. Yeah. Well, there you go. Caden made short, quick of that rack. Seven it's to bring one him to seven. Over halfway point. Yeah, the stretch made him get a little long on this shot, so still some work to do with that 13. Yeah. I think he comes back for it. I don't think he's shooting hurt it you. now. Yeah. yeah. But he is a lefty, so, I mean, the, the stretch isn't horrible. For me, I would have to shoot this with a bridge if I had to shoot it. But yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't see any problems coming back for this ball. This isn't that bad of a choice either. I mean, he, because he's got to get on that left side for that. Was that the 15 ball up there in the middle of the table? He might be able to go now. Oh, good shot. Yeah, that's not going to be bad. I'll just build a 50 11, roll that 15 ball on the side. Jeez, look at that break. These guys break like killers. Two, four, six. Three balls, two stripes and a solid. Yeah, this is uh, getting out of hand quickly. I think the score is supposed to be seven to one. I don't think they updated the iPad. Yeah, it is seven to one.
Yeah, it is seven one. No, I'm having trouble getting back to the. I got it right here. <clears throat> Do both teams have one of those pads or just the one? Just the one. So that's going to be eight. That'll be eight to one. Yeah, this is getting out of hand quick. And David is not in bad shape in his rack here. Oh, they got it. Eight to one. Good. I could have manually fixed it, but. Then it's messed up out there, and I got to fix it every time. Until and they fix David's, uh, he's on and out here, too. Flanagan has definitely got the dream start that they wanted. I think they uh, smell the blood in the water. And they're zeroing in. They want to get it done. That's the problem coming into the second side is you got one team coming in as a high, and the other one is just bummed because they just lost. Now they got to try to fight back. It's probably the hardest thing about I don't think this is what he wanted, but it's probably okay. I think that's where he was going. I I oh, think I'm... he just stuns us a little bit and it slides up there by the seven. Yeah. These guys are on a mission right now. Happy Hollow's gotta do something to slow him down. Forward two rails here for the eight in the side. Yeah, I would think so. A little bit of right. You'll probably hit with a little left and shoot it in the other side too if you wanted to. I don't know. I like going forward yeah, here. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind that shot at all. A little right. I mean, all you got to do is hit the second diamond on the rail. Yeah. It's not that tough of a push. Yeah, he can get it good. It almost looked like it was going to run a lot further than that when it first came off. Yeah, I was a bit worried. He's right on the... and asked for a better angle. Yeah, this is... Uh, 9 to 1. Happy Hollow, I mean... I'm, I don't even know how you get upset about this. I mean, Flanagan's ain't even really missed the ball. No, I agree. I mean, heck, if you get beat like this, all you got to do is just shake their hand and say, well, you know, what are you going to do? That looks good. I mean, this rack, I would guess... Nine out of ten times you'd watch somebody run this out, you know, at this level anyways. Yeah. I like to just follow this or just out of right, spin off two rails and come up right at the 11 ball. Have it good. Perfect. going to be dead perfect on that 11. Maybe Piallo can string together... You know, three, four racks here yet, and let the Flanagans know that they're here. Yeah, I right. could make them tighten up a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure I about can't that. Believe shot. He shot that yeah, shot. I'm not sure about that shot. Now you're playing safe. Is that the eight ball that's up there tied on the five or is that the four ball? That's the four ball? Okay. Eight ball's right on yeah. the spot. Yeah, now would now you gotta get into a safety battle and I mean, I guess he could cross face bank the 11 ball and go up table and back down.
Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you on that yet. And they are, like I said, they they've there's nothing Happy Hollow can really do. They have barely missed the ball. Right. Got 226 viewers watching this, Kendall. It's good to see. It's good pool. Got a good match going here. That first match was tight. This one, like you say, Happy Hollow hasn't had too many opportunities. Um, you guys get the dry breaks. chance if you haven't liked or shared the stream yet, do that. Every little bit helps these guys. And for sure, subscribe. That's not too tough either. Just take and push your pudgy little finger on that subscribe <laughs> button. We definitely appreciate it. Well, we got Jesse and Jeff at the table, both for Happy Hollow. They both need to get out here. We got to calm Flanagan's down a little bit. There yeah, we go. That yeah, looks more like it. That was a good shot there by Jeff. Really nice, especially after that. The last shot he shot. Yeah. That I'm not just, familiar with Jeff. Do you know him at all? I do a little bit. He plays good. I mean, that's why I was surprised to see him shoot the 10 when he did. But, I mean... It's a pretty good shot there. Yeah. Yeah, sure was. Here's the tester, though. Over a ball, 33% cut, <laughs> you know, third of the ball. I think he's over the ball. If he can see the side, he's perfectly fine. But yeah, if he can. If you're jacking up on this ball, it's not, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not a gimme. Yeah, he's elevated a little bit. Not a whole lot, but. Yeah, there you go. Good job. I'll bring the score line to 9-2. to two. You know, you got to leave it just bad enough so your teammates are over there sweating it the whole time. Then they give you a little clap when you do yeah. make it. All right, all right, here we go. Two games to start. So we're going to have Caden here breaking on Carl over on table number one. Caden's been crushing this break, so. It's probably the, probably the last one you want breaking on you right now. Yeah, he has been hitting good. He's getting some Made bumps here, but it's yeah. coming out. It's going to come out perfect. Yeah, that's a nice looking rack right there. Well, Jesse looks like he might be able to put this one together and get him to three here, third of the way home. Yeah. He's probably, you know, is he going to have to come to the end rail and back out? I don't think so, but maybe. I think he can just roll that ball in and be okay. He's going to get a little bit tight to the eight. But we'll see. No, he's jacked up, too. Which actually will help him slow it down just a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we got, uh, I think that's uh, Caden's sister. Caitlin, I think that's Caden's sister. Mike Parker, thank you for the like and share. It's good to see you this weekend. I'm sorry we didn't have any more time to catch up. Looked like you were having a good time, though. Good to see. Relaxing and chilling. That's what you should be doing. Michael Parker, are you down in the man cave playing pool, or are you out fishing? Blake looking to contribute here. 
Let's see if he can't uh, get out of this rack. That's it. Ten ball an issue at all? I don't know. I I I think he's almost got to play. I guess we're gonna find out because if it goes, he's shooting right now. Yeah. It's probably the only tight shot he's got. Yeah, I thought you were Caden's sister there. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. When he gave a good opportunity here for Carl right off the bat to get his trouble ball out. So this yeah, four, yeah. four ball would be perfect. Yeah, he'll draw right into the five ball. Don't you don't have to come out of that decent though though. Do, the do way you like the one's do you like smooth drawing into this or do you like making sure you get out of there? Well, I mean, you really want to bump the five out. He uh, and he get a shot speed, on it because and, and this is what happens. Yeah, he he's got the one ball in the corner pocket. Yeah, probably the toughest you could have. <laughs> Not horrible, but. If you're real brave, you roll up for the three here while you make the one. Michael Parker's he's out at the cabin watching the matches. Nice. Uh Josh yeah. Hinsey, uh Happy Hollow uh beat Flanagan's for the hot seat. These two teams have been battling all weekend. This is getting tougher. Now he's down to the six ball for his options, I think. Pretty sure he can't see the two, so I think he's going to have to try and roll that six in. Taking a little closer look to see if he's got a line or not. Yeah, from in here, it don't look like he can shoot that two ball. I think that's what he's calling, so he must be able to see it or thinks he can, anyways. Oh, he was able to. It's just not getting easier. No. <laughs> What's he do from here? Bank the six. What about banking a three ball back off of Caden's ball? That's not bad either. Makes Any, that pocket, anything where you can't. Makes that you, pocket pretty big. Yeah. Cue ball comes around technically. It's probably a good shot. It's like what he's looking at. Well, oh, nope. Oh, six in the corner. Is he All cutting right. this down here by the nine? Yeah, I guess. I didn't see that even. I don't know why I didn't see it. Yeah, great. Carl, you're an animal. Got a good position here to get around to the three. I mean, yeah. Get another one on the board for Happy Hollow. Just in time because they're going to lose another yeah, one. Yeah, I was going to say, you got Blake, the problem probably. is you got Blake over on the other table and he's got two ball or three balls to. Put another one on their side. That's still though, that's a boost for the team if Carl can run these out and finish this rack, because this was a tough looking rack. How'd he come out? Pretty darn good. Perfect. Couldn't have hit it any better. Yeah, and it looks like Blake is gonna be out on this other table. Well, there you go. They're going to trade racks, but that's uh, not going to be enough for a happy hollow to do that. Carl makes it 9-3. to three. And then Blake turns around and makes it 10-3. Uh, to three. Still got a few people sitting around watching what's going on. A couple other matches finishing up in the background, too. But everybody having a good time.
Didn't catch anybody picking their nose even, so that's yeah. pretty good. Half the people right. don't know, realize you got a camera on them. Oh, yeah, no idea. You got to be ready to click away from as quick as you can. There's a guy last night. Where, oh, eight ball break. Free rack or spot it, right? That's yeah. Our choices. I, I don't know why, but whenever I make the eight ball on a break and I re-break, I dry break every time. <laughs> right. He, he's got a good shot right here to come off this three ball, come down for this one ball right now. If he elects to take the solids. I think he can see that three ball on the side, can he? He's going to take stripes, so it looks like. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a fan of the stripes in this rack. Are you, Kendall? I'm just trying to figure out. I guess he's going to come around, what, two rails for the 13? I think the nine the ball is tricky. The 15 is tricky. Yeah. So two rails, gonna get thirteen. Kinda gotta do the same. It's not gonna make that, so he's gonna have to go to the eleven here next. I don't think he's got enough to get around the angle. Yeah, so eleven ball. Nine goes, right, or the 15, so you could do either here. I think I almost, I almost like getting the 15 out of here. You got a perfect angle that you could just roll into the rail and control yourself. You know, the only thing I don't like about that is, is coming off. it's hard to get out a shape on the other ball. All right, he went with the nine instead. Now he's going to go nine to the 10 would be my guess. Uh oh. I'd have to go to the 14 in the side. I think if he could have got over there about three inches off, four inches off that rail, he could have drew back for the side ball. And... Now he's got to get to the 15 here, otherwise, he's going to be in big trouble. Must, must not be able to get in between that rail and that one ball to make it, huh? I think you can. I think he was trying to come two rails back and oh, forth okay. to get up top. I think he just ran into the two inadvertently. I don't know. Punt. I don't know what else you do here. Might have the bank shot, but I don't know that that helps you a whole lot. Unless you can load it up with a bunch of inside, shorten it, and draw it straight up table. 15 actually does look pretty tight, though. If you look at the overhead, it looks pretty, t pretty yeah, tight. Yeah, it does. It looks like the one ball's covering up about a quarter of the ball. Maybe more than that. So, yeah, maybe he was trying to break it out. Could be. Well, congratulations, uh, the Pitchers Pub ladies. They take second place in the Women's Masters. They uh, they did beat uh, the Twin City Border Patrol the first set. Ended up coming up a little short in the second set. So congratulations to both them teams. Yeah, that's good shooting. We are pretty much boiling down here. Maybe the A, looks like maybe the women's, a couple of women's finals maybe going on yet, B's and the A's. Well, this is the way it should be. We should yeah. finish up with the Masters uh, every year if they can do that. I think it's a good thing. And uh Oh. All right, putting the ball back. It's pretty solid safety right there. Yeah. He 
He's just got to make sure that he, uh, oh, is he going to kick two rails? Be. Yeah, behind it, probably, right? Not too much speed. Well, that's a nice shot. That was, you couldn't I hit mean, that any better. Solid. He's got it in a spot where he can make it now if he does get back up to the table. I don't know what David has here. Not a lot. I don't think he can see this ball, can he? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he can maybe. Looks like it. Still, there's not much more that he could have done, I think, to leave him much worse. You know, he did the job. Now he just got to hope for a chance. Uh, hit it good. Shot's almost just as tough. Yeah, this is uh, this is no gimme here either. Got a couple of side options, right? Yeah. Five or four. Pick one. <laughs> Either one's not a horrible choice. The four takes you to the one. The five takes you to the two. Possibly. Yeah. Oh. Nope. We got some ladies champions, if you couldn't hear that in the background. Either that or some really excited men. <laughs> <laughs> was that a final there too, Kendall, or was that? It must have been, yeah. To the final? Looks like it. Yeah. God, I'm not even. I'm not familiar with any of them. The one lady over there is happy she made the April. I think she's crying over there. Meant a lot to her. Well, that's good though. I like I like that. It's a lot of pressure, you know. I mean, and ladies take it different than we do for sure. <laughs> so Chopper got out over here on table two, so that'll add uh ten to four. We got Blake coming up. And And here's the the thing again. I mean, you're gonna eventually you got to stop trading racks, right, Kendall? Yeah, right. At this point, you can't. This is no good. <laughs> oh, I'm wait not a gonna be happy with that. Yeah. Well, what the heck? That's why he left the four down there. Now I get it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tester here, huh? Yeah. Nothing to it. Just you, jack up. Do you, you jack up, stop it, and just take your medicine on the cut, or you try to draw this sucker right you back? Like jabbing her back, huh? I think so. He's gonna play safe. Here it comes. I don't like this shot. I don't think he can do this. Well, I'll be learning something if he does play safe here, because I don't know how you do that. Yeah, because unless you get him on that ball, you're giving him a 15 ball. He don't like this shot, and I, I don't blame him. <laughs> Look at yeah. this, Blake. This is a break by Blake. Holy cow, yeah. This is like connect the dot stuff going on here right now with these guys. Yeah. Three balls down, all three stripes. All right. Well, at, well, I'll add in. It's uh, it's tough to do all ball fouls. Other, if, if you're doing all ball fouls, you have to have a referee at the table. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> So it's just mirrors that drop like it's cold in here. in here. <laughs> He's actually playing the combination here, which I think is an interesting choice. Oh, 
See, personally there, I think if you're going to play the, combi the combination, I think the jump shot on the one is easier. It's about a perfect angle, actually, to come into this. I think with a little bit, well, it's tough because when you A little bit of top right, maybe spin off two rails. Try yeah, to get I in think there. it ends up short just because... I don't know. First, I thought it was perfect, but I don't mind that. That shot probably goes. What do you I, think of that? 15 off the rail. How do you get back off for that, though? I mean, you're almost straight in on this ball. Well, I thought he was looking at doing it right now. See, oh. that's what I... Yeah, you're right. It came up short. Just short. We're going to find out if this shot goes, though, because it definitely has to shoot it now. There's, there's, well, I mean, you can you can slow roll into this ball, but you're only delaying time to play yeah. save. Outs, outside, right? You want to hit this with outside. Get it to travel. Look oh, at this. Wow. Look at this. It's going to go. <laughs> wow, what a shot. Wow. What a shot by Scott from Happy Hollow. Really a great shot. I think Kendall's going to show it to you one more time. Yeah, we definitely got to watch that again. He hit that shot perfect. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, all the right spin to get there, hit and it boom. Any better. What a shot. Good That'll shot, fire Scott. Team up a little bit. Yeah, five well. To ten. Get within five games. Uh oh, Blake came up short on his ball now. See, that's that energy transfer, I'm telling you. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't take much. And all of a sudden, pressures change. Buckle in there, kids. It's about to get more fun. Yeah, ha Happy Hollows won uh, four of the last five games. Get back in this a little bit. They keep this up, and you never know what can happen. A lot of stuff can happen. Oh. Yeah, it's in here. What's up, Chopper? Ch Chopper's coming in the booth to re retrieve his cue ball. Yeah, you're definitely right, Larry. It's uh, been saying the whole time, all Happy Hollow needs to do is get a couple rolls and they can turn this match around. Especially in a team event. Yeah, I mean, if they get these couple of games here, this could get real interesting. Yeah, uh, Flanagan's been sitting on 9 and 10 there for a while now. I mean, they've been, I mean, they've got to be able to get a few more before they can give uh, Flanagan's another one, though. Can't give Blake too many shots at this like this. Because he'll, smart kid, he'll figure something out here. <laughs> you know? I, I think he's going to cut this ball. 
tried to come back up and down the table for the ten ball back on the side. And then here, uh, Chopper, you know, he jumps the, jumped the cue ball off the Taylor, I mean Jesse. Gives Caden the ball in hand and can't keep doing that. Well, Caden overamped this. He's got to do a little something here now. Happy Hollow has definitely got the advantage right now in both these games. <laughs> Keaton's going to have to hit this two ball really well to get back on this three ball. Now Blake fouled and that's gonna buy a restaurant. No, I'm sitting here quietly dealing with issues. So, sorry. At the most exciting point too. How, this how, is a, how, oh, did he get there? He did. Yeah. Wow, he hit a good. He did hit a good. <laughs> this is tougher. Yeah. What are you gonna do here? Because now you gotta you hit this with inside and try to go in. I don't know if he can get back into it. Can you? Set for the bank is what it looks like he's gonna do. Yeah, come out two rails and just bank it in the corner. I don't know if he can come up one rail in between them balls. Maybe. That's a pretty good shot by Jeff there. Yeah. Took a chance too because if he would have missed that, he would have set. Uh, Blake up. The right angle and everything to get back. Well, Caden. No, Caden rattled the ball, so I mean, you never know. A lot of things can happen from here. Jesse's very capable of running this rack. I think he's going to play safe just to get us 14 out of here right now, though. Yeah, because then after that, he's just got to get one more good shot on them two balls around the eight. Yeah. Well, and it's not like even if you leave him a jump shot and he would hit it, it's not as though you got automatic shape to the this eight. This is tricky right here for Jeff too. He's got uh, he's got the four ball, but he's got to go into. Look the at 15. this. He's going to shoot that nine three. I think. I think he's looking at playing the combination. He is. Yeah, that's not, a smart it's shot. Not really. bad either. I like this shot. As long as you make it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's only thing that could have made that better is bump the fourteen out. He's got one shot to kick it up in the top left hand corner. Which is this table backwards? Is it, am I saying it should it be bottom left? Well, you're looking at the head spot. Okay. So you're looking at the racking end, so that's why it's a little confusing. But I would consider the bottom of the screen the bottom. Yeah, that's uh, Judy. That was a smart decision on Jesse's part there. Just want to thank everybody for joining us. This is the 2024 WSPA State Team Championships. I'm in the booth with Jeff Potts from the Carom Room. And uh, I'm Kendall Cook. Oh. And that was good effort. But I think Jesse's plan is going to work. And now he's got a real nice shot here on the 10 so he can... Pick that 14 off the rail. I think that'd be a really nice starting point for him. Did you see what uh, Jeff did there? Did he? Sh I I was looking over at Jesse's table over there. I didn't see what he did there. Did he try the combo? Oh the, yeah, the I, four I was ball's still sitting one. there. So I was watching table one, but Blake doesn't have her made here by any means. So let's see what he's doing. I think he's playing safe down below the 15, but he's gonna leave him. Not I know, great, not a whole lot. Pretty good shot, actually. 
<laughs> well, it's not going to start with the 10. Thought that, well, it's tough cut, I suppose. Man, I got a question. I'm starting with the ball on that side rail, aren't you? Uh, well, he didn't have ball in hand, remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, Keaton did get a hit. Yeah, you're right. Some odd reason I thought he had ball in hand. Oh, but he'd sure like to get that angle that, that he had to begin with on that 10 ball. Look at this shot by Jeff. He back cut that ball. Nice. To the top right corner. Yeah, Jesse's going to have to change his plan here, go to this 15 ball. I still think you want to kind of get an angle, like, about where the 8 ball is to shoot that 10 so you can just nudge over into that 14. Jeff's got to hit a, a pinpoint shot here to get on this ball. And that's not going to... It's the wrong side. Yeah. Combination, float up to the end rail. Either that or combination, will float right over the side rail behind the 8. Yeah, you missed that, though. Yeah, you're selling out. <laughs> you're selling out, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think you got to just... First things first, you got to make sure you make this ball. If you hang this ball, it's... Yeah, <laughs> that's over, too, right? He played oh, the shot that I said, and he is going to get that. fortunate. Oh, my goodness. He did. Uh, he and got... I mean locked him. That's brutal, honestly. I thought he was sneaking out behind there. I didn't think he was going to get there. He just caught like... He caught just a little piece of it coming off that uh, rail there. Blake's going to have trouble hitting this ball, honestly. <laughs> Like yeah, scratching his head. Nothing off one rail. It's going to look at two. Now Jesse's putting, oh, look at this cut. He's going to hang it. Well, that's probably going to sting a little bit. Caden's going to make that one hurt. Well, oh, wait a minute. What in the world is going on? I mean, it's one thing to be relaxed. Kitty can't believe it either himself. That's not, I mean, that's not his thing there. Well, let's see if Jesse takes better advantage this time. I personally would shoot the freaking hanger down here. You know what a bad, not a bad shot right now is to shoot that 14 ball. I, I would have shot the hanger. Just to give you some confidence, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't mind the 14 ball rolling it either because the 8 ball don't go past that stripe. Well, I can say this. Caden ain't missing two of these, so this one's dead center pocket. I was going to say you better hope you don't make a liar out of you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's going to bring it uh, to 11-5 for Flanagan's Rackheads. Well, they are looking like they're going to get one of them, though. Maybe. Actually, I just went to 11-6. Did they just add another score in there? It's about to be 11-7. Nope. Oh, my goodness. Is it the pressure? What's going on around here? I don't know what's going on. It... They've been playing all weekend. CompuSport says it's 11-5. Okay. Oh, they, it is oh they took their, another game off of Hollow. They must have accidentally hit it. Foul. Justin D., what were you calling foul on? Probably Blake's kick shot. Well, well, he was left down to a point where there was no choice but to try and bank that ball, so he did. Didn't quite get there. Jeff's going to take advantage. So Jennifer White, uh, Slate did not 
beat either one of these teams. Uh, Happy Hollow beat Flanagan Rackheads for the hot seat. And Flanagan's Rackheads won the first set of this, and this is the second set of the finals. Uh, Slate that you're talking about, they would have got knocked out in fourth place. Third yeah, that's place. about as good as a Minnesota team can do around here. You know? <laughs> yeah, they got, they got fourth place, and then... Um, my buddy Robbie team. Matson's on that team. Team from Fond du Lac with Bobby Baylor and Bob Mooney, and those guys got uh, third. Is that Press Mark Box. Gells, or what is that? I think oh, it's Press, press Box. box. <clears throat> and I was trying to think of that earlier in the week. The other place that I used to play pool in Fond du Lac was Press, press box. box. Yeah. What was that old pool hall? That you used to have a pool hall there in Fond du Lac. Remember that? Shooters, was yeah, yeah, that was Tom Butson on that. I remember then, playing there a lot Keith when I was McCready. younger. I don't remember what his real name is, but uh, Keith moved in there, and it's kind of. Butson was a nice guy. But that was the first kind of real pool hall we had in the state, really. I mean, other than Cunique and the ones that had existed yeah. forever, outside of going to Milwaukee. You know, at least in my generation, it was the first real pool hall we had. I know there were a few prior. Did you ever get a chance to, uh, to see the Blue Chalk Club when Dobie first built that? I did, yeah. That it was, was a very nice pool the, hall, too. It's the green room at one time, too, right? It was, it was blue the, blue the green room was in Madison, and then when they put that smoking band in, he built that Blue Chalk Club on the outskirts of Madison because you could still smoke in, like, Verona and stuff like that. Oh, right. You just couldn't smoke in the town of Madison in the buildings. Yeah. So right. he moved out of that AT&T building and built that out there, but that was a really nice – he put all Gabriels in there. Oh, that. man, he – Almost scraps there, Jesse. You want to say hi to your fans? <laughs> Here's Keith Hunkins for you guys. I'm doing this for everybody at home. Your for, for all the kids. For all my goddamn kids. Your daughter's on here with your grandkid. Just in the chat. Yeah. yeah. He says he loves you guys. That's a nice shot up the rail there. Yeah, it was. Really well hit. We got Scott McFarlane in the chat. What's up, Scotty? Catch you Tuesday night at League, I guess. Well, Flanagan's needs two more games to pull off a successful double dip. The Hollow's trying to get themselves rolling here again, but... Dave looks like he might even have this under control. That for that fifteen twelve though, I mean, I don't know where that goes really. You? Draw into it right um, now. Yeah. You try to get on the end rail and draw into it. Uh, that'll work there. Yeah, he can probably come straight up in there. Be careful where that twelve ball goes. Catalina, yeah, I'll make I'll make sure to let your dad know that he owes you some of the prize money, seeing that he's he's doing it for you. Right. In reality, he's just collecting back all the money that he's previously spent on her. That could be true too. Yeah. Maybe you better just try to get a, a pizza or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe like an IOU or something like that. Who out there is still on Team Happy Hollow? Who's voting they, they're going to pull this thing through? There's got to be somebody out there believes they can do it. Are you rooting there for Jay there, I guess? Miranda, are you uh, Mariah, are you uh, Jay's niece? Oh, okay, so Jill. Okay, it's Jill. How you doing? 
Ain't seen you in a while. You need to come up here. Yeah, in case a lot of people might not know, and a lot of people do know that you know Jay Peters is my cousin. I didn't, I didn't even know. Oh. He, I didn't even know he played pool until a couple of years ago. We walked into uh, uh, Sunset Bowl, I think it was, over in Waukesha, and here's Jay with my aunt and uncle, and he, he's turning into a great pool player. <laughs> Him and Blake been shooting and playing softball and stuff all together now, and it's great that you know you connect with family. You know, me and Blake won the Scotch doubles. You know, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, that's a great tournament. But then uh, we went over to that uh, Knuckleheads that uh, Scott Dooley runs. You ever heard of that tournament, sure. Kendall? Yeah. We were over there uh, last month, and uh, me, Blake, and Jay got to play in that, and we uh, we lost our first match, came back and doubled the tournament. I mean, you got a chance to do that. You know, you, nice. you play oh, with yeah. your kid. Any tournament you can ever win playing with Mason, you just it, it means a lot more, right? And just go... Uh, me go hollow, she says. Yeah. Duluth, we got some people watching. This one here is Jay's niece here, and that Luke roll. That'd be Jay's niece and his sister. I used to shoot first. Jody said she used to shoot uh, at what was Sunset Bowl. Yeah. <clears throat> It's it's uh, Sunset Bowl Flanagan's. <clears throat> Is it gonna get there? Nope. No. It's gonna good effort. It's gonna leave things open here though for uh who's he playing? Uh Scott. Scott. I've gotta try to get on this uh ball down here on the rail probably as soon as possible, probably, huh? I think he likes it right now. I think yeah. he's gonna sneak up in between the fourteen and one. Well, you didn't really want to hit that 14 over. It's fortunate enough to get onto the 12 at least. I don't think you can spin it over enough to be effective to hit that, so you might as well go forward and come back it to it. It looks like he's going straight up the table. Yeah, that's. I think that was the plan. Well, Carl got another one on the board for Happy Hollow. Seven, only down by four. It's there within how four. Quick that can wor work, you know. So we got Keith Hunkins coming up on the other table, getting ready to break, and looks like he'll be breaking against uh, Chopper Olson. With a shirt like that, we should call him Trumpkins. Yeah. Your dad is really in love with his Trump support and stuff. I'll tell you that. Okay. She'll say something on here. We just stay right in the middle of all that. <laughs> There's enough politics and everything else. We don't need any here. I just thought it was a funny play on words. <laughs> Who called him a she? I don't. I don't. Did I call I you a she, or did he call you a she? If well, I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, you're. Icon is we can't, this we can't big. Really, we can't really see yeah. your icon on the on the um, laptop here, so we do apologize to you for that. She said you uh you made their shirts for Whammo for them. Oh okay. Well, it looks like we got another final done. So we got two hollow players at the table in control of their own destiny. Those two games would get them to nine. I try to say it. Don't count them out. I mean, Scott over here has got a little problem. He's got to get down here on this ball. He might go for it right now off this. You like coming down here right now for this ball, or do you like getting these two out of here? I think you come down here because 
I like Kevin. He didn't. Well, is he banking this? No, what he's setting it up for? You know what he's going to do with the 14. That's what I'm saying. Bank. Is he going to roll this ball in and just bank it? I mean, it's not a. Looks like it. It's not a bad bank, is it? I mean, a, a straight back at that, this angle makes the pocket a little bigger. You can't hit it 9,000 miles an hour, but. Oh, look at this shot. I tell you, that's a few that, times I've seen that shot. That's, that's pretty good right there. Hey, he hit that great, really. Oh, oh, wow. Even the whole crowd here groaned at that one. I thought that was he happening. rattled that ball, and the crowd just went, oh. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of shooting the five ball first. I just hate leaving balls that's the last ball or even anything where I got to have a chance that I might not. He's do just going to shoot this in. He's going to spin that five ball up, and he's probably going to have that ball on the side. I'm Maybe sure. at the corner. Yeah. But, yeah, I hear what you're saying. A lot of tricky stuff can happen when you got balls in the, especially in the center of the table. Right. Everybody thinks that ball in the middle of the table is you get, gimme material. You and get a not. quarter inch in the wrong direction to where you've got to float that cue ball. To right the here. Oh, look at this. He's going to, no. That's close. I tell you, a couple more inches, and that got interesting. Still kind of is. That eight's got a chance to go in the side if he's not careful. I think he's going to shoot it in the corner. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could possibly draw into the bottom of the eight and then shoot it up in the corner by the stripe. But well, if you notice, he's not at the table quite yeah, yet. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> I don't think he's too confident about either way. Well, thanks for joining us, Brittany. We appreciate that. Just getting exciting. If you haven't shared yet, please do so. Every like, every share, every follow, you like every this subscribe. Like shooting this in the corner? Helps us. He is going I, side. He must be able to miss the I eight think ball. he'll miss the eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but <laughs> he missed the ball. Oh, my wow. goodness. I did not see that coming. That's a big, big mess right there. Not that it's the only one that counts because there have been a few others. Yeah. But. Boy, that is unexpected right there. Scott can take advantage of this. That's a big game. Got Chopper working on a run over there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? What is going on? <laughs> oh, wow, boy. that's going to put Scott knocking the eight ball in out of turn. It's going to put Flanagan's on the hill. Ouch. How many, times almost, you, I, how many times do you think you could shoot that shot and never pocket that eight ball again? 100? I actually would have liked them not to do that. I just wanted to see what, the, what was going to happen if that got that close again. I mean, you're talking within three games, and now it's five again, and they're on the hill. That's a huge swing. Yeah, that'll knock the wind out of your sails, yeah. probably. They're not... Uh, Jumping up and down and cheering very much right now over that one. That's too bad. You don't ever want to see that. Well, we got Jeff over here break in. And he's breaking on Caden Hunkins. And Jeff has dry broke. And I think Caden is going to probably break this ball out right away, and he could be off to the race. Oh, God. I could really come out weird. Think about it now, though, is that combo might go on the, on the solid, or he might try to break it again. You got Keith Hunkins over here off to the races, so.
Kendall, you weren't just a lion when you said it got cold in here quick. <laughs> Maybe the Expo Center didn't sell enough burgers this week and they had to shut the heat off early, right? <laughs> I think we're uh, nearing the end here, Kendall. They're both uh, pretty much smooth sailing. Yeah, look at this. Keith is, uh, he's pretty much out here. Makes this ball, it's done. Should be, at least. Yeah, he's not, uh, he ain't messing up from here. Well, guys, uh, looks like this is going to be it. If Keith Hunkins makes this eight ball for the double dip, Flanagan's Rackhead is going to win the Masters double A. There it is. And there they go. Double dipped. I want to congratulate uh, Flanagan's on their win. Also, I want to congratulate... Uh, Happy Hollow. Happy Hollow on their second place and a uh, really great tournament all the way around. It was tough. Those guys played rough in the end. Yeah, it's it's funny how little rolls here and there can change the score. I mean, if, if things would have went a little bit different, I mean, Happy, Happy Hollow got some bad rolls in the beginning. But uh, if those were a little bit different, I mean, look what the score line could have been right now. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, congratulations to both teams. Absolutely. They both shot their – hearts out this whole weekend to get where they were at uh thanks kendall for having me in here with you and uh anybody else saying anything absolutely and then the other thing i just want to thank uh dean and the whole crew for all the hard work they put in to make these tournaments possible thank all the viewers for watching we appreciate that and please go over subscribe to our channel we'll have more content more content more content so hey no uh, problem guys we are uh, we uh, enjoyed doing it for you guys uh Anytime you can get a uh, stream for these tournaments. So, all right. Thanks, Praise Jeff. Kendall. I appreciate your help. All right. And, thank uh, you a lot. See peace you guys out, later. everybody. I'll give you a tour around the room, and then we're probably going to end her up. So, thanks, guys.